Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 281 Confusion, Student Pico's case isn't rare. Due to the appearance of the Karma S in the system, a large number of students have resigned. There are even those whose personalities have changed so much that they've become even worse than villains. Thank you for the clarification, beautiful and smart trainee teacher. 99. 999% of the heroes were people who couldn't adapt to life in society. On Earth, they grew up hearing at school and from their parents that they were dumb. Such individuals had to be babysat and constantly praised to grow heroes out of them. I was certain of that since I watched classmate A grow up to eventually become married man A. Whenever the locals ignored him and despised him, the half-breed would cheer him up and babysit him. Han Su, I decided that he'll only live for her from this point onwards. What about the Demon Lord? If the Demon Lord falls, this world will also disappear. I will watch over her until the Demon Lord reveals his plans first. Oh, I see. Should I turn him to dust now? In my head, I had 493 ways to punish the B-ranked hero who took the Max Class Demon Lord for a fool, but I didn't follow through with the idea. I wanted to observe the changes of married man A. Trainee teacher did say many like him surrendered and resigned. Head serve as a good reference. Cut the nonsense and just be honest, cowardly husband. Congratulate him. Congratulate him. Bro, congratulations on entering a hellhole called nurturing a newborn baby. You're such a child. Soja kept poking me in the side to congratulate them, but the fact that the hero chose family over the peace of humanity remained unchanged. That was no more than a negligent attitude towards their official duties. But I wasn't going to criticize him. Because if I were in his shoes, I would have done the same. The safety and happiness of one's family had to always come first. However. Wasn't he acting a little too rash? The half-breed continued to stare at me with concern on her face. She knew that I was the demon lord, after all and that even the brave and hero combo wouldn't work against me. Am I free? She asked cautiously. She became the hero's companion only because she needed my forgiveness and since I granted her mercy. I looked at her belly. It wasn't visible yet in her current state, but new life was clearly being created in her. May the patronage of Malin be with you. Ah. Thank you. The girl visibly relaxed, and sparkles appeared in her eyes. Previously, she was just a woman I disliked, but now she was a future mother, protecting the next generation. I turned to married man A. My dear friend, you know that if the demon lord or you dies, this world will disappear along with your wife and child, don't you? I know. Good. It was an epaulet mate. Note, chess reference. Having conceived a child, he could no longer participate in the of the demon lord. And that wasn't all. If my copy threatened him by saying he would commit, married man A would have to stop it by any means. I showed the newly made bride the smile of the righteous hero. Become a wife that your husband will be able to love forever if you don't want to die. Yes. Of course. Soja poked me in the side again, but I ignored her. I needed to do it. If married man as passion cooled down and he went off to the demon lord, that would be the end. Kong Han Su, you need to fix your terrible temper. Would you like it if someone tells you they want to your wife? My ignorant friend was talking nonsense again. Yes, it would put me in a great mood. What? In a great mood to someone. With family came huge danger, burden, and responsibility. I knew about it all too well, considering I suffered from the teaching staff after Chris, my son, was born through my bond with the sword princess. Hence, after that, I always used the lucky ring. That way, my family wouldn't grow anymore. I didn't expect my mother would give birth to another one, though. Be happy, my friend. Kong Han Su. I will pray that Malin's patronage will be with you. Malin. Good. May Malin be with you too. Malin. Master Malin. 
please make sure my friend doesn't desire divorce for a long time. Malin. Malin. Master Malin treated both single people and couples equally and without prejudice. I didn't even try too hard, but the heroes failed already. And with each regression, their karma hit them even harder than before. As a result, primary education had almost completely ceased to function. My juniors just died way too often. It was especially hard for the newcomers. And even if they accumulated experience over time, their karma's rank by then was already so high that they could no longer put everything in order. News, Cadet Kong Han Su. It looks like action will be taken soon. I briefly heard that a new S would be added that could balance karma without removing it. Thank you so much, secret friend. Most of the management of the fantasy institution had been acquired by Soja. Therefore, realizing that they couldn't remove karma, the teaching staff chose Plan B, Balancement. It was unclear how the director would support the heroes, but the assistance they could offer would clearly be limited. Because fantasy didn't consist only of light. If, as now, light and darkness opposed each other, it would be almost impossible to do sewing. For now, they'll calmly observe the development of events. You think ITLL be that simple? Your rival is still the first angel, cowardly hubby. And in the demon lord. I didn't know what my father-in-law was doing right now, but the retired first demon lord Pedinar had disappeared into history. The era of the demon lord Parmamon had arrived. All the darkness of the fantasy world belonged to me. Even if we came face to face with the first angel, I was sure I wouldn't fail. In the process, however, you'll lose a lot, my cowardly wife reproached me. Everything is within my expectations. Even if I do nothing, I will still win. Having looked at married man A, I was convinced of this. As soon as the heroes married the inhabitants of fantasy and had children, they would have to give up the thought of ing the demon lord. With the institution paralyzed, I would win. Why? What were you doing when your max class husband explained everything, Soja? Ignoring you. Listen. If the demon lord threatens the heroes with, then the second generation of fantasy heroes will have no choice but to surrender. Oh. Heroes would try to prevent the death of the resurrected demon lord. It sounded strange, but it definitely wasn't impossible to happen. Surprise, how did you know about that? You are simply amazing, Cadet Kong Han Su. This issue was also discussed at the meeting of the teaching staff. The exact cause is unknown, but the rate of marriage and childbirth among students has risen sharply. The disciples gave up their studies and began to enjoy their lives. That was a serious problem for the teaching staff. But I understood their side. If the lectures were too difficult, students would become stressed, which in turn would result in them being distracted by other things. For example, love. Personal experience. A friend's experience. I was an obedient child growing up under the supervision of my mother's racket. And married man are really resigned. Right now, they were trying to resolve their housing issue. That wasn't why I came to the Holy Empire. I think it's great. He chose love over fame. Hey, stop watching melodramas. I don't watch those. Ha! Cowardly little wife, you think I don't know that you secretly read novels and comics on my smartphone? I also know the latest work you read. Novella, is this relationship real? It seemed to describe love between a god who chose between true love and a harem. And at the ending, what happened was. I just thought to read one chapter for fun huh? Don't spoil its ending, cowardly husband. They'll curse you for life if you do. I want. Well then. Perhaps it was time to meet a different hero. Once I had left it, my copy would return to the throne by himself. At this moment. H help. I saw a guy running away from someone as he panicked. Arrows were stuck in his shoulder and back, and a huge wound was visible under the torn clothes on his taut body. And behind him. Thud thud thud. Knights in dark armor were chasing after him. Who was he? Race, human. Race, 485. 
Job, Imperial Prince Rank in the Hierarchy Trust. SS, Sword Mastery B, Immunity B, Incitement C, Politics C, Patronage C. Status, Wounded, Bleeding, Poisoned. Prince. The Son of the Emperor. I was at the capital of the Holy Empire, the only empire on the Central Continent. It was unlikely that a prince from another country would be here. Besides, I recognized him. Isn't that Prince A? Would you stop calling people nicknames only you can understand? Prince A, or the Imperial Prince. With the absolute support of the nobles, he would become the next emperor once the current ruler of the Holy Empire died of disease. And as soon as he ascended to the throne, he would immediately send knights and assassins to execute his cunning sister, the Imperial Princess. Some would think it was unfair, but that wasn't the case at all. The Imperial Princess only dreamed of conspiracy and revolution. This situation is rather strange, though. That moderately clever prince was the eldest son of the current emperor, so it was only natural that he would be the first contender for the throne. But now, he was running away like a hunted prey in the center of his own capital. What happened? Help K.H. I decided not to worry about guesswork but to inquire to the person in question himself. Sorry, Prince A, for grabbing you by the throat, but I need to know why you're running away. I, I was unfairly accused. What an abstract answer. I dug deeper for more details. Boris, calm the others down. Yes, sir. The beautiful spirit answered, ensuring that the demons and their followers, who would inadvertently greet me as their lord in front of everyone, wouldn't come across me. Boom. 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 Thanks to her dominant fighting power, Boris quickly got rid of all the knights. They were all destroyed at once, like devices that were deprived of power. So. KHKH. Grabbing the imperial prince between the sixth and seventh cervical vertebrae, I walked carelessly through the streets of the capital. My imperial blooded ugly friend, don't cry and calmly tell me what you were accused of. Am I throat first? Don't worry about it. He had just been unjustly accused. Wasn't that more important than his neck? I was accused of having connections with heretics who believe in Malin's teachings, a religion prevailing on the northern continent. Heretics? How could he say such terrible things? Yes. The Holy Empire is ruled by the Lanyabert family, whose members are the descendants of the one and only God. Therefore, it is absolutely unforgivable for the divine heir to be accused of serving Malin, which strictly prohibits slime hunting. Why would I, the future ruler of the empire, worship some kind of slime? While the prince was babbling enthusiastically, his neck suddenly broke. Oh! Oh my God! Prince! I, the first apostle of Malin's teachings, will avenge your unfortunate death. The time had come to spread the truth about what the unjust false teachings had suppressed. Don't you have a conscience, husband? The time has come to rise and fight, loyal followers of Malin. Chapter, 282 Malin's teachings is a cult from the northern continent, aren't they? Burn the heretics! Get out of our land! The eyes of the Holy Empire's brainwashed citizens were filled with anger. I understood the reason behind their actions, however. They simply feared being accused as heretics themselves. Grand Master Malin. Give me the wisdom and patience necessary to enlighten these stupid barbarians. What did the God of the Holy Empire do for you? Protect you? Isn't ensuring the safety of one's subjects the duty of any country? Is such a shallow task really worthy of your praises and loyalty? Master Malin demands nothing and requests nothing from you, but even so, since time immemorial, we have been living in his graces. Imagine life without flush toilets. The prevention of such a diabolical reality is the epitome of a real deity's true power. The cowardly wife poked me in the side, saying, it was you who distributed flush toilets, not Malin, but I ignored her, not wanting to take my eyes off the stupid savages. Well. Are you still not moved by his generosity and benevolence? At that moment. Glory to Malin. Shouted married man A, who was saved thanks to the Malin's teachings religion. I thought he would be useless after his retirement, 
but he provided support beyond my expectations. He even used his faith. Type, S. Name, Faith. Rank, SS. SS, Seal Heretics. SS, Punish Heretics. S, Brainwash Heretics. A, Find Heretics. B, Recognize Heretics. C, Resist Brainwashing. D, Resist False Preaching. E, Strengthen Faith with Prayers. F, Belief. Faith was useless at its lower ranks, but fraudulent effects arose once it had leveled up. Married man as faith was SS rank, which showed his sincere belief in Malin's teachings. By the time he reached the capital of the Holy Empire, he was extremely pumped up. O oh, long live Malin's teachings! Malin! Malin's teachings it is the one true religion. His SSS rank effect quickly converted the heretics. I didn't even need to interfere anymore. Master Malin's greatness quickly spread throughout the capital of the Holy Empire. Because of karma, heroes couldn't enjoy the same hospitality mercenaries did, but they were never neglected since they weren't just mere weaklings either. As a result, a magnificent sight unfolded before my eyes. Married Man A, a hero who sincerely believed in the Malin's teachings, invaded the imperial palace of the Holy Empire, leading an army composed of the opposing nation's own citizens. Stop him. The hero has gone insane. Stop the fallen hero. Guards. Guards. Married man as flaw was his low-ranked combat SS, which was the side effect of absorbing strong opponent's experience points with the help of Brave to level up swiftly. That still meant his level was impressive, though. I followed the angry believers of Malin at a leisurely pace. This was a good opportunity to learn about the politics and power structure of the Holy Empire. Overthrow the false god. For the glory of Malin. Take up arms and gather under the flag of Malin. There is no turning back now. Forward. Everyone shall know and praise his glorious name. Malin. 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 Malin's followers marched unhesitatingly into the heart of the imperial palace. Strange. Way for everyone, their progress was still too fast. The resistance was too weak, considering we were at the heart of the entire Holy Empire. This place served as the home of the Holy Empire's emperor and royal family, which dominated the entire northern part of the central continent. However, such a crucial place had nowhere near enough soldiers and guards to defend it for some reason. Where did they all go? Maybe they've given up and fled. I shook my head, rejecting Soja's hypothesis. I knew better because I had become the emperor. If the emperor escapes during a civil uprising, his reign will come to an end. Running away during such a tumultuous time, as you suggested, is tantamount to abandoning the empire altogether. But this was absolutely not the case. The Holy Empire was strong because of the royal family's pride and their long history. What about the current emperor? I didn't know if he was still sick like in the fourth curriculum, but the emperor was never soft-hearted. He wouldn't abandon his throne. Bang! Soon, married man a slammed open the heavy doors of the throne room, revealing a sight that made me feel a bit nostalgic since. As emperor of the Holy Malin Empire, I used this place for quite some time. At the far end of it, a commotion was ongoing. Daughter. What are you doing? I'm changing my country, father. All the knights whose absence I noticed were here. Standing alongside the imperial princess, they surrounded the emperor and his royal guards. It was an incredible view. But there was sowing more surprising than that. Race, human. Level, 274. Job, Imperial Princess Rank in the Hierarchy Attention. SS, Faith SS, Charm S, Elegance A, Eternal Youth A, Politics A. Status, Desire, Excited. Her status wasn't much different from what I remembered, except for one factor. SS Rank Faith. It was a high level S that she didn't have before. Why did you abandon our god for that heretic cult called Malin's Teachings? The emperor seemed more surprised by her new religion than her treason. This is the best way to get rid of my older brother, your heir to the throne. You. 
Malin's teachings made it easy for me to put the blame for this whole ordeal on him. Like a low-grade villain, the princess smiled triumphantly and revealed all her plans. You're willing to destroy our family for the throne. How could you allow yourself to commit such a grave sin? I had no choice. My brother would have ed me otherwise. This is nonsense. Let's continue this later, father. We have visitors. The imperial princess decided to act. Protect his majesty. In the name of Malin. The two factions knights charged against each other. The result of it was a foregone conclusion already, though. Ack. Your majesty. The princess knights thrust their swords into the emperor's body without mercy or hesitation. Having lost their master, the royal guards of the Holy Empire threw down their weapons and surrendered, forgetting their duty to protect their country. The imperial princess smiled brightly at the winning faction. Allow me to sincerely welcome you to my imperial palace, my fellow believers of Malin's teachings. It is thanks to all of you that my career advancement plans accelerated. Sly. Her combat power was the lowest among the hero's companions, but she was still the most dangerous of them all. In order to become the Empress of the Holy Empire, she was ready to use any means and ODs. It was easy to read other companions who mindlessly rushed into battle regardless of reason, unlike her, who dealt with everything in a much more complicated manner. You ed your own father. Married man A, possessing the sensitivity of earthlings, looked at the newly made empress with surprise. The princess sat on the throne nonchalantly, replying, It is unfortunate, but my father was a heretic who refused to accept Malin's teachings. His death pains my heart, but it had to be done. Saying this, the princess let an ostentatious tear fall from one of her eyes' corners. Don't mock Malin's teachings. Married Mana shouted. Oh. My faith in Malin's teachings is stronger than anyone else's. You're a hero, so you should be well aware of that, shouldn't you? The SS rank of my faith is proof of that. Faith is not everything. You cannot use his teaching for your own benefit. Malin is not a political instrument. You attach too much importance to this. I am merely telling the truth. This is the only way to ensure the followers of Malin's teachings can live peacefully in the Holy Empire without fear of persecution. This is a fight for freedom. That is just sophistry. He treats everyone equally, and heretics are no exception. Why are you not aware of that despite claiming to be an ardent admirer of Malin? The newly made empress and the retired hero began to argue about the correct interpretation of the doctrines. It wasn't even funny. They dared argue about this while standing in front of me, the first apostle of Malin's teachings. However, I couldn't reveal my identity. Everyone knew the legend about the prophet, who spread the word of Grand Master Malin. He defeated the demon lord but fell under his curse, becoming the new demon lord. However, that didn't mean there was no way out. Master Malin. Malin. A rainbow slime peeped out of Soja's vile chest. Silence. Master Malin himself will explain what his wisdom truly means in a way that would allow lowly beings to understand. Ah. Oh my god. Whoa. Surprised exclamations echoed across the throne room. Regaining their senses, Malin's followers immediately fell to the ground. Not even the hero and the imperial princess were exceptions. Please teach and train your arrogant believers, Master Malin. 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 Loyal followers. As you have heard, he declared that he would reward everyone equally. Hmm. Oh. It seemed that only I understood the deep meaning of Master Malin's words. TSK. Praise and pray for his holy name even if your minds can't comprehend his doctrine. Understanding will come with time. Ah. Malin. Malin. Today, history was made as Malin's teachings became the Holy Empire's state religion. In this round, where classmate A became married man A, I reaped a bountiful harvest. The Holy Empire pursued Malin's followers, and the Imperial Princess was one of them. Information was power. I took advantage of the situation immediately. All my copies wrote and mailed letters that said, Imperial Princess, I know your secret. 
Upon receiving the letter, she was left no choice but to cooperate. I wasn't doing too bad. Cowardly husband. What? Karma has already done its job. If you also interfere, the heroes will go crazy altogether. That just means they'll retire earlier. A hero's adventures were optional. If it was hard for them, they could just give up and start a family, like what married man they did. And they would have children. The day the Max-class demon lord and the cowardly second demon would rule the fantasy dimension was near. Until next time, Kong Han Su. Married man A, having completed his mission as a faithful follower of Malin, retired and focused on his life with his wife. It wasn't just him. Many heroes who visited the Holy Empire abandoned their hopes and dreams. They had no other option, after all. Only a few female heroes rescued Prince A and helped him defeat the Imperial Princess. For the Holy Malin Empire. Glory of Malin be praised. The state, now named Holy Malin Empire, quickly stabilized under the rule of the new Empress. All this took about three years, starting from the moment the hero was summoned. In other words, if Prince A wasn't saved and the Imperial Princess was not stopped within three years, the heroes wouldn't even be able to get to the northern part of the central continent. Unless they were a follower of Malin, that was. This will cause my aunt a lot of problems. Because the old Holy Empire no longer exists. Yes. It was the only country that believed in her. The Holy Empire, praising the first angel, had sunk into the history of fantasy. I like this outcome. I wonder how she'll react to that. Sudden appearance, Cadet Kong Han Su. I learned the results of the teaching staff meeting. Changes will take place in all educational dimensions soon. Thank you for letting me know, beautiful and smart trainee teacher. Is this about the S that will balance karma? Denial, unfortunately, the S won't be implemented anymore since it will confuse the S system. It wasn't that the system would be confused. They just couldn't add the S itself. Ha! Huh. That's right. My aunt is incapable of building SS. Create spatial transference magic so we can escape already, my cowardly wife. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you too. As Soja said, it was just an excuse to hide the fact that they couldn't add their own SS. However, it looked like they finally took some action. Problem, I think it's better to see the results of their decision in person than to listen to my explanation. Why? Explanation, take a look at the students. I decided to check up on the heroes, as trainee teacher suggested. Married man A. Dad, what are you doing? I'm overcoming my limits. I am trying to become an invincible hero who will protect my beautiful princess. Pre. Oh. Do. Letha. Pre. Del. He he he, you're so silly, dad. He was trying to acquire a Zirank S. It wasn't only married man A. Except for complete beginners, the heroes didn't hesitate to sacrifice their SS to gain Zirank SS. Why was that? Oh. I see the problem now. She removed the S reset feature. The system rules had been changed in such a way that allowed the SS to be retained even after regressing. If they couldn't add a new S, they decided to remove existing features instead. It was a nice countermeasure against karma, which put more pressure on heroes the more they regressed. However, didn't they expect that I, the Max class demon lord, who used to be a hero, would also regain my SS? In the first round, after ten years of suffering from the companions who interfered with my adventures as the righteous hero, I trained pretty hard. Honestly, even at the end of the adventure, I didn't have a single max ranked S, let alone transcendental. But I did have a lot of rare SS because I gradually developed them without the power of the black box. And they were all balanced. That was what was most important. Anti what the hell have you done? Looks like we won't be bored in the foreseeable future, cowardly wife. The heroes mastered many transcendental SS and rushed to the demon lord's castle with high hopes and dreams. However, they would soon understand that they weren't the only ones that had their seals broken. Welcome, heroes. The vile power of friendship. The vicious power of love. 
Regression Experiences The Fraudulent Black Box And an Automatic Sword The Power That Defeated the Demon Lord Pedinar with Ease I was about to engrave it beautifully into their hearts, mind, body, soul, and bones. Chapter, 283 Hero Fiona from France Of course, Fiona wasn't her real name, but a fictitious one she used for her new life in fantasy. Having mixed Latin Slavic blood, she was often praised as a living doll since her younger years. In middle school and high school, people often said she was like a British princess. Having enough of it, however, she grumbled, ugh. Why couldn't they say I was better than the British princess? Who do you mean by British princess, Lady Fiona? Her expression softened at the question from the handsome man. Victoria a woman who considers herself the best. That is extremely arrogant. You shouldn't compare yourself to her. Huh? Why? Fiona shivered, feeling humiliated. The handsome guy then gave an answer that melted her feminine heart. We gathered here for the sake of Lady Fiona and not for the sake of world peace. We don't care about princesses. We only want to help you. Companions crowded around Fiona. But there were only two women in their party. Hero Fiona and the Saintess. The rest were men diverse in age, appearance, clothing, and job. Thank you, Behel. Having her spirits lifted, Fiona smiled gratefully at him. I'm just telling the truth. Ahem. It's time, Hero. The final battle lies ahead. Yes. Follow me, Fiona said, looking at the Demon Lord's castle. She felt like a squeezed-out lemon due to her inability to realize that getting to the Demon Lord's castle could be so difficult. The fourth curriculum was tough. Due to the lack of a normal diet and food, she suffered from menstrual problems. She had to fight against such womanly issues right in the open air while traveling or somewhere in the dungeons. Fortunately, she got used to it over the years. Hero Fiona. What are you thinking about? Ah. Excuse me. I just remembered a past adventure. Fifth curriculum was far more comfortable in comparison. She didn't know how it happened, flush toilets suddenly ran rampant across the continents, and with its proliferation, the quality of life on fantasy improved markedly. She was so glad when she saw such inventions that she burst into tears. But her happiness didn't last long. The S karma had appeared, and it ranked up every time heroes regressed. Because of it, her journey had become unbearable. The advantage of knowing future events after regressing was made obsolete. As the hero's reputation decreased, the attitude of local residents towards them also changed. Since the same situation led to different results, knowing what would happen in the foreseeable future offered little to no help at all. Everything was different now, however. Race, special person. Level, 999. Job, Hero Experience 500%. SS, Charm Z, Sword Mastery Z, Magic Z. Status, Anticipation, Satisfaction. She had acquired three transcendental SS. Although her overall S composition had become somewhat unbalanced due to the donation of all of her high-ranked SS, she grew confident that no one could beat her. Tip, Do Not Look Down on the Demon Lord, Apprentice Fiona. Arrogance is said to precede death. Be vigilant until you've decapitated his head. Aha, uh -huh, Fiona replied with a smile to her importunate teacher morals. As strong as the demon Lord Parmamon was, she didn't care. Every time she regressed, her SS returned. That alone made a huge difference. She had spent 80 years in the world of fantasy. She hadn't finished training yet since her SS were reset every time she regressed, making it impossible for her to balance them properly. But now. I have 80 years of adventure behind me. Teacher Morals said that if she went on an adventure and practiced the power of love and friendship, then after five years, she'd be able to easily defeat the demon lord. But she already spent 80 years doing that. Logically speaking, she could no longer be defeated. Of course, she still prepared herself and steeled her will. Among her companions were three brave users. If the demon lord were stronger than expected, they would activate their job's effect, 
lowering her opponent's level to level 1. You won't get through, huh? Fiona easily dodged the demon's attack and fought back. In front of her was the Grand Duke of Demons, considered the second most powerful after the demon lord himself, but he wasn't worthy to be her opponent. Based on your abilities, I can approximate his current strength Fiona said calmly. Was it because of the suffering she went through over the past eighty years? She was extremely worried, but it seemed to be in vain. If the demon lord were only slightly stronger than the Grand Duke, even he wouldn't last long against her might. Bang! On the castle's top floor, Fiona opened the gate at the end of the hallway and confidently entered the throne room. Finally! Finally! She strode forward vigorously, looking forward to the moment she'd deliver the final blow to end the Demon Lord's reign. Demon Lord Parmamon! Prepare yourself! Today is the day you fall at the hands of hero Fiona. Oh, of course, whenever you're ready. The Demon Lord, previously sitting motionlessly on his throne, slowly rose to his feet. Ha! Huh. Fiona immediately felt goosebumps claw up her spine upon checking his stats. Race, United Spirit of Fantasy. Job, Demon Lord Hero Level. SS, Dark Energy Z, Sword Mastery SS, Strength SS, Resistance SS, Evasion SS. Status, Demon Sword, Blessing, Empowerment, Amulet. Apart from his job, everything else about him was unusual. Was it because he was a fallen hero in this new scenario? He was strikingly different from the first demon she knew. Was he even a demon at all? His level and job were normal. Seeing that there was a Z rank among his SS, Fiona clicked her tongue. If I didn't have transcendental SS, this fight would have been nigh impossible. Her reality was different now, however. She had surpassed him in terms of SS alone. She also had many companions around me. On the other hand, the demon lord was alone. No, a flower fairy was sitting on his head. However, she didn't increase his combat power. Have you finished checking my stats? Was that also because of his background as a fallen hero? He knew she could view his information about him. Fiona didn't move. I don't know why, but my instincts whisper that I must study him more closely. Hero Fiona changed her abilities setting to examine in detail. At that moment. Browerfk. She showed everyone what she ate during the day. Lady Hero. Mistress Fiona. Her surprised companions called out to her, but she, covering her face with both hands, couldn't answer. Looks like you're done, Demon Lord Parmamon said with a laugh. For the first time in a long time, I could enjoy the sensations I felt during my first round. My actual body was already strong as it was, so I felt it less, but it was different from my copy that only had dark energy Z. My strength had increased several times. Similar SS of mine also overlapped and complemented each other, forming a good synergy. SS, Dark Energy Z, Sword Mastery SS, Strength SS, Resistance SS, Evasion SS, Annihilation SS, Ambition SS, Sixth Sense SS, Frenzy SS, Muscle Strength SS, Grab SS, Darkness SS, Command SS, Mobility SS, Speculation SS, Bleed SS, Five Senses SS, Escape SS, Dignity SS, Assassination SS, Rain SS. Status, Demon Sword, Blessing, Empowerment, Amulet, Engraving, Ascension, Fortify, Inspire, Haste, Luck, Protection, Superiority, Charge, Safety Net, Guardian, Synergy. If I were asked to get all these SS again and raise their ranks, I would never be able to do it. There are SS that could only be learned in a specific situation, setting, or even through defeat. The first round, when I still had a sense of hopelessness and despair, when everything around me seemed unfamiliar and frightening, was perfect for this. Understanding, now I understand the feeling of loss you felt after regressing. Thank you for comforting me, trainee teacher. Your beauty applies both to your body and soul. But I got it over with. When I thought I had lost everything after regressing, I realized that the teachings of Master Malin were preserved in my memories. Malin was my light. My salvation. My guiding star. Hey! Hero and her dummies, what do you believe in? 
love, friendship, courage, miracles, hope, determination. Anything will do. Show me the power of your faith. A. Ag. Ra. To battle. Fiona, who still couldn't open her eyes as she was still trying to rationalize the truth, was left behind. Her companions rushed forward with a cry. Even if they couldn't view other people's stats, their eyes and instincts were honed and trained to determine whether they were stronger than the enemy or not. But it seemed that they relied too much on the hero. They didn't even lower my level to one, although there were brave users among them. Die. FSHSH. I unleashed my domineering aura, which combined the effects of about 34 SS, and those who couldn't resist it grabbed their chest and fell. Their cause of death was cardiac arrest, making their weak minds evident. And the rest. Fashu. I used the demon sword to strike an area with an attack that combined the effects of about 196 SS. He's too strong. You're too weak. It would have been nice if my companions were as weak as you. My companions in the first round were powerful. It was true that many died during my adventures, but it didn't matter since the rest of them grew stronger. Especially. The Sword Princess. Elf Queen. Sage. Mercenary King. The last four were the strongest. The saintesses from the northern, central, and southern continents weren't among our ranks back then. Hence, they couldn't count on a fraudulent resurrection. And I took the opportunity to them with a surprise attack. And now. Combined with my USF race and the Z-rank dark energy, I was even stronger. Teacher. Teacher. Answer me. This is a completely different scenario than what you told me. How can I ever defeat this monster? Fiona, left alone, began to desperately mutter to himself. Teacher. Was she asking Teacher Morals for help? Ha! Demon Lord Parmamon. I must apologize. I'm really sorry. It looks like I've lost my way. Please spare me. Because of karma, I. I was growing tired of hearing her screams. Her head, filled with tears, snot, and drool, rolled across the cold floor. Sorry, young miss. I have many other clients. In the neighboring dimension, Great Duke befell, filtering out the weak heroes in the process. Drug Demon Lord, it's time to get to work. He he he. Yeah. There were many heroes before us that needed to be taught a lesson. Chapter, 284. Cowardly husband, what kind of life did you live for ten years for it to result in almost all of your combat SS reaching SS rank? Asked Soja, hiding behind the throne in stealth mode, like a GM in an MMO game. I couldn't help but laugh at her query. What a stupid question. I diligently upgraded my SS ranks. While my companions increased the power of their love and friendship, celebrating the fact that there were more widows in the world all night long. I constantly trained, highlighting low-ranked SS and pondering how to improve their proficiency in the shortest possible time. My goal was to upgrade all of my SS to SS rank. Because, as I had learned over time, max rank and SS rank SS had the same effects. Z rank was out of the question. I needed to become stronger than my companions. And not just stronger than one of them. I improved my SS so much that even if they united and attacked me together, they wouldn't be able to win. Is that even possible? Why wouldn't it be? Heroes had a 5x experience boost perk. Hence, it only took me about 4 years to catch up and overtake even those companions who had improved their SS and level since childhood. The Sword Princess, for example. She learned how to use the sword from a really young age. Calculating the numbers, she had been training for 25 years already. Under the same conditions, it would take me about 5 years to do what the Sword Princess did. But I didn't really need that much time. Because of your talent for. No. Where would an awkward high school student, who couldn't even hurt insects, gain such a talent? Oh, I see. So you were a high school student who ed monsters because bugs didn't give you experience. The first spirit began spouting nonsense after listening to me silently. You're out of your mind. There are no monsters on earth. 
Lying is bad, drug demon lord. It is impossible to deceive the noblest and wisest first spirit. If you don't believe me, ask my mother through a smartphone no, it's better if you don't. You won't hear anything good from her anyway. Let's do it. He'll make sure to ask. He he he. Shut up. In any case, before her adventures with the hero, the sword princess did more than just train during those twenty-five years. She ate, went to the toilet, slept, had fun. She had twenty-five years of experience, but she was lazy and slow, resulting in her spending even less time on her training. If the hero actively used their job features, they'd be able to catch up with the sword princess in two years. Considering it would take another year to surpass her, the total time needed to defeat her would be three years. Only that long. Well, in theory. It actually took a lot longer for me since my companions kept hindering my development. There were times when they refused to let me turn criminals into experience points and instead let them go. They also took away my trophies, which I collected despite the difficulty, and gave them away to robbers that claimed they were the real owners of my possessions. That wasn't all. I always had to clean up after my companions. I had no choice but to do so. Those insane psychopaths just dropped everything and left with happy faces after quenching their thirst for blood, saying that today was a good day. That's because they only look forward and do not regret the past. That's just empty and worthless sophistry. The locals often simply exclaimed, thank you for saving us. Thanks to you, we can be happy. It was all because they feared mass airs that ed people with smiles on their faces. Aren't those all just your delusions? Are you saying I'm scary too? Imagine how the weak residents would feel if they heard you. My goal was to improve my mastery of martial SS. But since my companions interfered, even SS that I had no use for increased. Politics, economics, engineering, hygiene, beautification, religion, art, education. Almost all SS, except production, reached at least SS rank. In the end, since it took a lot of time to clean up after my party members, not only my combat SS improved. Crazy. How can you call your max class husband crazy? No matter how hard I think about it, it still sounds insane. Having said this, Soja suddenly pressed her chest against my back and threw her arms around me. Then she rested her head on my shoulder. What are you doing? Can't you feel your damaged soul healing? No. My soul is absolutely healthy. He's just pretending to be strong. Hee <laughs> hee. You should just shut up forever. Appearance, I agree that Cadet Kong Han Su is insane. Ack. Trainee teacher broke my very heart. I felt so sad that I probably needed a heating pad to comfort me tonight. Surprise, I meant that you are too immersed in your work. You may not like the students, but you're not the hero anymore. You're the demon lord. Do not overwork yourself and rest. Even if the others are against it, I give you permission to do so. Trainee teacher promised that she would take responsibility for my life. I was touched. I needed to write this day down as our engagement anniversary. Confusion, you seem to have misunderstood me. Engagement, hagosh. A beautiful and wise girl like Soja suits you better. Someone like me will never be able to compete with her. Don't be so shy. Cowardly husband, if you want to seduce the innocent trainee teacher and make her as unhappy as I am, then you better give up. I will not let you. My niece is even more adorable when she's jealous. Auntie, can't you see the look on my face right now? I'm more serious than ever. You're even cuter when you try to deny everything to hide your feelings. Ack. Damn it. He he he. Since my companions prevented me from getting stronger, it took me ten whole years to accomplish my goals. But I was lucky. If the Saintess and the Sword King didn't die due to an accident, I wouldn't even have dared. Looking around, the corpses of the Z-ranked hero and her companions were lying on the cold hard floor. How pathetic. Overall, their combat ability was higher than my parties in the first round, but the combat power they could utilize left a lot to be desired. As expected, after the death of the hero, fantasy began to collapse. 
I had lost track of how many times this had happened now. I'm tired of everything. I was a civilized person who loved the world and smartphones. However, the endless stream of heroes kept destroying my peace. I knew the reason behind it all too well, too. Grand Duke B, the middle boss I used to filter out the weak, was too weak himself. I needed to deal with this problem quickly. Demon Lord Parmamon. I am the hero of the light huh? Become one with the light, then. Now I didn't even listen to the hero's greetings. The outcome remained the same anyway. As soon as they entered the throne room, they were immediately greeted by my SS. If the opponent survived by some miracle, they'd have earned themselves an additional zero. One seconds to live. They tried their best to get here, cowardly hubby. Don't you think it's too disrespectful to them right on your doorstep? Soja reproached me, who had been sitting quietly before because she had lost against her aunt in a verbal skirmish. Nonsense. Was there ever a hero that came to me who complained about anything at all? If my memory served me right, there were none. That meant they were perfectly okay with it. You ed them before they could say anything. Not my problem. If the hero, as Soja said, was dissatisfied with sewing, they needed to tell me before they died. They only had themselves to blame if they couldn't even do that. You'll most likely die without being able to say any final words to your mother. What? Check your smartphone. You haven't picked it up for such a long time that you're not even aware that your mom's angry. Give that to me. Since I was distracted, the hero threw his spear at me, but it didn't bother me much. Why was mother angry? Many different reasons came to mind, so it was hard to say. Mother, my son, so dearly beloved by the princess, where have you gone? 842. Mother, it looks like you're in no rush to answer this time. 752. Mother, did sewing happen to you? 1506. Damn it. I made her worry. Once the opportunity presented itself, I had to tell her that even the whole planet combined was weaker than me. Mother, my daughter-in-law checked your smartphone history. 9.32. Hmm. Mother, so romance novels are more important to you than your own mother? 9.34. Romance novels. Mother, humph. Do whatever you want. 10.14. Mother, my second son is now more important to me. 10.14. A photo was attached in the last post. In it, she was kissing the cheek of an ugly two-year-old child. Soja, I'm waiting for an explanation. I think there was a daughter-in-law involved. She's certainly no ordinary person. That's not what I'm talking about. Romance novels. Explain. Now. Since I can't confirm my age, it's impossible to read them, so I used your account instead wait. I also have sewing to say. Speak. She should worry about her body. Mother won't stop being angry at you even if you vent your anger out on me. But I will stop being angry. I hugged Soja's waist to keep her from moving. I wondered if she was ready. I hoped so. I admit, I did not expect that the daughter-in-law your mother praises so much is so powerful that she can easily access other people's personal data. However, isn't there a more important problem to solve right now? She was right, but what could I do? While I was digging through my smartphone, three more copies of mine fell. No matter how powerful the SS1 had, such abilities would be of no use if they didn't move. I couldn't delay any longer. A graduate might appear this way. And if at least one student graduated from the fifth educational program, they would be able to return to Earth to talk about how they defeated the demon Lord Parmamon. That fact itself wasn't the problem. The problem would arise if they found out that the demon lord was called Kong Han Su. At that point, my family on earth might be put in harm's way. Therefore, I had to prevent them from getting past me. It was necessary to make sure that there wouldn't be a single graduate. Whisper, the students you mentioned failed to graduate. Their reputation and achievement scores were too low. You don't have to worry too much about them. Those weren't the only reasons, were they? Shrugging, you're right, Cadet Kong Han Su. 
they can't graduate if their body is badly damaged. Hence, even if they win, they'd still be the defeated ones in the end. I had a lot of advantages regarding that due to my long list of SS, some of which had a beneficial effect that activated in any situation. I had AS that made my body explode after death and another that put me in a berserk state when critically injured. Those weren't all. The list was long. I didn't even need to control my copies. My SS alone ed the heroes. However, there was a limit to how many times they would work. We need to hurry. I wouldn't be surprised if a graduate soon appeared after successfully defeating the Max Class Demon Lord. We urgently needed to come up with a solution. Let me go and listen calmly to my idea, cowardly husband. I can't concentrate in this position. He'll listen first, and if I like your idea, he'll let you go. Let go of me first. Later. Now. You, ouch. Okay, okay. He'll speak first. He'll replace the current middle boss with an even stronger one. Any passing slime could say such words. Is that your whole plan, Soja? If so, then I was extremely disappointed. That's just the beginning of my explanation. Previously, this was not possible, but now that I have taken over a significant part of the system, I can add your subjects to the textbook. Ah! Human Spirits Chapter, 285 18th Round The Power of the Demon Lord The spirits you bind to fantasy won't be able to return anymore. Keep my warning in mind and think it over carefully. Are you saying the first angel can get her hands on them? Only if we lose control of the system. If that happens, well become her puppets anyway, so it's better not to think about it. Indeed. She was right. Wasting time pondering about it was pointless. Have you decided? Yeah. Boris. Come to me. I've been feeling that your affection and interest in me had been gradually weakening after you got married, but I didn't think you'd decide to get rid of me completely. This upsets me. The most beautiful exorcist said upon her appearance. I'm sorry. I decided to apologize first. I, myself, didn't expect my father-in-law to foist his cowardly daughter on me. I was also a victim, but I knew that it wouldn't be enough of an excuse for Boris, who had been faithful to me, albeit having been isolated in silence. In addition, she alone wouldn't be able to stop the heroes and their companions due to the presence of Brave in their party. No matter how good one's stats were, if they weren't Malin's apostle, dropping to level one would severely limit them. What I had to do in this case was simple. My cowardly wife would solve this problem. Soja put in so much effort to monopolize my love with her nasty jealousy. I have never been jealous of another woman because of him. Lying is bad, my niece. Because of your stupidity, auntie, this cowardly traitor is turning everything inside out. Traitor. Why are you trying so hard to deny it? How cute. He he he. Ugh why do you only become discerning in moments like this when you're always playing the fool, auntie? Because it's funny. He he he. Soja had finally admitted that she was jealous of other women even when her handsome Max class husband was only just talking to them. She covered her flushed, embarrassed face with both hands. It makes no sense for me to be jealous. I will always be the second. That's not true. Any other female, except for the first, couldn't be loved more than the second. This was my attempt to express love in numbers. First place, 50. Second place, 10. Third place, 9. 9. Fourth place, 9. 9. Fifth place, 9. 9. Sixth place, 9. 9. Maybe sewing like this. Soja, who was crazy about me, was expecting an ideal picture like this. Second place, 49. 9. Third place, 0. 0, 0, 0 1. In other words, her superficial logic, based on the premise that she supposedly had no reason to be jealous because she would always be the second, was wrong. Well. Do you want to argue? You're right, but do not forget that the opposite is also possible. What she hinted at was quite predictable. 
First place, 99. 9. Second place, 0. 0 1. Third place. If she, forever in second place, renounced her love for me, causing hatred. I would forever love only one woman. However. So. My mother loved my father, who helped her with the housework. And my father unconditionally loved only my mother. It wasn't such a bad concept. The woman you love can hate you. If that happens, you'll have to become a eunuch anyway, enough about this. It may be a lie, but it makes you nervous. If she wanted to close the topic, then she should have shared the solution to the problem. Ahem I will divide Boris into four primordial personalities to make it easier to fight brave. Using your naughty fingers again. Shut up. I observed how Soja manipulated the system. The first angel, my aunt, controls time, and the first demon controls space. I can give you simple examples. Thanks to my auntie, time in dimensions of fantasy flows ten times slower, and heroes regress after death. The demon lord is responsible for the basis of the level and S system. It provides the soul with a vessel space that can be filled and store power. So I'm responsible for everyone's stats? Yes. After Soja's explanation, I raised a reasonable question. If, as you say, the stats of all living beings is generated by my power, then why can't I manipulate their levels and SS at will? Because it is an artificial force. You said it was the demon lord's power. This demoness was trying to powder my brains. Maintaining artificial strength is a separate issue. Imagine we're in a grocery store. No matter how much food you put there, you won't be able to eat it if it rots. However, because my aunt freezes time and space, SS are maintained. She essentially transfers perishable food from the pantry to the freezer. My cowardly wife was clearly a graduate of the University of El Milando, the homeland of Master Malin. She was good at explaining complicated concepts in layman's terms. If only she weren't jealous. That's enough. I didn't say anything. It was her own fault. I didn't force her to rummage in her husband's head, after all. Demon Lord Power Storage Space SS Food First Angel Power Freeze Time Storage Freeze Freezer Stats In other words, abilities here in fantasy resulted from the collaboration of the Demon Lord and the First Angel. The system wouldn't exist if one of them were missing. So what about Boris? You combined four souls to create one powerful entity, right? She was the fusion of Spirit 1, Spirit 2, Spirit 3, and Spirit 4. You and your weird names anyway, she normally can't be disassembled and separated. The souls merged completely, thus creating an entirely new being. Things are different now, however. You're the demon lord who rules over space. You can divide space itself to disconnect the spirits from each other. I see. I thought the demon lord position was just trash with a lot of dark energy, but it turned out to be quite fraudulent. Give it a try. Okay. I focused. Reality felt different now. Everything had changed. My consciousness expanded after Soja brought to my awareness that I could control space. She should have told me this useful information earlier. Boris, the human spirit with angelic wings and prominent breasts, was a single soul. At least she was before. Not anymore. I knew how she was created. The outlines of the souls that composed her existence became visible. Elven male, human male, elven woman, and a female angel. They were now tightly linked. Breaking their ties would separate them into four entities, regaining their former selves. Wasn't that too boring, though? Boris. I will accept any decision you make, sir. Do not worry. This is the price I have to pay for shattering Mistress Soja's monopoly on your love and for making her jealous. You are a really good girl. Soja should learn from her. Enough of this nonsense. Why am I being portrayed as a villain? And why am I being portrayed as a cowardly wife trying with all her might to win her husband's love and affection? Hee <laughs> hee. My niece still looks cute while burying herself further into this mess. Ah. 
I left Soja alone after she had said too much and activated the demon lord's power. The principle was simple. Soul, experience, SS. I just had to separate those three concepts and put them in the right bodies. They shall be known as the four celestial lords. I would even invent a legend for them. And what do you plan on calling them individually? King A, King B, King C, and King D. Pfft. Just shut up and watch. Using my smartphone, I went to a website with games popular on Earth. And copy, paste. Lord of Legends, Yasuho. Lord of Betrayal, Hanjo. Lord of Death. Lord of Steel, 2D. I can't believe you gave them real names, but I feel like you did it half-assedly. Just listen for now. They each have their own legend, after all. Yasuho was a male elf. He was a master of the sword, moving around the battlefield like the wind. Since he was a former hero, he knew how to wield the holy swords properly, but he didn't yet have one. Demon Lord, I am deeply grateful to you for resurrecting me, but I feel strange. Whenever I see my wife, I get the urge to kiss her feet. That's because you are your wife's faithful slave. Huh. Did I hear that wrong? No, you heard everything correctly. Hanjo was a female angel. She was a markswoman with a dragon tattoo. The site stated that she was a man with tattoos all over his body, but I was too lazy to change her too much, so I compromised and left the tattoos alone. It seems to me that you grew lazy in choosing the tattoos as well. No matter how anyone looks at it, my tattoo depicts not a dragon but a snake. And my weapon isn't even a bow. It's a spear. Do you want me to turn you into a man? Thank you for my wonderful body, demon lord. Everything about it suits my taste. Well, feel free to shut up then. Female Elf Her defeat at the hands of the hero and her subsequent submission even corresponded to her real version. For her devotion, I bestowed upon her outstanding breasts and a slave husband. Sir, I don't know how to express my gratitude to you for fulfilling my wishes. I'm glad you liked it. I shall live a delightful life with my husband, who laughed at my chest all his life and turned me into a weapon after death. I wish you happiness. Malin. 2D was a female android. She wasn't a huge mech, but a beautiful robotic lady who loved a little boy and fought for the glory of humanity. Equipped with the strength of brave, she was nigh invincible. How could a level 1 human hope to defeat an android in an equal fight? Kong Han Su. Fix me now. Boris, I admit, I didn't make you the black blindfold the original had, but if you insist, I can fix it for you. It's not about my outfit. Why am I a woman? You didn't even make me a human. Well, considering the reference I used for your body. You're insane. You could have chosen a male member of the human race as the source. I was a prince. A prince. Boris was indeed the true son of the first hero, but shortly before he became my subject, he was an android maid. I just went along with this scenario. Besides. I'm not going to redo everything. It's too hot. Then I refuse to cooperate. That's just impossible. You are equipped with a code that would make you your beloved little boy once I gave the order. You have no compassion at all. Those complaints should be directed to the authors of their references. But I have good news for you. I've added a retractable holy sword for you. Its thickness and length can be adjusted as desired, and it is strong enough to be able to pierce through any gates. Go to hell. Boris seemed so certain that I gave him the female android body to mock him, but he was greatly mistaken. It was simply the best choice for his brave job. I turned him into a woman because Boris, during his lifetime, was an android woman. It was all about properly synchronizing data. Boris, if you want, I will make you a male human. Do it now. But if you get D by the first female hero you come across, don't get mad at me. What is this nonsense? Check your stats. What about it Tisk? Race, beautiful android. Level, 500. Job, brave all around level 1. SS, cleaning S, laundry S, cooking S, 
grooming s, sewing s. Status, modification, surprise. Lord of Steel 2D was all about exterminating the hero's party using a fraudulent combination of race and job. The SS Brave didn't need were transferred to the other three celestial lords, leaving Boris with production, economic, and housekeeping SS instead. If I made a male human out of him, a level 500 servant, he would be nothing more than just walking experience points. If his enemy were a female hero, maybe his life would be spared. So what do you say, Boris? You planned this from the beginning. How rude. If I were so cruel, I wouldn't have armed you with a retractable holy sword to release all your grievances with. You can't deceive me. God. You just can't seem to understand your power and potential. The Lord of Steel would be the most terrifying creature, trampling over the love and friendship of all heroes. Type, Race. Name, Beautiful Android. Rank, Special. Feature 1, Advantage over the opposite. Feature 2, Vulnerability to the same. Ability 1, Reflect mental attacks. Ability 2, Unable to attack members of the same gender. Ability 3, Connector modified. Race 1, Mechanical attribute. Race 2, Modification. Soja, Place them in all dimensions. The time had come to plunge all of humanity into despair. Wait a minute, cowardly husband, are you really planning to carry out the plan to all the heroes? Isn't it too cruel? What was my jealous wife talking about? Wasn't she the one who suggested this herself? All for the glory of Malin. Hopes and dreams were born from despair or was it? Whatever, I didn't care. Chapter, 286. 18th Round Brave Rookie. After Soja tweaked the system, the four celestial lords were assigned to all of fantasy's training centers. Like other beings, they became stronger the higher the education course they were in, elementary, secondary, or tertiary. There was another advantage their existence brought me. Previously, my copies had to personally write letters to Alex and the Imperial Princess. But I no longer needed to do this. My subjects began to do this work instead of my copies. Essentially, the amount of work I could do at once had quadrupled. Not four, but five times. My husband seems to have forgotten how to count. And you seem to be having trouble thinking critically, my wife. I shouldn't be part of the count. With the decrease in the activity of my copies, my mental fatigue also decreased. And this was very important. After all, it meant that I could fight at any moment and bring forth my maximum power. If the director, suddenly sensing danger, decided to fight me, I would be in perfect condition and completely prepared to answer her challenge. But this didn't mean that I would rest all this time. Greetings, hero. I am an archaeologist who has long surpassed Lenovo in all aspects, and this is my cowardly wife. I know I am the first to speak to you, but I am not at all a serious person ack. Be silent, my useless husband. Let me, your incredible wife, explain everything myself. Sir Hero, we are noble aristocrats from the Northern Continent, and the Holy Empire can attest to our identities. I infiltrated the Rookie Heroes group to gather information. Why was I targeting a newcomer? Oh. I'm always welcome to having new companions around. Because they were easily fooled. They would never refuse the help of those who were ready to join their group since it allowed them to others easier for the sake of accumulating experience points. That was why they brought in those who couldn't adapt to life on Earth, wasn't it? Newbies treated this vicious world like an RPG game. They worried about whether they could a person for about a day and then easily chopped them like bamboo the very next morning. Isn't that amazing, hubby? These kids were still in kindergarten when you first came into this world, and now they're experiencing what you've gone through. Not really. The fact that I was so old made me depressed. They were still newbies, so the rank of their karma s wasn't so high yet. Likewise, however, they were yet to learn all the bitterness of going on an adventure. Regardless, the locals would be nice to them as long as they agreed to work for free. I wanted to observe what they were doing and analyze where their journey was going. If I deduced that everything was going right for them. I would immediately take action. Regret, 
fewer and fewer students are interested in going on an adventure. We continue to receive complaints about the journey being too difficult. Even still, it is unlikely to change for the better anytime soon. Thanks for the explanation, smart and beautiful trainee teacher. Time was on my side despite having quite a long time pass. There were many powerful and highly experienced students from the secondary and tertiary education courses, but even they couldn't pose as hindrances to me. Excitement, recently, my senior colleagues have been holding meetings frequently. They are even joined by other elders, whose faces I haven't seen because they've always been busy prior to this issue. This is pretty amazing. The fact that the faculty was forced to meet so often only confirmed the fact that my plan worked. We needed to keep this up. My decision to become the rookie hero's companion and watch him turned out to be rather boring, though. Well, I couldn't blame him. He was called a beginner for a reason. Many of the newcomers impatiently pounced on monsters after just checking their level, causing them their deaths. They were so idiotic that I started to think that Sieg's first trip was incredible after watching them. Relatively speaking. One year, two years, five years, ten years. Data was collected little by little. However, I couldn't collect any information on other continents since the hopeful newcomers retired or died after embarking on their journey and failing almost instantaneously. But it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the central continent was completely in my hands. That aside. Mom, ungrateful son, let me tell you how cute and nice your little brother is. 732. Mom, surprisingly, even the head of the district police department personally came to say hello today. 1615. Mom, he worries me sometimes. I don't think he should be sent to kindergarten. He's too smart for that level of education. 1723. Mom, you should see how adorable he is when he touches my smartphone with his little hands. 8 hours 61 minutes. Mom, son, listen to this. I feel as if my body has become lighter than before. I can even play tennis longer than before now. 734. Mother's vile second son had won over her heart. I wished she knew I couldn't sleep at night because of this, even after I had already buried my face in the cheeks of my cowardly wife. Do you not know how uncomfortable I am when you do this? And don't wipe your snot on my skin. It's your ass. Who cares? Just don't wipe it on me. Today, the journey of another rookie hero ended. Everything went smoothly at first. For three months, he learned the basics of combat from Alex and then traveled with Lenovel, the archaeologist. His companions were the mermaid Princess Aqua, Saint Asse, and Holy Knight's commander Tomato. He also had two brave users in his party. But that was all. Sir Hero, do you know Malin? And no. Trust in Malin, and the truth shall be revealed before you. Sorry, but I already believe in another religion on earth. I cannot betray it. All is fine. Malin is benevolent even to heretics. Heretics? Only those who believe in another religion have to pay a fee in the holy Malin Empire. What? Did earth no longer teach what taxes were? These heroes seem to have no knowledge of it. The knight explained everything to the stupid hero. In the Holy Malin Empire, you will be charged an additional fee on the purchase of any goods. Hotel room prices will also be higher for you compared to the prices offered to the followers of Malin. I know what taxes are. How much would the increase be? Everything will be sold to you at double its original price. Huh. It's not that hard to understand. They'll be twice as expensive for you. You'll also be charged for using flush toilets. What? The overly rational logic began to irritate him. What was causing his dissatisfaction? The divine being is benevolent to everyone. Therefore, his faithful followers have to put up with the fact that they live side by side with heretics. The extra fees are just a small payment for the moral damage they receive daily. Damn. Sir Hero, are you still going to enter the territory of the Empire? Yes. To avoid the toll, the Hero and his companions pretended to be followers of Malin's teachings. However, they were quickly seen through. 
They didn't praise Malin or pray to him every day, after all. Just forgetting to do it once or twice could be considered an honest mistake, but since it had been repeated endlessly, the citizens couldn't help but accuse them of fraud and treason. On the other hand, oh, you must be his most loyal follower. May Malin bless you even more. Malin. May the patronage of the fair and righteous Malin be with you. Malin. I was an exception. Even if I didn't reveal that I was the first apostle of Malin's teachings, the rest of the followers bowed their heads before me, showing their respect. Additionally, since Soja was my wife, no one dared touch her even though she was a heathen. Soja should be grateful. P.F. I don't even care anymore. After paying a fine, the hero's pockets were left empty, making it more difficult for him to continue the journey. The thought about having to clean up some ruins or rob a tomb alone made him dizzy and nauseous. Therefore, he took extreme measures. Let's the demon lord. Said the rookie hero in such a tone that made it seem like he decided to fight the main boss immediately due to his boredom playing an RPG game. How naive. It didn't take long for him to be stopped by one of the celestial lords, who was guarding the entrance to the demon lord's castle. What was her name again? You worked hard to get here, hero. Since I betrayed my people to prove my loyalty to the demon lord Parmamon, I have been expecting your arrival. Oh. The lord of betrayal. Flapping her snow-white wings, she slowly descended to the ground. Her clothes resembled the outfit of an angel. Hoping for the effect of reflecting the divinity s, she covered only the innermost parts of her body. She had a bow in her hands, and a spear hung diagonally on her back. Sir Hero, leave her to us and move on. He'll only leave after undressing defeating this angel. Ha! Don't worry. We can handle her ourselves. Some of his companions stayed behind to deal with her, but none of them could even mount a proper resistance against her. See coward. How fast. Get down and fight fairly. You only have a spear for decoration. She only pretended to fight on the ground. But then, betraying their expectations, she flew high into the sky, pulled back her bowstring. And rained down volleys upon volleys of arrows upon them, which marked the beginning of her one-sided massacre. Hmm. She follows my orders well. She proved that the years I spent teaching and honing her wasn't for nothing by showing me that her wings weren't just for aesthetics. It was like watching a battle between a fighter jet and a tank. It was obvious who would emerge the victor. But the hero, blindly believing that his companions would win, charged onwards, never once looking back to check on them. It didn't take long for him to be blocked by an elven couple, though. Stop. You're not allowed to go any further. I knew their names, but I didn't care and decided to skip introducing them. If you go on like this, then why were their names and lore even necessary, cowardly hubby? To make it easier for others to understand. After much deliberation, I decided to name them Lord A, B, C, and D. It was easier to remember, and no one would be offended. Oh. You're the Lord of Legends, Yasuho of the Wind. Shouted someone from the hero's party upon coming across the elf who looked more like a hero than the hero himself. He was wearing blue pants and a cape that seemed like it was handmade by a master craftsman. All in all, he was just like what the legendary hero was supposed to be. Hmm. Am I that popular? Yasuho asked with a smile. Yes. Many have heard of an elf who can drive any female crazy but has been enslaved by his own wife. I see. Sighing, Yasuho drew his blades instead of making excuses, wielding a sword in his right hand and a dagger in his left. He didn't have the holy sword Nucleon, but his swordsmanship was still one that shouldn't be messed with. Sir Hero, I have long wanted to fight Yasuho, the Lord of Legends, to find out which of us is stronger. Brave A stepped forward as he made a bold declaration, only to lose his head after only a moment. Alex had deceitful SS, but the real rogues were the royal elves. Yasuho, the second husband of the pathetic third elf king's sister. He had already lived for quite a long time. Combining that with his talent and hard work, it became impossible for anyone to overcome him through efforts alone. Oh. 
well, unless I was the one fighting him myself. Talent and hard work were nothing before Malin's teachings, after all. Faster than the wind. Moreover, he wasn't alone. Someone else was standing behind him. Darling, you are too slow. I am sorry. Yasuho moved faster after hearing his wife's complaints. At that moment. We need to catch his wife and hold her hostage against him. This is where we'll meet our end otherwise. One of the hero's companions voiced out an ingenious plan. His wife is a celestial lord too. If my memory serves me right, she's Silverass, the lord of death. I heard that nobody has ever survived against her. It's all a bluff. After all, the only got going for her is her husband. Secretly receiving instructions from me, Yasuho didn't immediately the hero but played with him for a while. Because of this, the fools in his party thought that they had a chance to grab his wife while the hero restrained the Lord of Legends. As a result, they were all beautifully cut in half. When I divided the SS between the four subjects, I decided to give her a little more, although she was already strong. They don't take me seriously since you're too weak, honey. I, I beg your pardon. The greatest elf king, Elfheim, has entrusted you with his most beloved sister. Therefore, as my husband, you should work harder. You're only a sister to him. What did you say? He'll try even harder for you. All of the hero's companions, except Soja and me, had perished. Lenovel, sensing danger, wanted to run away, but Hanjo dealt with her. As for the hero himself. Give me five seconds done. Sorry about that. I sent my mother a message. You can deal with him now. As you wish. The second reason I targeted newbies was that they had the latest smartphones. I wasn't certain, and perhaps it was just me, but I thought the internet connection was even better with the latest tech. Account access verified. Initiating the retinal authentication process. Look at the camera. Initializing. Welcome, Vice President Kong Han Su. Stop. Don't him yet. In the smartphone I borrowed from my junior, a Suyus message appeared. Chapter, 287. 18th round Who are you? The Suyus message wasn't a text sent in real time by a human but a preset greeting. The proof of it was how it addressed me. Vice President Kong Han Su. Nobody would call me that, considering I had never held such a title in my life. But you made a good tyrant and emperor, didn't you, cowardly hubby? Do not distract me with your nonsense. I was annoyed. Vice President, not President. This meant that there was a President out there that was standing above me and could tell me what to do. Why was I ranked second highest? Did my cowardly wife infect me with her curse? Hey! That's borderline paranoia. A curse isn't transmissible like a disease. What is it, then? I looked at my smartphone again. Downloading. Locked functions activated. Auxiliary system activated. Auxiliary battery activated. Auxiliary antenna activated. The tiny smartphone had a lot of serious features that the owner might not even be aware of. The most noticeable change was its level of communication. Instead of one strip, three appeared. What followed surprised me even more. Hello, Kong Han Su. A message appeared on the screen. It seemed to be sent by a human. Who are you? I asked mechanically. Normally, it would be necessary to type in my reply, but I answered by voice because there was no window for entering text like in messengers. I am Victoria. If you have questions, ask them one at a time. The auxiliary battery lasts about three hours. That should be plenty enough time. Was this what they called voice recognition software? Sewing similar already existed when I was an exemplary citizen on Earth, but it couldn't work perfectly yet. It gave me permission to ask a question. So I did. Who are you? How could I understand anything when all it gave me was an unfamiliar name? You haven't changed at all. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, though. If she had introduced herself as Factoria from the very beginning, this misunderstanding wouldn't have arisen. 
how could I recognize her with the name that she initially gave me? Do all new smartphones have such hidden features? Only the most recent models. This project was only launched when I found out you established a connection with the Earth. How did you do that? I didn't answer. Even three hours wouldn't be enough to tell such a heartbreaking story. Why did you call me vice president? You really haven't changed. It's my own fault for expecting an explanation. Anyway, Earth is still under the alien invasion. Due to it, the military industry has evolved a lot. The Factoria Heavy Industries I run is a company whose trade turnover is more than half of Earth's total trade turnover. And it's all thanks to the analysis of the Android Hero I received from you. Based on the new hero's words, I managed to roughly imagine the situation on Earth. But the first hero still didn't seem to have any intention of giving up his attempt to conquer my home planet and put it under his control. You mean that tin can? In pursuit of my dream, I ordered a super robot from Sage and Dummy A, and those old virgins created a beautiful android girl. I remembered giving her to Factoria because she was useless in battles, who then rejoiced, saying that it helped her a lot. Tin Can is a collection of complex technologies that magnificently combine science and magic. Thanks to this technological advantage, my company quickly achieved success. I am its founder and biggest shareholder, and its only investor, and my spouse, Kong Han Su, is its vice president. Now everything was clear. Combining fantasy's magic with sophisticated science, Factoria cowardly pushed forward. Technological Monopoly My condolences to the man who would marry such an insidious woman. Wait. Spouse? Was that the word I was familiar with? Or was there some kind of error in her program? Right. Kong Han Su is my spouse. Don't worry, everything is legal. Both parents gave their consent. So it was you. Factoria was the daughter-in-law that my mother praised so much. With what bribes did she win my mother's heart? I met her by chance. That's sneaky. She should apologize to all the coincidences in the world. I gave her a tennis racket, and she loved it. Oh. Oh my god. Every weekend, we played tennis together and even participated in tournaments. At some point, by chance, we got into a conversation where she asked if I was married. I said no, and she invited me to marry her missing son so that we could get closer. I agreed, which made your mother very happy. It was only later that I found out that her son was Kong Han Su. Who would believe such an absurd, obviously forged story? And my father? My innocent, tennis-addicted mother could be fooled, but my cold-blooded father wasn't as easy of a target. What happened to him? I wouldn't forgive Factoria if she kidnapped or ed him. He is a wonderful person who is madly in love with your mother. He said that he completely adheres to your mother's decision. I gave him a protein supplement, and he immediately looked as happy as a child. Tisk. She planned everything. Factoria, I'm sorry, but your dastardly ambitions were already meaningless from the very beginning. I'm already married. This wasn't the marriage I wanted, but no man knew Soja's buttocks as well as I did. My aunt will probably tease me and accuse me of jealousy again, but I think marriage really cannot be without such intimacy. My niece. Don't say anything. Jealous. I already predicted what you're going to do, but you pushed through with it anyway. You are so shameless. Enough. This time, I thought Soja had nothing to worry about. I didn't sign the contract, but two intergalactic notaries certified our marriage. That was more credible than a piece of paper signed without my permission. Don't get me wrong. It all happened completely by accident. I have a more important question. Try me. I still wouldn't answer her. A group is trying to kidnap your parents. Do you have any idea who it might be? Wait. A flame of anger flared up in my heart. Was someone targeting my parents? As soon as I heard about it, my mind went dark. Drug demon lord, calm down. Children. Please, help. The spirit kings who lived in my armpits and groin began to harass me more yuli than ever. In particular, the soul spirit king gave the most effort. 
As soon as it embraced my holy sword and caressed it, I immediately gained peace of mind. Hmm. Have you calmed down? Some graduates are targeting your parents. I tried to catch them, but I couldn't identify them. Do you have any idea who might be behind this? Well I had a few Suyans. During the Festival of Heroes, some of the alumni I defeated might harbor resentment against me. The faculty shouldn't be ruled out either, as they were already using alumni to take revenge on the first hero. This better not be some game that you started, Factoria. Perhaps she was just doing this so she could pretend to protect my parents, thereby earning my favor. That is a well-founded assumption. But what's the point in asking? Even if I say it isn't, you still won't trust me completely. Am I wrong? She wasn't. No matter how much Factoria's words were justified, she wouldn't be able to completely dispel my doubts. If you have any questions, ask away. I initially had no intention of answering. But the situation had changed a bit, considering this wily woman was now protecting my parents. Please tell us about your current situation and your progress. I know you were transferred to secondary education. When will you be back? When would I be back? Around the time the fantasy dimension is destroyed. For the demon lord Parmamon, this was the only way to get to Earth. The situation is very grim. That was the first thing Factoria said when she heard that I had become the demon lord, along with a brief explanation of the situation. I think I should work less and invest more in skin care. I didn't know what skin care had to do with anything, but I agreed that the situation was dire. ITLL be easier for you to just wait until my brother grows up and marry him instead of waiting for my return. I wasn't joking. More and more heroes were giving up on their journey, choosing a peaceful life in the world of fantasy, but it would take a really long time before they could get married and have children. I didn't have to wait for just one or two heroes. The plan would only work when the vast majority of heroes had supported the demon lord. Besides, many worthless individuals among the heroes abandoned their duty and lived only to satisfy their physiological needs. I understood your plan. And I realized sewing. Because the earth was deprived of reinforcements in the form of graduates, the alien invaders are beginning to push us back. Sewing needs to be done about that. Huh. It was as if I had been hit on the back of my head. Only now did I realize that I came up with a plan that didn't take into account the situation on Earth. I was trapped in this barbaric world with no time to care for the Earthlings. But everything was different now. If the first hero took over Earth, my parents' safety would be at risk. Step aside, cowardly hubby. I think I'd better talk to her. You. Soja decided to intervene. What did she want to do? Niece. Stop teasing me, auntie. That's so cute. Ugh I just want to discuss the technicalities with her. As I watched from the sidelines, it occurred to me that this conniving woman has a lot of power and influence on earth despite pretending to be your mother's daughter-in-law. Soja took my smartphone away from me after that. Well, go ahead. It wasn't a bad combination. Soja was the developer of fantasy, and Factoria dominated the entire tech industry on Earth. I decided to see what would come out of it. The Wi-Fi connection between Earth and fantasy is established through superimposing and merging space using the Malambia structure according to the calculations of the Malantegos formula proposed by an honorary graduate of the Academy hmm. Miss Victoria, you still can't understand its concept even after all the explanations. The Molentegos formula calculates volume by dividing three-dimensional space by time. Omitted the Molentegos formula is the foundation of space science. You don't seem very smart, hmm? Kong Hansu's mother's date of birth? I don't know. Ha! A real daughter-in-law should know that. Your logic is flawed and stupid. Malin. Even Master Malin, who always hid in Soja's cowardly chest, jumped towards me as if evacuating from a war zone. They're hard to bear even with your wisdom and grace, huh, Master? Malin. Master Malin sat on my shoulder. How much time had passed? Sosia, having detached from the smartphone, came up to me with a very serious expression on her face. Cowardly husband. 
The tone with which she said it and her mood didn't inspire confidence. Have you and Factoria come to any conclusion? Did they track the director's office through Wi-Fi? Give me a charger. What? Give me a charger. The battery died just as I was about to counter-argue with a proper mockery of that redneck's logic. Humph. How would that help? Personally, I didn't think it was worth giving her a charger. Don't worry about it. It'll take care of everything. Play with your juniors for now. Inhabitants of fantasy. Hear the demon lord. This married woman, this person who doesn't want to lose in a pointless squabble, is your creator. Chapter 288. The summit between Soja and Factoria, representing fantasy and Earth respectively, lasted all night. I was curious about what they could even discuss for so long without interruption, but at the same time, my heart told me that I shouldn't let my curiosity get the best of me. Listen carefully, my cowardly hubby. In listening. I hoped she wouldn't rant about losing the argument. Not at all. I was victorious. Sure. Winning an argument with the redneck felt that great for her, huh? Shut up. That's not what I want to talk about. To start with, the redneck and I discussed the possibility of losing our Wi-Fi connection. If it gets cut off, our whole plan will be in vain. Soja began to explain everything to me, including space science. Hey, get straight to the point. But I'm telling you about the most important parts. I don't need to know all the details. You knowing about it is enough. Soja was my forever second wife. She wouldn't be able to leave me. Perhaps she was sewing like a portable encyclopedia. With her by my side, I didn't need to memorize or learn all sorts of meaningless details anymore. Pfft. Don't compare me to the heating pads you carry with you to keep yourself warm at night. Niece niece. What? Are you going to laugh and tease me about jealousy again? How cute. It took quite a while before Soja got back to the main point. The faculty started the Wi-Fi connection, but they can't terminate it. Simply put, they were able to make a hole in the dimension, but they don't have the technology to close it. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. It would be nice if that hole could be widened enough to allow people to pass through it, though. I'm going to explain the basics of space science to you if it means stopping you from having such stupid ideas. No need. I studied a lot on Earth. And if I didn't understand sewing, I could just turn to Soja's ass for help. Your words alone constitute UAL harassment. My ass is not a search button. But what about my freedom of speech? Your mom's concern for you isn't baseless, you know. If you return to Earth, you'll find it difficult to adapt to your new daily life ouch. Search. Soja kept wasting a ton of time in pointless moaning and yelling as she was trying to explain why I didn't have to worry about losing the Wi-Fi connection. That's your fault. What's your plan, then? She talked to Factoria all night. I would be very disappointed if that's all they could come up with. Of course, that isn't all. We talked about how to usurp the power of my aunt, the director of fantasy. Get to the point. The process itself is the essence. Process. From the lips of a woman sprawled on the bed, it didn't sound very convincing. We decided to start publishing a magazine, which will contain information about the current fantasy. A what? A magazine. Sort of like those guidebooks you were talking about earlier. At first, ITLL only contain information useful to heroes. Then, gradually, articles specifically made to put you in a good light will be published in it, ultimately reducing their hostility towards you. Every part of this plan was clearly developed by the cowardly Soja and the vile Factoria. A guide for heroes. They could give them as much advice as possible, but it would be impossible to defeat the impartial Max-class demon lord. Of course, if I trained them, they would never lose. Except against me. I had no desire to be defeated either. In other words, the guidebook Soja was talking about would be useless. Maybe, but the heroes who just got here from Earth don't know that. That's fraud and misinformation. They were attempting to sell a guidebook that wouldn't even help the heroes complete their courses. There is some truth in that, 
but if I see my cowardly husband being pushed aside by some hero, he'll be sure to enjoy the moment while eating popcorn on the sidelines. Only the best individuals in the tertiary education course are capable of that, though. You really think there are such people? There are. They're the strongest heroes my aunt is hiding. I indeed knew little about that higher education course. The individuals in the primary and secondary courses did nothing but charge head-on to fight the demon lord. They didn't even delve into the essence of the world or ask questions. As a result, many of them died and became desperate due to the karma s soja introduced into the system. The upperclassmen were different. They had already gone through the antenatal care process and had adapted to the fifth curriculum. They moved forward while avoiding death or unnecessary frustration. Their progress was far slower, though. Appearance, I also have a tertiary education degree, which is one of the requirements for becoming a teacher. Oh. I see you're not only smart and beautiful, trainee teacher. You're also educated. Embarrassment, I'm not that good. I barely got my diploma. Then she should know why the journey of the undergraduates was so slow that most of them still hadn't even made it outside the Dumpling Kingdom. Explanation, they're working hard on their resume to prepare for employment. Regardless of what happened in the past, their objective now is to demonstrate what they learned in school and how great a hero they've become. I understand their point, but even so, aren't they too slow? Answer, the requirements set by companies for new employees aren't that high, but there's a lot of competition between graduates. That's why they try to make their resumes perfect. Perfect and without mistakes. In this case, of course, tertiary students were different from primary and secondary students. Their juniors never looked back once they had accomplished their mission, selfishly believing that they had solved the problem. However, even after completely figuring out the first round, the upperclassmen would suddenly visit the second and third rounds to ensure everything was in order. Tip, the day a senior student challenges Cadet Kong Han Su will come only after 500 years. After all, even though all I needed was a diploma, it still took me 50 years to get one. 500 years. I shouldn't think about them at all for now. I return to the main matter at hand. Are you listening, cowardly hubby? Yes. I had been listening to her subconsciously. In beginning to think that trainee teacher is your first love, even though you haven't even met her yet. The heart of a woman plays a big part in determining that. And their external and internal beauties were fundamental as well. Oh I can't believe I have to stay forever with this guy. Continue your explanations. She continued as she didn't want her max class righteous husband to punish her. I don't want to explain anymore. Niece. The alien invaders are gradually pushing back Earth's forces since reinforcements, the graduates, have stopped coming from fantasy. Africa, composed of mostly less developed countries, has already been completely conquered Soja began to speak quickly. The first spirit, seeing the reaction of her niece, laughed, twitching all over. You he 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 he. Aunt, can you do sewing about your stupid laugh? It doesn't suit your title, the first spirit. Because of the drug demon lord, my reputation is completely different compared to the ancient times, my niece. I was originally a noble spirit, but I decided to change my image. I am now a fallen spirit that has sucked to his fingers. Not bad, right? That's a really pathetic reason to fall. Did she doubt my fingers? I could proudly declare that they were more outstanding than the holy swords of heroes. Even my niece can't resist them. Huh. I've often seen you drool as you gaze down at the drug demon lord's full fingers. What? Don't make things up. Soja's explanation was interrupted for a while due to her obscene desires, but I had roughly understood the plan she and Factoria came up with. Technological Exchange Soja would transfer magic and technologies of the fantasy world to Earth, and Factoria would reproduce them. It would be transmitted through the latest smartphone, which was equipped with an improved Wi-Fi signal. Our main objective was to strengthen the weaponry of Earth's remaining heroes since I had shut down the production of new graduates. We focused on improving the quality of the army. My jealous Soja's idea wasn't bad at all. Boring. I didn't think I would ever get bored, 
even if I stared at my smartphone all day. But in just a few days, I got bored. I was Kong Han Su, a hero who had lived in fantasy for over 100 years. Since I led an active lifestyle and worked hard without even resting for a single day, I found it hard to mess around. Was this what people called occupational deformity? Cowardly husband, don't praise yourself too much. I'm just telling the truth. It used to go unnoticed due to the hero's invasion, but since visitors had stopped appearing after the four celestial lords were placed at the entrance. All that remained for me was to listen to how my mother was proud of her second son all day. Sudden appearance, Cadet Kong Han Su. Oh. What a surprise. Have you decided to keep me company? Confused, company? No, you need to prepare quickly. An important senior colleague of mine is on his way to you. Your warning's too late, my secret friend. Her important senior colleague, as she called him, was already in front of me. This is our second meeting, Kong Han Su. Do you remember me? No. Two meetings weren't enough for me to do that. Especially for a man. Im Parker Lee, chairman of the senior curriculum committee. Ah. You're the guy who used my son to get me to switch to the secondary course. Yeah. That's me. I'm glad you remembered correctly. The supervisor of the secondary education course. He was the person who prevented me from graduating and forced me to enter the secondary education course instead. What do you want? Trainee teacher said that the faculty had established a rule against contacting me. However, if I mentioned this, I might put her in trouble. I'm not only the supervisor but also the head of the secondary and tertiary education courses disciplinary committee. It is my duty to guide the senior students who have gone astray back to the righteous path of heroes. And? I wasn't a student anymore. I was just a tutorial for them now. There are many students who have abandoned their role and duty as heroes, all because of the demon lord, who remains unbeatable. It can't be helped. I was simply stronger than the heroes who had invested in the vile power of love and friendship. I know. You're the hero who has broken many records of the Fantasy Training Center, after all. View achievements with administrator privileges. Name, Kong Han Su. His achievements are shown below. 1. Ed the primary education course's demon lord in the shortest amount of time. 2. The first in the primary education course to the supreme dragon of oblivion. 3. Ed the primary education course's demon lord without the holy sword in the shortest amount of time. 4. Ed the primary education course's demon lord without companions in the shortest amount of time. 46. The first among all the students to defeat the second demon. 47. Defeated the second demon in the shortest amount of time. 48. Shown the fastest growth among all the students. 49. Voted as the cutest hero by the residents of fantasy. 134. Youngest student to enroll in the primary education course. 135. Fastest student to be admitted to the secondary education course. 136. Voted the most revered hero by the residents of fantasy. 137. Voted the most influential hero by the residents of fantasy. 138. Voted the most desirable man by the female residents of fantasy. 140. Voted the most trustworthy hero by the residents of fantasy. 141. Voted the most respected man by male residents of fantasy. 184. Ed the most dragons in the shortest amount of time. 185. Ed the most angels in the shortest amount of time. 186. Ed the most demons in the shortest amount of time. 187. Ed the most handsome men in the shortest amount of time. 188. Ed the most beauties in the shortest amount of time. 234. The one who changed fantasy's history. 235. The one who changed fantasy's culture. 236. The one who changed fantasy's economy. 237. The one who changed fantasy's geography. 238. The one who changed fantasy's society. I had racked up quite a lot of achievements since the last time I saw them. But what was it for? There was a lot of discontent among the applicants, as Kong Han Su took possession of almost all the achievements that give additional points for many positions. Oh. 
With such a large number of petitions from students, we must either satisfy their needs or provide a solution to their problem. Since my accomplishments were interfering with his work, he was planning to erase them. Was that it? No. I cannot give you the details, but this is just an excuse to meet with you. He couldn't do so because of the newly implemented school regulations. Was that why he came up with such an interesting way to come to me? I'm curious. I let go of Soja's cowardly pelvis. It was time to start the negotiations. Chapter 289 The history of fantasy, this world where heroes are cultivated, is far longer than you think, Kong Han Su. Is it important, though? I had already experienced the events that transpired 2000 years ago. I was able to find out how my resentful senior became the first hero and how he caused the rise of the five great disasters. The outcome? Even after I found out the pitiful truth of his past, I earned nothing from it. It is important, considering people learn from their past mistakes. You were hoping to meet me for this? Ha! Huh. Of course not, but wouldn't our conversation proceed smoother and better if the atmosphere is right? Enough idle chatter. I stared at the supervisor as he grinned. People who could give me a good rebuff were rare, after all. Since I absorbed the experience points and knowledge of the heroes in the first hero's house, I knew what I was talking about. The supervisor was a born fighter who relied not on fantasy SS but his own strength. This institution's roots are as strong as its history is long. We've had our fair share of adversities, but we've never been in as much danger as now. You've had problems before. Don't pretend this is the first time. The first hero escaped and became an enemy. He is but one hooligan among many others. I admit that he was strong enough to defeat the demon lord, but he's a bad student, and there can be no excuse for that. What difference does it make? He has no moral principles. Then you can just make them up. Ha! <laughs> As expected of you. However, you can only afford to say such words because you are an outstanding student. Many graduates are jealous of your accomplishments. Among ourselves, we call it charisma. I squinted a little. Where are you leading this conversation? We spared neither funds nor efforts to ensure that the student who had demon Lord Pedinar would get a great job and be able to start a family in peace. In return, however, he fled, found supporters, and made an enemy out of us. And? I know you prevented the war, but even if you couldn't, fantasy wouldn't have fallen. It never will. We still keep in touch with the alumni who love their alma mater, after all. We tried to avoid it simply because we didn't want to spoil our reputation. I roughly understood what he wanted to say. History and tradition were powerful in themselves. Graduates tried to enter first-class universities mainly because famous and successful people graduated from them. To express their gratitude, they would come to their alma mater's rescue if needed. Graduates who have landed jobs. To be more precise, students who have completed tertiary education. Companies do not recognize primary and secondary education as sufficient training. I forgot about that. As he said, fantasy had a long history. Throughout its existence, it had allowed a large number of students to graduate and work somewhere in the universe. I could only imagine how great the power of love and friendship that Strong was. The first hero is just one of the students who graduated from the highest course. If we compare him with the most successful student, currently the president of a large corporation, then the first hero is just a small business owner. Oh. My lunatic senior, running an entire galaxy, was just a small business owner. He might be exaggerating or bluffing. I had no evidence of that being the case, though. You probably don't believe me, which is why I started our conversation with fantasy's history. Once you hear how this world of ours began, survived, and thrived, you won't be able to stop yourself from believing. Don't let him talk you out, hubby. Ah. Excuse me, Counselor Soja. I apologize for not greeting you immediately. Since you have no clothes on, I've been feeling reluctant to turn my attention to you. Before greeting me and making excuses, you first need to apologize for invading a married couple's personal space. Oh, right. I apologize, Madam Counselor. 
Forgive your junior, who, due to prejudice, decided that only mortals cared and worried about such trifling matters. Marriage, after all, is still a new experience for you, the second demon, despite how long you've already lived. Don't talk about my age. I must request that you excuse my insolence once more. I cannot collect my thoughts since I don't know where I should place my gaze. Humph. Soja, putting on a black dress, grinned and sat down next to me. You two have a great relationship. You just opened your mouth, and you're already lying. Ha! Huh. That's not the case at all, Counselor Soja. I am certain you know fantasy didn't begin when the current institution was founded. In fact, this training dimension existed long before that. Yeah. In a very miserable way. Even if it looked pathetic, it doesn't change the fact that the heroes were trained there. We call it the first curriculum. This conversation was taking too much time. I already understood that the history of fantasy was long and that many worthy students had graduated from it. Your point being. This institution, which couldn't be harmed by brute force, is facing a real crisis for the first time. Since its third and fourth curriculum, which the principal had so persistently promoted, failed, the school's credibility fell. Then discontent and dissatisfaction flooded in from graduates preparing for employment, only to find out the teachers support you. So I was popular. Soja, you heard him, right? That's how amazing your husband is. You should be grateful that you married me. Did I enter some kind of parallel universe? The cowardly little wife began to dodge my statement as if I threw a frying pan at her. My niece. You look pathetic the first spirit said. I know that you like to joke around, but I hope you tell the truth for once, like how my husband is a promiscuous man. Shameless liar. The curator, grinning, once again showed my achievements. Counselor Soja, it seems to me that you're reluctant to acknowledge your well-deserved love for Kong Han Su, but his achievements do not lie. 49, voted as the cutest hero by the residents of fantasy. 136, voted the most revered hero by the residents of fantasy. 138, voted the most desirable man by the female residents of fantasy. 140, voted the most trustworthy hero by the residents of fantasy. 157, voted as the most desirable male to mate with by fantasy mermaids. 162, voted the greatest ruler by the residents of fantasy. 166, voted the most reliable husband by the people of fantasy. 172, acknowledged as the owner of the deadliest kiss by the fantasy system. 173, acknowledged as the owner of the deadliest fingers by the fantasy system. The system didn't lie. It was clear from Soja's face that she didn't want to accept it, but her rejection wouldn't be enough to magically cause my achievements to disappear. 239 achievements. And some find it hard to get at least one. Some teachers, including the director, the principal, and Mrs. Counselor, refuse to acknowledge it. But you are ranked first among all students concerning achievements even though you haven't completed your secondary education course yet. Even the second placer's achievements are almost eight times fewer than yours. Justice has triumphed. In my first round, I was unable to gain recognition due to the evil director's unfair assessment. But the system remembered my hard work and experience. Let's get down to business, Kong Han Su. Achievements are volatile. The ones related to pioneers will last forever, but others will be lost if the record is broken. I don't care. I was already satisfied just looking at Soja, whose expression made her feeling of defeat evident. You should be more affectionate with your max class husband from now on, cowardly wife. If this were heard by graduates who are happy with just one accomplishment, they would faint. Achievements are not given to oppress one's partner. There is no other use for them, then. Since my father-in-law handed over his business to me, I now worked as the demon lord. And after my resignation, I was thinking of opening my own cafe. Achievements didn't really matter to me. That's not true. Achievements influence public opinion. Suppose you hadn't so suddenly become the demon lord. In that case, as soon as you graduated from the tertiary education course, a requirement for becoming a teacher, you'll be able to become a principal thanks to the support you'll be able to gather. 
If I become the principal, can I safely leave this dimension? That won't be all you'd be able to do. You'll be able to punish the teachers who hindered your success. ITLL also be possible to make the trainee assign to you your secretary. Oh. My anger for my father-in-law grew even stronger. Not only did he push his cowardly daughter to me, but he also prevented me from building a career. He had given me nothing but trouble and harm. As I said, the plan to make you the principal failed since you suddenly dropped out of school. I know. It was certainly unexpected. More accurately, you fell into a cunning trap. You became the Demon Lord only because Demon Lord Pedinar cooperated with the teachers who didn't support your candidacy. Is that so? Now the puzzle had begun to take shape. What about my aunt? Soja asked. She doesn't really like Kong Han Su, but she's not stupid enough to make a deal with the Demon Lord. Is that so? As she melancholically muttered sewing, Soja suddenly grabbed my hand. What are you doing? Do I have to say it out loud? If you don't like it, say so. It'll just go away. Don't pretend to be weak. It doesn't suit you at all. Hmm, my father, whom I saw wearing an apron more often than my mother, who, um, was also a good cook, used to tell me, once you've made a choice, you have to see it through to the end. I turned to the supervisor. He didn't come here to complain about unfulfilled plans. As I expected he would. When you became the demon lord, things got complicated. At first, I thought we'd completely failed, but the reality is quite the opposite. The system developer, Counselor Soja, is by your side, after all. The corners of his lips lifted slightly. I also smiled at him. So you know about our plans. Seizing control of the fantasy institution. There's no way I wouldn't. Your actions so far were too good to be a coincidence, almost like a wheel of fortune. We call it Pedinar's palm. So he had us in the palm of his hand all along. It was annoying. Father-in-law decided my fate at his own discretion. You're probably unaware of this, but the difficulty level of your first round was higher than the higher courses. The karma S that Counselor Soja implemented is just a toy. Meaning? Maintaining classrooms is expensive. Therefore, those unable to prove themselves fit to be a true hero are eliminated using a variety of ODs. That being said, not only did you not drop out, but you also had the Demon Lord. You outright rejected the destiny God prepared for you. You can consider it fate that the Demon Lord showed interest in you, though. I put my hand on Soja's chest, who was sitting next to me. And I felt my soul immediately become calmer. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Ignoring Soja's complaints, I replied to the supervisor. What are all these boring explanations for? The director moved on to action. Oh. She finally wants to fight me herself. Ah. You seem to have misunderstood. The principal's grandson enrolled in primary education to take away your accomplishments, Kong Han Su. If you want to gain more support, then you need to protect your achievements. And who might he be? His max class senior, the very person who almost became the principal, would teach him a lesson. Chapter, 290 Riel He has mixed human and angel blood. Although there's no other information about him, since he's the director's grandson, he's clearly not one of the ordinary heroes. His name is Riel, huh? That was all I needed. I would crush him like a sprout before he could even begin to develop. Please be patient. All the teachers who have taken your side will turn away otherwise. Actions contradicting the principle of fairness will cause negative responses. What about the director, then? The first angel herself seemed universe to violating this principle. It's because of her mistakes that the group supporting you appeared and that I became a member of it. I see. Understanding his point, I thought I could just simply increase the level of difficulty. That wouldn't be ideal. If the problems on the exams are too difficult, the students will blame the teachers. Please consider that. So many prohibitions. Hearing my displeasure, the supervisor confidently replied as he looked me straight in the eyes. Since we're talking about you, Kong Han Su, 
the one that beat the records of the Fantasy Education Center countless times, then I believe that you can handle this. A teacher to the bone, huh? All he did was limit and abandon me. Ha! Huh. That's not true. I only watch students who are falling behind academically. The more I watch, the more I get disappointed, though. Is that all you have to say? Yes. It's my turn, then. Shuck. My fist, which I threw at his face, couldn't touch him for some reason. But it didn't matter. The wings of the righteous hero uncurled on my back to finish what I started. Behold, the power of God. He said nonchalantly. My sharp wingtips bounced off my target without inflicting damage. Moreover, their bones, which were harder than the holy sword, broke. Is this your power? Strictly speaking, I borrowed it from God. It didn't come from the first angel. There was no way I wouldn't recognize its attribute if it were made out of light, after all. At the same time, its level was too low to be considered the omnipotent force of Master Malin's GG rank. The only explanation left was that it came from a third deity. An entity unknown to me intervened. If so, I decided to check whose god was stronger. What is all this for? I'm an ally. I'm here to help you. I'm the only one who gets to decide who's my ally and who isn't. If in the second round, he appeared instead of teacher morals, I would have considered him an ally. But that time had long since passed. I was a completely different creature now. What he was trying to do was understandable. He wanted to pit the group supporting the first angel against the group supporting the demon lord to see whose power of friendship was stronger. Kong Han Su, your attacks cannot harm me. Wait. It will soon. As he said, I couldn't hurt him, which was because of the white pentagonal shield hovering around his body like a familiar, instantly blocking all incoming offensives. It wasn't that large, perhaps just twice the size of a palm. However. Bam. 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 It moved so fast that even my eyes couldn't keep up with its speed, completely negating all of my assaults. Give up. Says the one cowardly hiding behind his shield. That's rich, coming from someone who suddenly attacked a friend. Friend? I didn't need friends. If I wanted to rely on the cowardly power of love and friendship, I would have already chosen that path. As my supervisor said, there was no excuse for the behavior of bad students. I also agreed with that. There was no excuse for the behavior of bad teachers. All those who kidnapped me, a civilized inhabitant of earth, and threw me into this dimension, were my enemies and had no right to order me. He told me to stop the director's grandson and left me to think about how to do it. He tried to pretend that this was all for me, but I swiftly realized that wasn't the case just by thinking about it a little. I can't trust someone who threatened my son, can I? They weren't threats. I just enforced the rules. That doesn't erase the fact that you used him to your advantage. Didn't my actions help you save your son? I wouldn't go that far. My son had now been divided into many individuals tied to the fantasy dimension. Could that be called salvation? Uh no matter what he has in mind, ITLL benefit us anyway, cowardly hubby. Why are you rebelling against him? Soja poked my side as she witnessed the demon lord's castle being destroyed. Niece. I didn't say anything wrong. No, it's just that the drug demon lord will always stay true to himself. What did you expect? I didn't work for free. Did he want me to rejoice because I helped the savages of fantasy? It wasn't even funny as a joke. If I hadn't been abducted and transferred here, I would have lived a good life on earth. No reward could satisfy me at this point. Public opinion. That was no more than flattery, an accessory for deception. That being said. Bang. 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 His shield annoyed me. No matter how I attacked, none of my attempts connected. Even if I made several simultaneous attacks, it moved so fast that none of them could even touch him. However, because of my non-stop bombardment, the supervisor couldn't find any opportunity to retaliate. Tenacious. Give up. 
This is the power of a perfect being who became a deity by creating a shield that can block all attacks. Perfect. That was a truly arrogant statement. The only perfect being in this world was Master Malin. Winning against me will not do you any good. This is a pointless battle. No. There will be meaning in this. I was the one who sat on the throne of the second demon lord according to the providence of the universe. Above that, I was the disciple of the perfect being, Master Malin. Therefore, wouldn't I be no different from being a deity? Type, SS. Name, Fabrication. Grade, ZZ 3%. ZZ, your words serve as the truth. ZZ, turn into a god. Z, beat the appeal of a god. SS, become a part of any family. SS, turn anyone into a lover. S, turn anyone into a friend. A, turn anyone into a witness. B, successfully persuade families. C, successfully persuade lovers. D, successfully convince friends. E, successfully persuade witnesses. F, make lies sound plausible. If there was a certain entity posing as a perfect deity by creating some kind of shield a little larger than the palm of one's hand. Then, in this case, it was strange that I, who was stronger, was not a god. Major premise, my adversary is a perfect deity. Minor premise, I am more perfect than my adversary. Conclusion, I am a deity. I must be the god of darkness. Nothing could stop my darkness. Bang! Bang! Sierra. Dark energy, responding to my will, merged with dark matter and crashed against his shield. Visually, nothing happened. Since even light was absorbed rather than reflected, no image was formed on the corneas of anyone's eyes. It all happened instantly. What? As his shield cracked, the supervisor couldn't help but display his surprise. Your shield can block all attacks, but you never said it couldn't be broken. It was no more than a pathetic imperfection. His barrier, which I attacked millions of times in a short period of time, broke down, crumbled, and, like glass, scattered into small particles of light. The moment it did, the righteous demon lord's fist hit his jaw from below. K.H. As if in slow motion, I watched his teeth alternately fly off. He even bit his tongue tightly but miraculously didn't completely bite it off. P.S.S. His injuries healed quickly, however. New teeth grew, and his shattered lower jaw recovered not long after. Everything happened so quickly that he could already speak within a few seconds. Oh, this is awful. Even Noebius' poisonous breath at the end of his years couldn't drain my healing powers or do as much damage. Such is the strength of the righteous god of darkness. I punished the arrogant creature before me, refusing to listen to the complaints of evil beings who didn't know true justice. Supervisor Bakery my name is Parker Lee. Whatever you say, Bakery. I don't need friends. I understand. Since I, the supervisor, was so seriously affected by the forces of evil's sudden attack, I have enough proof to show the director that I am the demon lord's enemy. With this, she should no longer doubt me. Hmm. As I was about to shake the soul out of him, he said sowing strange, causing me to stop. I will wait as your enemy until the right time comes. Clap. Taking advantage of the moment, he fled. Anti am surprised. I thought my husband was an idiot to the bone, but he knows how to think with his head. I'm just as surprised as you are. I thought he was going to his own ally because he was in a bad mood, but I couldn't even begin to imagine that all this was to deceive my aunt. Oh. Sweet niece. I can see hearts dancing in your eyes right now. I'm not a cartoon character. Oh. You didn't deny your feelings. Ha. Huh. He he he. Soja and the addicted spirit weren't making any sense, but I generously decided to forgive them this time. Ritual. Re, hell. A recurring hell. Considering his name, I couldn't say the blood of angels flowed in his body. Correction. His actual name is Riel. Oh. I'm glad you're okay, trainee teacher. 
If bakery causes you any trouble, make sure you tell me immediately. I'll make sure to teach him a lesson. Confusion, he is one of the few seniors that juniors like me can easily turn to. That couldn't be. I wanted to reprimand trainee teacher for her words, but I decided to leave it for later. Right now, I had another matter to attend to. We're going to meet Richel. It was time to arrange a repetitive hell for him. Finding the evil director's grandson wasn't easy since there were countless heroes and classes in which I had a body in. It would have been faster if I could just type in his name in a search engine, but since my cowardly wife's programming SS were useless, I was forced to go through each dimension in my list. I'm sure the greatest husband to ever exist will be able to cope with it. Meanwhile, his incompetent wife will just focus on having fun with Malin. Malin Malin. Soja, have a little pride. You shouldn't call yourself incompetent since you're taking care of Master Malin. That wasn't comforting at all. Your praise sounds like mockery. Where was he? According to Bakery, Richel recently enrolled in the primary education course. If he was planning on taking away my achievements, then even with nothing but low level and SS, he should at least be able to easily defeat orcs and goblins. In other words, he hadn't yet acquired the karma S unless he went nuts by committing. Taking advantage of Shadow as position as an honorary teacher, I looked at the files of the heroes who successfully forged relationships with the local savages. It wasn't difficult to separate them from the others since they didn't wander but lived close to cities instead. Five days had already passed before I finished screening them, but the number of candidates had at least decreased. Okay. Next m. My gaze stopped on a particular hero. It happened somehow on its own. This is the first time I met you, hero. Why are you showing hostility towards me? Because you're noebius. Is that so okay? Erdanti, take the children and stand at a safe distance. Noebius, in the guise of a young man, proudly confronted a strange kid that claimed he was hostile against him simply because of his identity. At that moment, I immediately remembered. 2. The first in the primary education course to the Supreme Dragon of Oblivion. 5. The first in the primary education course to the Supreme Dragon of Oblivion without the Holy Sword. 6. The first in the primary education class to the Supreme Dragon of Oblivion without Companions. 7. Ed the Supreme Dragon of Oblivion without the Holy Sword in the shortest amount of time. 8. Ed the Supreme Dragon of Oblivion without Companions in the shortest amount of time. Three of my achievements would stay with me forever since they were pioneer related but the other two could be taken away. There was just one problem. Noebius was no longer called the Supreme Dragon of Oblivion. He was just a married man now. Or did he not care? Anyway. Found him. Already? Hubby, I hope you're not going to all the Suya's heroes because you're too lazy to look for him properly. Of course not. The strongest dragon to ever exist surrounded the gigantic city with his body to protect his family. There shouldn't be any hard feelings here. But there was a rookie hero who remained hostile to him. My dear friend. Leave him to me. I'm going to punish this impudent primary student in no time huh? The impudent primary student got karma F in just zero. One seconds. Chapter, 291. 19th Round Demon Lord's Incarnation Did he get even stronger through his slumber? The combat power of my dear comrade, who left his children to the first saintist then slept for two millennia, was beyond compare. The world collapsed when the hero's head flew to the side after being punched by Noebius' fist. No, it didn't fly. It just vanished. His attempt to take away my achievement had failed. And the price of that failure was his regression. Welcome, sir. That's impossible. How could someone like him do that he's no more than mother's pet? Sir Hero. Ignoring Lenovo's greeting, the boy began to throw a tantrum. He had a pretty face and neat silver hair that reached down to his shoulders. Unlike the other people this institution abducted, he wore a complete uniform since he had prepared for this in advance. Wondering if his SS were readied up just the same, I checked his stats. Race, Half Angel. Level, 1. Job, Hero Experience 500%. SS, 
Divinity ZZ, Haste D, Dexterity E, Martial Arts E, Karma F. Status, Relic, Confused. He regressed with all the SS he had before his death. Never mind. Is that so? Please pull yourself together, Sir Hero. I know you're confused since you've been summoned here without warning, so let me brief you at least. You're in fantasy. You're in a dimension different from where you were born. I know it's difficult to grasp everything at once, but I will begin to explain everything gradually, step by step. I would have tried to shut her up already, but he listened to her explanations calmly. Thanks for the information. Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lenovo, an archaeologist. I obtained the prophecy during one of my travels to study the ancient legend about Sir Hero. In ancient language, Lenovo means truth. Lenovo. What a lovely name. I look forward to your support in the future. I look forward to working with you too, Sir Hero. My name is Riel. I see. Nice to meet you, Sir Hero Riel. Lenovo giggled, pretending to be sweet, and the boy also laughed in return. The two then went to the Dumpling King to request an audience. I simply watched them from afar, but. I can't contain my anger even though I'm just listening to them. Calm down, evil hubby. Have you already forgotten the words of the supervisor? If you step in, you'll lose supporters. I know. I originally planned to ignore his advice. However, misunderstanding my intentions, he fled, and Soja and the addicted spirit decided that it was all a part of the cunning plan of the Max-class demon lord. They left me no choice but to slightly alter my initial plan. If there was no way to do it, I just needed to make one. In the first round, due to the interference of my companions, all I did was struggle against endless restrictions. I had to protect the elderly. Avoid making women cry. Fight injustice. Fight honestly. Refrain from torturing anyone. Prevent myself from grabbing others' vertebrae. Sleep at night. Call my companions by name. Because of all those restrictions, it became hard for me to find room to breathe. However, I still refused to give up and instead overcame all the difficulties I faced. I had already had more than my fair share of finding solutions through force, even if my situation was deemed impossible to get out of. Comply with the principle of fairness without increasing the level of difficulty. If I personally showed up and beat the living soul out of ritual, it would violate the said principle. Additionally, if I increased the difficulty, not only ritual but the rest of the students would be forced to turn inside out to become stronger. If so, there was a simple solution to my problem. It was often used by the demon Lord Pedinar back in the day. Alter Ego Middle bosses, who embodied the demon lord himself, sometimes appeared on the hero's paths to ensure they wouldn't forget about the purpose of their journey. And they were great bags of experience points. Evil hubby, what cowardly thoughts visited you this time? Just shut up and watch. Hero Ritual was now in an audience with the Dumpling King. His weapon was Divinity ZZ. But things didn't go as smoothly as he wanted. Hero. I understand that you are divine. Then I hope for your support. But I cannot trust anyone who has just been called into this world recently. What? Your Majesty, you spoke differently last time. Last time? No, it's nothing. The boy could no longer gain the king's support due to his karma s, which overrode even the effects of transcendent ss. But he was still promised to be allocated a room with a beautiful maid, proving that his divinity ZZ wasn't completely useless. He still seemed unhappy, though. I scanned the entire throne room. Since the territory of the demon lord had greatly decreased, compared to the fourth curriculum, the number of demons and their followers hiding in the dumpling kingdom had decreased exponentially. No matter how ironic it was, though, the number of demons and demon followers among aristocrats not only didn't decrease but, on the contrary, increased. Once they got hold of dark energy, the changes manifested automatically in themselves. Including the improvement of every fiber of their being, such as their appearance, health, longevity, recovery, physical strength, etc. As Soja said, being harmful to one's psyche aside, 
dark energy was an excellent supplement for health. Thanks to the proliferation of flush toilets, humankind was now living its best age. However, if there was light, there was bound to be darkness. For them to live as long as possible in this wonderful world filled with flush toilets, humanity began to look for ways to prolong life. And one of the solutions they found was dark energy. It was difficult for ordinary mortals to get it, but the aristocrats had the means to do so. And they did it very actively. The biggest danger of the dark energy was to fall and be enslaved by demons, but since they had all died, there was nothing to be afraid of. Until the demon lord returned, at least. Who's the best fit? More than half of the aristocrats in the Dumpling Kingdom, including its king and queen, had dark energy. Some had it in their body. Others in a pendant. Or in their arms. Or in their shortsm. If one kept the dark energy not in their body but in an object, its impact on their psyche decreased, but it would still only be a matter of time. They would fall anyway. And if they had no S that protected their mentality, it was impossible to avoid submission to demons. Race, human. Level, 44. Job, aristocrat bloodline dignity. SS, dark energy D, dignity E, authority F, UAL relations F, male energy F. Status, fatigued, enlightened. I found an aristocrat whose stats were suitable for the implementation of my plan. D rank dark energy. He was no different from a low-ranking demon in that regard. But he didn't have a single S to protect his psyche, and his level was low even for an aristocrat. He's perfect. My copies, sitting on the throne, gave the order at the same time. Ha ha ha. You dare call yourself a hero and even desire to challenge the demon Lord Parmamon with such a weak spine? And you, Lenovel. Your pitiful pelvis ha. Huh? The aristocrat, receiving the order of the demon lord Parmamon, ran screaming into the center of the throne room. He pounced on the heroes and died immediately. Sorry I couldn't protect you. The count's stupid son had gone mad. Has demon lord Parmamon really risen? The count probably just didn't discipline his heir properly. The level 1 rookie heroes rushed out in fear, but the experienced ones that had regressed at least once, like Ritchel, acted differently. Each hero had their own way of ing the demon follower. He was cut, burned, chopped up, crushed, frozen, set on fire, beaten to death. Fa. Ritchel was simply unlucky, having been punched in the jaw by the demon follower despite his experiences. How could anyone be so unlucky? Cowardly hubby, isn't that kind of excuse too far-fetched? Breaking through the reflection of his zizirank divinity over as it is. But it happened right in front of your eyes, right? Ritual didn't die, at the very least. The royal knights intervened. The aristocrat fell to the floor, pierced by swords on all sides. The dumpling king, turning blue with fear, shouted, his voice trembling. How could this happen in my domain? Hero. Hero, can you hear me? Ah oh. Why yes, your majesty. This happened because I couldn't keep my subjects in line. As an apology, I shall provide you with gold coins and a letter of recommendation that would allow you to train with the sword god Alex. All heroes starting a new journey received the same reward. Plus, it slightly made up for their bad reputation due to their karma s. Where else could they find a senior who cared so much about his juniors? I didn't increase the difficulty level for my juniors hunting me. On the contrary, I lowered it. Thank you, your majesty. Ka ka. Ritual restored his jaw with divine healing and thanked the dumpling king, bowing his head before him. You may go, hero. Defeat demon lord Parmamon with haste. Um your majesty, Ritual carefully called out to the king. Is there anything else you want to say, hero? It seems that this demon follower is still alive, he pointed at the fatally wounded aristocrat. But the king dismissed it. If he is alive, then we will question him and put an end to him. You don't have to worry about him. It would be best for you to focus on ing the demon lord. But your majesty. He was able to break through my divine protection with ease. Enough. I don't have time for this. 
Sorry. The same event happened in all the classrooms of the fantasy institution. In the throne room, the heart of the Dumpling Kingdom, a demon follower became the demon lord's incarnation and was ed by either the heroes or the royal knights. By some miracle, however, one survived. His luck must have been immense. His heart was pierced, and he lost a lot of blood, deceitful hubby. The fact that he survived sounds ridiculous. You should direct those concerns to the healer. The healer didn't know how he was still alive either, though. He wouldn't know about all the effects of dark energy, would he? There was no script error. The guy trapped in an underground dungeon recovered overnight by some miracle. That was no mistake either. He was the embodiment of the just max class demon lord, after all. I examined my new body. Hmm. This is a good physique. Its holy sword is quite pathetic, though. Even if I controlled the demon lord's incarnation that miraculously survived, it wouldn't violate anyone's proverbial principle of righteousness. After all, I gave equal chances to every hero. This happened only because Ritual couldn't this young aristocrat himself. If there were two incarnations, it would be difficult for me to manage them, but I could at least try with one. My god that's cheating, isn't it? My cowardly little wife wasn't making any sense as always. What is? You have to take a morality test at the Mullen University Hospital. If you say so. So are you with me or not? I'll wait at the Demon Lord's castle with my aunt. You didn't think I'd let you touch me while you're in someone else's body, did you? I didn't. But this was somehow unexpected. I just innocently asked if she would go with me, and she only thought about vulgarities. My niece hmm. I'll leave now and defend the fort with my aunt. Covering the mouth of the addicted spirit, Soja left blushing. As for me. Time to meet Ritual. This marked the beginning of a senior's journey to support his junior. Chapter, 292. 19th Round The Hero's Corruption. This is crazy. I've been told so many times that I should be careful not to raise the Karma SS rank. Hero Ritual walked through the streets of the capital of the Dumpling Kingdom, nervously scratching the back of his head. Every time he passed by, the girls stopped, unable to take their eyes off him. Wow. He's so handsome. Oh my god. It was pathetic. When I was the emperor, all residents, regardless of gender and age, admired me. As one's popularity grew, the number of people dissatisfied with them usually grew as well, but my cuteness was absolute. Nobody on the continent could deny it. I was qualitatively different from Lenovo, whose cuteness was fake. Sir Hero Riel, Sword God Alex Mansion, is this way. With a smile, Lenovo turned to the hero, not paying attention to his sorrowful expression. She was practically begging to get punched. Lenovo's sweet voice gives me strength. How could he put up with that? Rachel really perked up, but he didn't go where Lenovo tried to lead him to. It wasn't that hard for me to predict where he was going. The Mercenary Guild. It was where filthy and wild fantasy barbarians looked for work or where others hired them in exchange for money. Let me guess. You want to find a companion from the guild to accompany you in your journey, don't you, Sir Hero? Exactly. Miss Lenovo's sharp mind never misses. He he he. My blood pressure went up dramatically every time I watched them flirt, but now wasn't the time to be distracted by it. Why would he want to find a companion there? Hero Ritual had just started his second round. Even in the first round, immediately after being summoned, he rushed straight to Noebius, losing in zero. One seconds. He didn't even spend time gathering information. Despite that fact, not only did he seem to have the whole city memorized, but he was certain that he would find a companion at his destination. Only one plausible explanation came to mind. He's cheating. It was weird. Many guides and reference books had been published for the fourth curriculum since there were many graduates. However, not even one hero had managed to graduate from the fifth curriculum yet. There was simply nowhere for anyone to get a guide. Regardless, Hero Ritual never showed hesitation. He knew exactly where he needed to go at any given moment and moved as swiftly as Luke, who back then used a guide. 
I decided to watch a little longer to make sure. PSS. The face and body of the young aristocrat, who became the embodiment of the Max class righteous demon lord, began to change rapidly. It wasn't plastic surgery. It was the power of Malin's teachings. Race, human. Level, 44. Job, aristocrat bloodline dignity. SS, health max, endurance max, resilience max, agility max, intelligence max, immunity max, strength max. Five senses max, charm max, body max, skin max, hair max, lifespan max, dignity C, dark energy D. Status, good. Upon having one's body-related SS reach that point, their physique would go through a process of metamorphosis, causing changes drastic enough to turn them into a completely different person. Oops. There were minor side effects, however. The skinny aristocrat's clothes were ripped apart by his new body equipped with protruding muscles. Ah. Uh. Mother, look. Is that a god? Whoa. I immediately felt the stunned and startled passers-by's eyes staring at me. Some of the girls, blushing, even covered their faces. Their excessive attention was a little annoying. But it wasn't a problem. Here are some clean socks. Please take my pants. Take this. It's a first-class cloak. Please accept these shoes I bought yesterday. The demon followers hiding among the common citizens provided me with all the clothing I needed. I looked ridiculous since I was given random clothing items, but the cloak comfortably covered everything. I would solve this problem later. I had much more important matters to focus on. Well. After completing my transformation using Master Malin's teachings and receiving the support of the demonic followers, I followed Ritual and Lenovo. Tink Tink. The mercenary guild was visited by so many people that the bell near the door would keep ringing until late at night. However, wars and monster hunts didn't happen every day, so the work of mercenaries could be very diverse. From small orders to illegal activities, they did whatever their clients desired as long as they offered a reasonable payment. There was also additional payment for hazardous working conditions. Hourly payment. Prizes. Seasonal allowances. Mercenaries, who had to be paid extra for reasons, were much more expensive to maintain than ordinary soldiers, but they were stronger, more experienced, and didn't ask unnecessary questions. In particular, named mercenaries, the ones recognized for their SS, were treated even better than knights. If Hero Ritual wanted to hire companions, he would definitely target the named ones. Just like how I hired the mercenary king in the first round at a high cost. Sorry. Ah. Sir Holy Knight, what brings you to our mercenary guild? Are you here to make a request? Hire someone? Perhaps join us? The girl behind the counter asked politely. She mistook Ritual for a paladin because of his gorgeous attire. I need a mercenary. Do you have anyone in mind? Stormbringer Rapavli. Ah. She's on the third floor, which is for permanent members only. Her services cost quite a lot of money, but if you're familiar with her, I can tell her that you're looking for her. Tell her Riel is asking for her. Okay. Please wait a minute. The mercenary guild used a club membership system. However, it didn't restrict the mercenaries in any way. They still had the right to decide who they would work for. The first floor was for guests. The second floor was for associates. The third floor was for permanent members. Places such as the Continental Branch and the Mercenary Guild headquarters had more stories. There could be differences in categorization depending on the region, but they were generally organized that way. Most guild mercenaries with unknown stats were given the guest status. Only those who had been active for a long time and had earned a reputation for themselves were promoted to associates, and the most prominent of them were chosen as permanent members. If one became a member of the guild, the other's attitude towards them would change significantly. Unlike the first floor, which resembled became exclusively available to associates and permanent members starting from the second floor. Naturally, the insolence of the third floor's mercenaries grew in proportion with that since they were treated better than knights. But this woman was different. Who's out there asking for my attention ah? 
Are you the one looking for me? The beauty, who went down to the first floor, was at first indignant but immediately faltered when she saw Rachel. She changed her expression and bowed politely to say hello. I knew why. Externally, her stats looked like this. Level, 754. Job, Swordsman Swordsmanship Slash. SS, Swordsmanship S, Charm S, Dexterity A, Tempest A, Evasion A. Status, Bored. But reality often differed. Race, Half Angel. Job, Swordsman Swordsmanship Slash. SS, Divinity SS, Fencing S, Concealment S, Dexterity A, Tempest A. Status, Amazed, Concealed. She hit her race and SS. The concealment S had the effect of disguising one's stats. It might seem like a useless S since no one except the hero could view someone else's stats, but in fantasy, there were items imbued with that ability. The magic glasses were one such example. It was often the elves who wanted to infiltrate human society that mastered this S. With it, they could simply stuff fur into their chests and hide their long ears with magic or a hat, and no one would suspect their identities anymore. Allow me to introduce myself again. Imriel. Your holiness is immediately evident. The hero and a commoner. Ritual acted naturally despite it being their first meeting and conversation. Join my squad. It would be an honor, your grace. He hired one of the guild's finest mercenaries, but there wasn't even any talk about money. The reason for her submission was hidden from third parties. Stormbringer who was thought to be human, also had mixed angelic blood. As soon as she saw a ritual's divinity, she immediately put herself under his command. Now everything became clear. The Max-class demon lord has learned about corruption, which shouldn't be allowed to exist within the walls of this school. When I was told he wanted to take away my achievements, I only grinned, but ritual was well prepared, right down to his attire. Was it because he was the director's grandson? He possessed extensive knowledge of the fifth curriculum even though it had just begun. Maybe even more than I did. Welcome to the hero's party. Im Lenovo, an archaeologist. I study legends. Nice to meet you, Miss Lenovo. I am Rapavli, a high-ranking mercenary nicknamed Stormbringer. After a short introduction, Hero Ritual continued his journey. Sir Hero Riel, don't you want to meet the sword god Alex? About that, Miss Lenovo. I'm sorry, but I forgot to tell you that Sword God Alex sided with the Demon Lord because of his armless wife. Really? Lenovo's surprised expression made me want to run out and hit her. However, hardly restraining myself, I continued to eavesdrop. Elf Princess Sylvia didn't, though. She has good SS, and if I recruit her, would be able to count on the support of the entire Elf Kingdom. Wow! You're knowledgeable, Sir Hero Riel. That's an exaggeration. He was targeting Sylvia. The fact that he knew Alex's secret was already beyond preparation. What he was doing was actual deception and manipulation. I had to do sewing about it. I decided to meet with Sylvia before Rachel could. And you are in good shape. Sylvia, hosting aristocrats from the Dumpling Kingdom, decided to meet me in person even though it was the first time she had seen me. During the fourth curriculum, she hated humans, but when the wretched third elf king took the throne, the personalities of his descendants changed dramatically. However, Sylvia from the fifth curriculum was an elf princess who dreamed of marrying a handsome and strong man. Thanks for the compliment. This is the result of constant morning workouts. Not even a day had passed yet, but it didn't matter. Ah, uh, I see. Sylvia stared in fascination at my bulging pectoral muscles. Would you like to touch them? Ah. If you'll allow. Of course. Then please excuse my rudeness. While you have such a broad chest. I would like to remain forever in your arms. She fell victim to the preferences of third elf king Elfheim, who loved humans. At least it was better than hatred. Princess Sylvia. Please. Just call me Sylvia, but put all your love into it. What? Love? Had she gone completely nuts? Sylvia I want to introduce you to someone, but would you like to take a walk with me first? 
someone stronger than you. You will see. I'm curious, so I dare not refuse. Sylvia, pressing and rubbing her cheeks against my chest, agreed to come with me. Excellent. I grabbed Sylvia's thin waist with my left hand. Ah. Those biceps. I'm not sure my fragile body can handle this. Hey, ITLL be problematic if your back breaks right now. My hand rested on her lumbar region between the fourth and fifth vertebrae. At least if it did, I would be ready to act. At that moment, Sylvia rose to the tip of her toes and dared plant her lips on mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I didn't resist. I wasn't a fan of LCD monitors, but I could provide such a service, given the old days. We crossed the street and headed to the park. There, we continued kissing, moving from place to place, and then quietly parted. Because he would soon appear. After a while, Hero Ritual found Sylvia lying on a park bench. And he exclaimed. The princess is dead. This was why love should be expressed in moderation. Difficulty, I think the only woman who can withstand the love of Cadet Kong Han Su is Counselor Soja. Oh. Trainee teacher. Don't be silly. Now's the time to keep watching him. They had no time to stand still, considering the guards received a report from a max-class righteous citizen. Get him. Subdue the er. What have you done with Princess Sylvia? Don't let him get away. I needed to hurry up to not miss my junior, who fled after being accused of ing a princess of a neighboring kingdom. Chapter, 293. 19th Round Unique Smile. Run. Sir Hero. What's the matter? Why do we need to run? Lenovo and Mercenary A were surprised. The hero, who went to recruit elf Princess Sylvia, returned alone. No, he was being pursued by numerous guards. But they didn't stand still. The dummies rushed after Ritual. I also followed them at a short distance. They couldn't stay in a city full of guards. No, they couldn't stay in the Dumpling Kingdom, at least for as long as the charges hadn't been dropped yet. TSK TSK, this is where his lack of experience becomes apparent. I commended his refusal to be disarmed and arrested, but it would have been better for him if he cooperated with the guards until the misunderstanding was resolved. Because of his actions, the misunderstanding only intensified. His response was tantamount to confessing to a crime. Sylvia wouldn't disappear like monsters upon death, and her body was in very good condition. He could be saved if her corpse was enchanted to avoid decay and brought to Saintus A of the Holy Kingdom. It would have become clear that she died of shock, unable to withstand the kisses of the powerful Max-class citizen. But the suspect escaped. Until Sylvia was sent to the Holy Kingdom and resurrected, the hero's party would be on the list of wanted criminals. Appearance, are you sure? Of course, trainee teacher. I experienced the same situation in my first round. I prevented an attempt on my life by getting rid of a female assassin, but I was wrongly accused of ing an innocent beauty, turning me into a fugitive. Curiosity, how did it end? Since the heir's identity was murky, I was found innocent since only citizens of the country and important people were under protection. Until then, however, I had to hide and sleep in the woods like a homeless person. Mosquitoes left no part of me unbidden. That incident caused me a lot of trouble. So, where are you going now? Ritual was accused of ing elf Princess Sylvia. He couldn't stay in the Dumpling Kingdom anymore. And a trip to the Elf Kingdom in the western part of the Central Continent was tantamount to. His remaining options were the Holy Empire to the north and the Holy Kingdom next door. He could also go to the lawless and uncivilized zone in the south, where the territory of the former demon lord used to be located. Sir Hero Riel. Lenovo has been here before. I remember there being a cliff ahead. Trust me. After leaving the capital of the Dumpling Kingdom, Ritual jumped off the cliff. Lenovo and Mercenary A followed without hesitation. Was he giving up on his adventure and committing? No, I doubted it. FSUH. FSHU. A ship with huge sails appeared under the cliff. The ship, carrying the hero and the dummies on the deck, took off vertically into the heavens, ignoring gravity. 
I knew of such vessels. To be precise, I had been on one of those. On the flying ship Lorita. It was the inspiration for the hoverboat later created by Sage. However, the original and the copy were like a maglev train and a steam locomotive in terms of their differences in characteristics. Lorita was a relic belonging to the guardians of the northern continent of fantasy. I was curious what kind of relic was displayed in hero ritual status, but it turned out to be one of the flying ships that usually flew between the cities of angels like intercity buses. Additional information, flying ships are vehicles designed for young angels who are inexperienced in flying. Thank you for the detailed explanation, smart and beautiful trainee teacher. That aside. He's cheating again. This might sound strange coming from someone who had consistently used spatial transportation magic circles since the second round to avoid requests for salvation from the locals. But the flying ship, which looked like a private jet with vertical takeoff and landing, was too much of a fraud. With it, Hero Ritual would be able to get anywhere in the fantasy world in a very short period without any restrictions. Problem, it doesn't violate school rules. The student already owns it before he was summoned here. If so, after hearing trainee teacher assert that he didn't break school rules, I spread my wings of the righteous hero and followed the vessel heading west at an extremely high speed. They had gone past the elf kingdom and crossed the ridge separating the central and western continents in the blink of an eye. The western continent of the fourth curriculum was dark and cold due to the huge congestion of lucifers, colossal flies that fed on light, covering its skies. However, it was different in the fifth curriculum. The food chain and environment weren't destroyed because the Lucifer's natural enemy, Zeus's, the gigantic mosquitoes, weren't driven to extinction by the Phantom King Shakespeare. As a consequence. Explanation, there has been a rapid development in electrical engineering. Zeus's, releasing electrical discharges, were used as generators. It was as Miss Trainee said. Locals have begun selling electrical appliances in this part of fantasy. I thought it would resemble Earth, but many strange inventions had appeared since they weren't without magic. Yui Hick. Bira. In the fourth curriculum, Lucifers dominated the skies of the western continent. Now, however, planes were flying all over the airspace. Fantasy aircraft. Naturally. Unregistered aircraft. If you don't land immediately, we will open fire. I repeat. If you don't land immediately, we will open fire. Radars and air traffic control were created and implemented as well. Those might seem unnecessary measures to some due to the huge space the skies offered, but if even just one of those vehicles crashed into a city, it would cause enormous casualties and damages. Pride, the western continent made significant progress over the past two millennia thanks to Cadet Kong Han Su. I learned about it from my demons and followers reports. However, I didn't know their airspace control had become this advanced. Don't shoot. I'm a hero. Regardless, you are wanted at the central continent. You must disarm and land immediately. If you refuse, we will be forced to open fire. This is madness. It's the same here as well. Soldiers quickly surrounded Ritual's flying ship using vehicles that looked like winged motorcycles. Their uniforms were too bizarre for them to be called guardians or knights. Moreover. Race, Vampire. Level, 783. Job, Celestial Lancer Riding Lance Mastery. SS, Riding S, Lance Mastery A, Keen Sight A, Flying B, Blood Drinking B. Status, Vigilant. More than half of them weren't humans but vampires. For side characters, they had quite great stats. What should we do, Sir Hero? To Lenovo's question, Hero Ritual answered firmly. Anyone who opposes the hero in his journey to save the world is to be considered evil. Flying ship orgat. Switch to combat mode. Boom boom boom. Their vessel went into battle. Dozens of shots rang out. Without any guidance, it automatically aimed and fired at the warriors surrounding them. The celestial lancers of the western continent were no slouches, but the combat power of Orgat was far higher. It lifted the enemy's siege in just a few seconds. I also want one for myself. 
It was like a super robot. I knew I had my wings of the righteous hero and the snow woman's feathers for traveling, but I still wanted to take possession of his flying ship, which was why. Sir Hero. This is amazing huh? I landed behind Mercenary A as she admired the vessel's combat power, grabbed her by her slender neck between her sixth and seventh vertebrae, and threw her off the deck. Wow. Afterward, I targeted Lenovo, who was watching the aerial battle while leaning against the railing. She hadn't yet noticed that Mercenary A had fallen overboard. I crept behind her and gave her a good kick in her ass. Kia. Her upper body bent forward, and Lenovo toppled over. I got rid of my stress. If Lenovo used flight magic in time, she wouldn't die. I would really love to get rid of her on the spot, but I didn't want to make Hero Ritual's life any easier, leaving me with no choice but to restrain myself. I took comfort in the fact that her buttocks would hurt, and she wouldn't be able to walk normally for quite a long time. Hey! How did you get here? My junior finally noticed me. With the help of my righteous heart. What? Instead of answering, I tapped my foot lightly. An invisible wave swept across the deck of the flying ship. My goal. A warning. A warning. Intruder alert. Intruder detected. Welcome aboard, Captain. Battle mode cancelled. Please set the course. I hacked into Ritual's flying ship and took ownership of it. If he died and regressed, Orgat would reappear in his stats, but at least he wouldn't be able to use it for this round. I'm sorry, but you need to leave my ship. How dare you? Filled with anger, Ritual shouted, pulling a sword from his belt and rushing at me. The divine energy on his blade shone brightly. It only made me laugh, however. What a pity. I thought he would be better because he had human blood in him, but he fought like the rest of the stupid chickens. He blindly relied on divine reflection, leaving himself defenseless. I decided to show him the Max Class Hero's OD of fighting. Its main focus was setting the tone for the entirety of the fight. Facial expression and eye movements were very important in executing it. While in combat, I often used the smile of the righteous hero, which instilled confidence. That made it easy. Ah! Ritual's legs buckled, causing him to lose his balance and roll along the deck of the flying ship. I didn't do anything. I just looked at him. What happened to you? My junior's entire body was trembling like an aspen in the wind. W who are you? How can a human exude so much wrath? How can one soul withstand madness that powerful and intense it can't be? This is absurd. What nonsense are you talking about? I could only laugh in response to his cowardly excuses after suddenly losing his fighting spirit. And human. I was the second demon lord. A unique one at that, considering I still hadn't lost my heart as the righteous hero. Go away. D don't come near me. What? But I've never even moved from my spot yet. Stay back. Go away. Ritual didn't listen to me at all. While I did nothing but stand, he retreated so much his back hit the deck rail. At that moment. Phew. As if committing, he jumped off flying ship Orgat. It didn't quite work out as I planned. I just put a little force into my gaze, and he already got so scared. It looked like he was raised in an enclosed environment. As his senior, not the demon lord, I was worried about how he'd be able to live independently. Ahem. At that moment, I heard a cough behind me. They clearly weren't planning on attacking me. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made their presence known in such a peaceful manner. Turning around, I saw a beautiful vampire and a man with his arms crossed over his chest. They looked familiar. However, since I was hiding my identity, I greeted them with the smile of the righteous hero and pretended it was my first time meeting them. Greetings. I am Aristocrat A from the Central Continent. I have no ID with me, but I was chasing the criminal who had the elf princess to get the bounty on his head. In response, they grinned and looked at each other. Ha! Great hero, hiding your identity is useless. Even after two millennia, you're still the only being in this world that can smile like that. You're the reason why we've become so happy. 
isn't that right, Shakespeare? Ahem, that's right. The strongest archmage and the epitome of beauty on the western continent. They were like the perfect harmony of yin and yang, in which there were no flaws. But I grew a little concerned. Looks like my trademark smile might be a problem. The last time I met the couple in front of me was 2000 years ago. Chapter, 294. 19th Round Terminator. At that time, his stats were like this. Race, Great Human. Level, 999. Job, Wizard Chastity Wisdom. SS, Magic ZZ, Sorcery ZZ, Magic Power Z, Path of Magic Z, Intelligence Z. Status, Good. Now. Race, Great Elemental. Job, Connoisseur Inyang Truth. SS, Inyang G, Elements G, Magic ZZ, Eternal Life ZZ, Energy Z. Sword God Alex was incredibly strong, but Shakespeare was even far beyond the standards of primary education. He was a boss with two G rank SS in a place where even a Z ranked enemy could give heroes hell. It was insane, considering his SS were adjusted accordingly for each course. I found it difficult to imagine how strong he was in the secondary and tertiary courses. What made me even more curious was his job. I activated the learn more function, which I hadn't used in a long time. Connoisseur, this job can be acquired by patient and tenacious archmages that have fallen in love with an unprecedented beauty. There's less than a zero. Zero 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 one percent chance of gaining it, but upon doing so, they would be freed from their old shackles. The truth would always be with them as they explore the world's most outstanding abyss and realize the essence of yin and yang. For as long as the harmony of yin and yang remains intact, all of the connoisseur's actions will lead to unconditional success. I had never seen a job so fraudulent. I found it hard to believe that the system designed it. Unconditional success. What do you think of this, trainee teacher? Opinion, this is my first time seeing that job, but I think it's romantic. Romantic? You're very sentimental. It was definitely impressive. But I had already lost my virginity at the beginning of the first round, which meant I could no longer become an archmage to accomplish one of its founding conditions. Curiosity, how was Cadet Kong Han Su's first time? Did you have a romantic night with a beautiful lady? Nothing like that. After being beaten by Alex, who pretended to train me, I got drunk to ease the pain. I couldn't remember what happened next. When I woke up the next morning, the maid of the royal palace was sleeping next to me. Expectations, that maid fell in love with you, huh? Another miss. The maid wanted to be impregnated by the hero to change her social position. Romance or love wasn't her motive. Disappointment, oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. It's okay, trainee teacher. Fortunately, the maid didn't get pregnant. However, it taught me a lesson. So from that moment on, I made sure to always keep my mind clear. It was thanks to that behavior that I managed to avoid leaving my children here in fantasy. Hence, I would one day depart from this world without regrets. But the faculty members refused to let me go easily. The cowardly second demon also caught me in her web, turning me into the max class husband. Great hero, if you have time, I invite you to our home. Please allow me to repay you for introducing me to my dearest Shakespeare. Since the strongest couple on the western continent insisted, how could I refuse? The Orgot's flying ship is on standby. Please set a course. I had taken control of Orgot's flying ship. Course set. Initiating flight. If Ritchell, who jumped from the ship, had died, the world would have already collapsed, but he had to be alive since nothing happened. As his caring senior, I immediately took advantage of Shadow as honorary teacher position to check on his condition. Ouch damn. He was fine. Looking at my junior, who didn't even break his ribs, I learned sewing new. Fall damage was defined as normal physical damage in this world. Hence, since his divine reflection was triggered, he sustained no damage. This was a fact that I wasn't aware of. Angels were born with wings, after all, which meant they rarely fell. At least I discovered I could throw him off a cliff next time. 
Sir Hero Riel. Are you okay? Someone attacked me on the ship. Lenovo and Mercenary A, who had just joined Ritchell, were fine as well, apart from a couple of broken bones. I wasn't particularly surprised, considering I had no intention of ING them in the first place. After that, I also decided to check my body sitting on the throne in the Demon Lord's castle. My niece. I haven't read Chapter 272 yet. Neither have I, Mistress Soja. It's not that you haven't read it yet. It doesn't exist at all because the author took a break. Break? He's worse than the drug demon lord himself. Such a lazy person needs to be put in a dungeon to make sure he only focuses on working on his novel. Three women were reading a romance novel using a tiny smartphone screen. The addicted spirit was on my head, Soja sat on my lap, and Shadow A, bending over slightly, sat on the arm of the throne. It was a little strange to watch this from the outside. This is our home, great hero. Shakespeare pointed at the distance, where a dome-shaped bunker could be seen. When I first saw it, it seemed pathetic to me, but my mind gradually changed as we got closer. It was huge. Really damn huge. It was the same size as the supreme dragon of oblivion, Noebius. What is that? That's the capital of the Eternal Night Empire, ruled by my wife. That dome saves the vampires from sunlight and allows them to live normally. It was surrounded by low buildings, making it look like an egg without the yolk. There seem to be people living outside the dome. Every city in the empire has this structure, allowing humans and vampires to coexist. It took a long time for the two races to come together, though, and if it weren't for Malin's teachings, it would have been much more difficult. Wait. Malin's teachings? I didn't think I would hear about Master Malin's achievements outside the central and northern continents. Yes. He treats everyone equally, after all, including humans and vampires. Right. It wasn't difficult for humans and elves to get along, but things were different with vampires. For humans, vampires were blood-sucking parasites, and for vampires, humans were livestock filled with nutrients. Their very nature made despising each other almost natural. After declaring Malin's teachings as the state religion, racial discrimination has been eliminated. With our power, we've taken control over half of the western continent, and we're in the process of conquering neighboring countries through cultural influence, not military conflict. Cultural influence. I didn't think I would hear sowing like that in the wild, wild world of fantasy. Vampires with infinite life spans don't retire due to old age, so they're basically the ones who hold the entire empire together. But the proliferation of flush toilets caused the number of humans to increase dramatically, equalizing the scale of power. But that doesn't change the fact that most aristocrats are vampires. Wouldn't that mean the situation here hasn't changed much, then? Racial discrimination was just replaced by class discrimination. I was really curious how the Eternal Night Empire could hold out for 2000 years without their entire civilization collapsing from within. I was an emperor too, and right now, I was the demon lord. This was a topic close to my heart. There's no problem with that, said the epitome of beauty with a bright smile on her face. Why? Because I'm a vampire slave who can't live without Shakespeare's blood. Hee <laughs> hee. I don't think the empress ruling half of the western continent can say that. This woman hugging a middle-aged man's forearms and rubbing her cheeks against him was the vampire queen and ruler of the empire. But it's true. I can't drink other people's blood even if I were to starve to death. Then it is better for you two to be on good terms. She would die of anemia otherwise. It had finally become clear how humans and vampires were able to reconcile. Empress Master, Human. Empress, Vampire. Royal Family, Vampires. Aristocrats, Vampires. Commoners, Humans. The Empress ruled the Empire and the Vampires, but her husband ruled her. Looking at this couple, I didn't feel any dominance in their relationship, but the Empire's citizens felt differently. Whimper, I think their love is wonderful. Trainee Teacher, you're too sentimental. You have a beautiful body and soul, though. Captain. You have arrived at your destination. 
Landing. While we were talking, we got to the home of the power couple. This is impressive. I had seen many things that had gone beyond what was common, but I still couldn't help but admire the panoramic view of the city. The columns supporting the dome were multi-story buildings connected by tunnels like bridges, but what caught me by surprise even more than that was their mode of transportation. Vehicles similar to trains and buses moved quickly between buildings without accidents despite the absence of traffic lights and road signs. That wasn't all. There were many things here that reminded me of the earth. Fans, refrigerators, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, TVs, cameras, telephones, elevators, escalators. Thanks to the addition of magic, their technology was even more efficient. Their washing machines magically folded the laundry that passed through the dryer and sent it to the closet. It was a huge scam. Sir Hero, there's nothing that Shakespeare cannot do. After all, he is my husband. Shakespeare laughed and provided an explanation. Thanks to the truth, there is no invention that I can't make. Just having an idea of what I want to create and its focal details is enough. It's all thanks to your job, huh? I thought it was stupid of me to even attempt to make a smartphone charger and be day myself. I should have turned to him right from the beginning. If all of Shakespeare's actions led to unconditional success, he could definitely recreate Earth's smartphones. No, he'd be able to make a far better invention than that. Shakespeare petted his wife. This power of mine isn't absolute, however. My inventions must obey the rules of this world. Time travel, interdimensional travel, and the merging of souls are impossible. My truth is only available in this world, after all. This is. He voiced a rather interesting list of things that were beyond his control. Time travel, movement between dimensions, and merging of souls. The three main prohibitions of the fantasy system. Shakespeare knew the truth about the local's cruel fate. A divided soul, an eternally repeating life, an artificial destiny. From the moment one comes to the conclusion that the truth they know is, in fact, true, it ceases to be the truth, for, at that point, it becomes self-inflicted. Ah sure. What nonsense was he talking about? But the truth still exists. One such example would be you being our hope. Um. I couldn't understand what he's saying, but it didn't sound like an insult. Question, Cadet Kong Han Su, how can a student, devoid of any hope, graduate? If the probability is 0%, wouldn't that be true? Please explain it to me in a way that I'd understand, intelligent trainee teacher. Explanation, to become a good senior, you need to pay more attention to your juniors. Juniors? Ah. I looked at what Ritchell, the hero who crash-landed somewhere on the western continent, was doing. For a pathetic vampire, you're holding up pretty well. Katich. Princess of Darkness, if you take a blood oath to obey me, they'll let you go. Don't make me laugh Kjh. Ha. Let's see how long you can hold out in the sunlight. Princess of Darkness. That junior of mine was currently toying with Shakespeare's daughter. Does he want his journey to end in zero? One seconds again. Chapter, 295. 19th Round Truth versus Truth. Should I report this? I couldn't just directly say, the hero's drying your daughter out under the sun, since I only learned about it because of Shadow as ability as an honorary teacher. This was a privilege that the final boss, the demon lord, shouldn't have. But there was another way I could bring it to their attention. I could casually say, I would like to see your daughter. Shakespeare would then contact her and notice what was happening. Hey! Where's your? Good hero, I apologize, but could you wait a minute? A floating hologram appeared in front of Shakespeare's face. The screen showed the Princess of Darkness being pinned to the ground by Hero Ritchell's foot. Judging by the angle of view, it was a shot from the skies. It couldn't be. You even have a satellite. I didn't think I would see satellites in fantasy. The Evening Sun. This is a masterpiece that I invented 187 years ago. Since then, I have constantly launched them into space, building a surveillance network throughout the western continent. Holy! 
They were originally designed to block out the sun, causing an artificial solar eclipse. However, I soon realized that there were other uses for this. Let's take a look. Pip. Connoisseur Shakespeare controlled the hologram with his fingertip as he concentrated the power of his Jirank Yin Yang S on his staff, which he held in his right hand. It didn't remain on his weapon, however. Instead, it disappeared somewhere. No, it didn't disappear. I looked up. My view was blocked by the dome ceiling, so I couldn't see the sky, but I felt a huge accumulation of energy above us. It was very far away but within my perception. Oh. I understood what Shakespeare was trying to do. His next words immediately confirmed my assumption, too. My staff is connected to the evening sun. For the average wizard, this is but a tool that enhances and focuses magic, but to me, it's a transmitter that allows me to bombard my target regardless of distance. He had absolute strength. Immediately after that. BJJ. A rainbow beam of light fell upon Rachel's head. Was it because of the divine shield? It didn't make sense. His attacks were supposed to always be successful, which meant the hero's survival was out of the question. Even my current body, the incarnation of the demon lord, wouldn't survive such an attack, let alone a child who blindly relied on divinity. But he didn't die. Even after a short wait, there was no sign of the world's destruction. Shakespeare loosened his grip over the staff. He didn't die because I had no intention of ing him. The great hero has come to visit for the first time in two thousand years. I shouldn't make a fool of myself in front of you. Ha <laughs> ha. You really know everything. Without the hero, the world would collapse, and everything would regress to the moment the hero was summoned. I looked at the hologram. Ritual and the Princess of Darkness had swapped places. The Princess of Darkness, who could now freely act thanks to an artificial solar eclipse, seized the hero, who had no fight left in him. Ephesich. A rope of bright red vampire blood wrapped around him. Hurry, Rapavali. However, Hero Ritual couldn't accept his loss. He summoned a companion he had been deliberately hiding until the last moment. Your Grace. I will save you. Mercenary A ran out of the forest with Lenovo. Sir Hero. Why are you fighting the Princess of Darkness? She asked, clearly puzzled by the sudden turn of events. She had been searching the forest for food, like berries and mushrooms, along with Mercenary A. She had no idea what was happening. Hero Ritual replied. The Princess of Darkness is under the Demon Lord's control. Huh. What the hell was he talking about? I wasn't even manipulating Alex, let alone the Princess of Darkness, whom I didn't get in touch with at all. He was using such a blatant lie. The dastardly hero just made up an excuse to hide his atrocities in front of Lenovo. Princess. Come to your senses. Naturally, Lenovo was stupid enough to immediately believe him. Don't worry about it, good hero. This is the western continent. There is no place out of my reach here, said Shakespeare as he observed the situation with me. And in support of his words. Protect the princess. Don't move. Lower your weapons and raise your hands. You're surrounded. Surrender now. The Eternal Night Empire's army had completely encircled the hero and his dummies. But this wasn't the same helpless group that had attempted to apprehend their ship before. The vampires before them were colossal and were clad in black armor from head to toe. I wouldn't call it armor, though. They were more like some form of a special forces unit with flak jackets and helmets. It sounded strange, considering fantasy's setting, but I couldn't describe their gear any better. They even had sewing that looked like a pistol in their right hand and a rectangular translucent shield in their left hand, covering their entire body. I was too far away to check their stats, but I was certain their SS were outstanding. Monsters. They're too strong. The hero's party was no match for them, even more so when considering the fact that the vampires were armed to the teeth, and the hero and his members could only rely on their SS. The reason the dummies were able to hold out even for a few seconds was only because of Shakespeare's kindness. They are also souls trapped in this world. They're simply being exploited by the hero, 
which is why I don't want to them. You still don't like violence, huh? Even if Lenovo and Mercenary A died, the world wouldn't crumble. Shakespeare laughed. Haha it's simply my nature. The situation was quickly resolved. With his hands and feet bound by a special rope and not with the blood of the Princess of Darkness, Ritchel had been neutralized. His divine shield might seem versatile, but it was useless against binds. There you have it. If the good hero doesn't mind, I plan to leave them as prisoners of the Empire, at least until this divided world is destroyed. Do what you want. As his max class caring senior, I would keep looking after my junior, but I didn't have to save him. I would simply observe. And I would respect the judgment of the local that caught him and decided to take him into custody. Was this the end of Ritchell's journey? As a hero with 100 years of experience, I doubted that. As I expected. Sir Hero. It'll help you. Lenovo activated her magic. What? Shakespeare's calm expression changed dramatically. It was understandable. White light enveloped the hero ritual and mercenary A and soon disappeared, after all. Spatial movement. Shakespeare had foreseen such an event and even created a special rope to prevent it from happening. However, Lenovo's magic ignored those restrictions. Her magic surpassed my invention, created with the power of truth. This is my failure. As long as the perfect harmony of yin and yang wasn't broken, the connoisseur was guaranteed unconditional success. Yet, he failed for some reason. What happened to Lenovo? She seems to have lost her life for sacrificing her level to activate powerful magic. Lenovo's corpse, whose level dropped to zero, disappeared like a monster as she turned all her experience into magic. The conclusion Shakespeare and I came to was that it was an irreversible death. It's a familiar concept. She guided heroes, but she would always find a way to die if she didn't like the adventure. It was nothing out of the ordinary for me. I even asked my cowardly wife about her personality, but she didn't know anything about her. Lenovo played an important role in summoning heroes, but she wasn't much different from other companions otherwise. Until her death, all she would do was interfere with the hero. But Shakespeare had different thoughts on this matter. Lenovo. In the ancient language, it means truth. I used to think it was just a name, but now, seeing how it cancels out my truth, in beginning to think a little differently. Another connoisseur. Or, just like the great hero, she's not bound by the rules of this world. Her existence can only be explained in such a way. Perhaps. I would have liked to meet and talk with Lenovo personally, but I have lost that chance. Shakespeare seemed extremely disappointed. I had a solution for his predicament, however. There's a way to do it. If you give me all the information I need, they'll give it to you in another world, where Lenovo is still alive. Oh. It's a good idea, wouldn't you say so? Yes. This might be even better than we can imagine. Although it requires borrowing the hero's power, it is an indirect success in interdimensional travel and time travel, which has been impossible for 2000 years. I tilted my head to one side. What can be done with it, though? I could only return a few years back, not to a distant past. Even history couldn't be changed. Assume the day of the hero's summon is your starting point, and you spend 100 years here. Learning and understanding all the blueprints and knowledge I have accumulated and passed on to you throughout that time. What will happen then? Oh. I see. Ha. Huh. It seems you understand the point I'm trying to convey. It is exactly as you think. Another Shakespeare will receive the information accumulated over 100 years, eliminating the need to invent the same thing every time. You can move research 100 years ahead in an instant. It's a revolution. His explanation made me understand why he was so happy. It was a very interesting idea. In theory, we could cause endless development. Worry, I'm scared to even wonder if the result of that will still be the fantasy world. Of course, trainee teacher. Well, perhaps. In accordance with that, let's first start by creating a system that will allow me to control that flying ship at any time and any number of times. Ha. <laughs> It won't be a problem. 
I decided to leave my junior and mercenary A alone, who, thanks to Lenovo's magic, found themselves on the central continent. There were more important things to do now, after all. One month, three months, one year, three years. The fantasy experience of the Max-class demon lord quickly acculated. But this couldn't last forever. While researching what other uses Wi-Fi had, a change occurred. He decided to take action. Hero Ritual led many companions to storm the demon lord's castle. I would just ignore them, but... For Sir Riel. For the hero. For my master. For my owner. For you. There were many of them, and the variety of their jobs were impressive. TSK. I have to go. I had a feeling that the four celestial lords I appointed as the demon lord's castle guards wouldn't last long. I guess this was where the research for this round would end. Ha! Huh. Here you go. The Shakespeare connoisseur intuitively understood that the end of this world would soon come. He handed me his latest masterpiece. I like this design. I especially liked its texture. Lord of Demons and Hope, show this to the other me. What is it called? I asked, climbing onto the flying ship Orgath. This is Malenfon A. He replied. It was an excellent name, one I couldn't even imagine coming up with. Chapter, 296. 19th Round Malenfon. Its name alone will probably compel people to get up and pray the moment they hear its alarm. I put my Malenfon in the Demon Vault, which was created through the help of my control over space. It differed from the Vault, which was given as a reward for winning the Festival of Heroes. It had no restrictions on volume and weight. In addition, it wasn't a fantasy S but my own ability. Hence, even if I changed my body, I wouldn't lose it. I could endlessly store as many items as I wanted in it, but unfortunately, they wouldn't be able to avoid regression. Regression fell under the jurisdiction of the director's time, after all. It didn't matter how many items I put in this storage. As soon as Hero traveled back in time, objects from fantasy would immediately return to their original places even if they were in it. The same applied to products. If materials from fantasy were used to create them, they would also be subject to regression. Hence, only objects and materials originating beyond fantasy should be stored in it. That wasn't possible for the locals born here, but it was possible for me, who received sponsorship from angels. You didn't stay too late this time, cowardly hubby. The safety of my copy is important. I left the aristocrat's body, which served as the demon lord's incarnation, on the flying ship Orgat and transferred my mind to a copy. I immediately felt my strength surge. After all, despite the fragmentation of my power to accommodate all of my copies, they were still vessels containing my soul. Incarnations would be no more than incarnations. I retrieved my Malenfone from the demon vault. Of course, it would never go missing in it, but it was never a bad idea to double-check. Drug Demon Lord Did you find yourself a new toy? The addicted spirit, sitting on my head, showed interest in it. Putting the phone back in the vault, I replied. This smartphone is made specifically for my needs, which is why it has many different amazing features. Whoa! Show me! Later! I need to teach my rude junior a lesson first. Having received a good thrashing from Shakespeare and escaping through Lenovo's sacrifice, Hero Ritual resurfaced after three years. And he brought many companions with him. He seemed to have decided to give up trying to defeat the supreme dragon of Oblivion Noebius and Phantom King Shakespeare, considering he headed straight for the Demon Lord instead. Ritual moved as if he had let go of the idea of taking my achievements away. Appearance, he has already taken one of them, though. What? Trainee teacher. How did that happen? Explanation, unfortunately, he surpassed you last year for the person with the highest monetary bounty in the world of fantasy achievement. I had such an achievement as well. I didn't know about it at all. After all, I had never met anyone insane enough to hunt the max-class righteous hero for a monetary reward. You just didn't know that you met them. Huh? What? You didn't give the bounty hunters a chance to introduce themselves. You just immediately broke their necks since you didn't like how they looked at you. 
It wasn't a big deal, which was why I forgot about it. In any case, Hero Ritchell, who managed to take away one of my achievements, was now trying his best to slay me. I needed to hurry up. Otherwise, the percentages of him winning would increase. Lord of Legends, Yasuho. Lord of Betrayal, Hanjo. Lord of Death. Lord of Steel, 2D. It had been four years since their creation, but nobody had been able to break through their line of defenses since they easily eliminated any intruders. That was how it used to be, at least. Lord of Betrayal Hanjo here. They've broken through the garden on the first floor, and the thick magical fog is making it hard to track them. I shall stay where I am and guard this place. Hanjo, who betrayed her race and swore allegiance to the demon lord, reported. Under normal circumstances, she would take to the skies and shoot down the hero's companions from a distance. However, she failed miserably today. Hero Ritual gave magical fog scrolls to his companions even though they were already masters of stealth. King of Assassins, Knight of Darkness, King of Rogues. Based on my first round, those three were good at disguise and camouflage. Hence, leaving them as bait, Ritual managed to burst through the garden. Legendary Lord Yasuho, reporting in from the dining room on the second floor. They rushed through my defenses like the wind, master, and I couldn't do anything because of the protection of the hero's divinity. That was within my expectations. Sword mastery was meant to deal physical damage against opponents. Under the protection of divinity, my junior fought Yasuho as his companions ascended to the next floor, then followed suit right after. Without the holy sword, Yasuho would continue to suffer from such tactics. His wife performed no better. Lord of Death Silverass here. I couldn't take my eyes off the men that were better looking than my husband, which led to my failure to protect the banquet hall on the third floor I am sorry. Was it because she was the pathetic elf king Elfium's younger sister that she lost her mind whenever she was up against pumped up males? She wasn't like that when she was with me, but after leaving my side and reuniting with her husband, she took up her old habits again. I knew the men who distracted her, too. Knight King. Mercenary King. During my first round, among my companions, the Knight King boasted the best defense, and the Mercenary King who went through fire and water had a battle-hardened body. If Sword King Alex was here now, they could have become the Three Musketeers, but he was now in the arms of his wife the wings of his wife. My friend Boris, full of love and hate, won't last long against them either. Once they had broken through the fourth floor, which Boris was responsible for, they would go straight to the fifth, where there was no one waiting for them. They would then descend upon me. I hurriedly prepared to greet the guests in a way fitting for the Max-class demon lord. What? Why are you chasing me away? My junior is coming soon. Do you really want to greet them while sitting on my lap? Hee <laughs> hee. You constantly insist that you are a civilized inhabitant, but you're pretty old-fashioned yourself, cowardly hubby. What? It's what's trending right now. The demon lord meeting a squad of heroes with a beautiful woman sitting on his lap has become a standard technique. My cowardly wife showed me the smartphone screen. There was a manga page in which the demon lord, looking like a pimp with a girl sitting on his lap, met the hero. Isn't that one for adults? 15. Nonsense. How can that be? The author's notes even express his surprise about his manga not being intended for people of all ages. He's just a shameless. Regardless, were those types of demon lords all the rage right now? I didn't like it, but I didn't want to be seen as an old-fashioned F-class demon lord. Ill hide. Until my order, Shadow herself concealed her presence. She seemed to have mistaken sewing. I had no desire to put the pathetic elf king's ex-wife on my lap. Niece niece. What? There is nothing indecent about this. That's not what I mean. You look happy. You even have a huge smile on your face. Stop lying. This is merely an indifferent expression of a proud beauty. He he he. Stop laughing. What do you mean? Like my niece, this is just an indifferent expression. He he he. Auntie. Meanwhile, 
Former Prince Boris, now wearing a tight-fitting t-shirt and short shorts instead of a black-and-white maid outfit. With his hands folded under his senselessly large and soft breasts, waited for the hero's squad members to finish their conversation. Lord of Steel 2D is an android created with the help of science and magic. His SS aren't high, but don't forget that he has brave. However, with our individual strengths combined, we'll definitely be able to defeat him even if our level drops to one. Sir, I have a question. What is it, Aqua? Can't we just ignore him this time too? Not this time, no. Based on the information I know, he has no weaknesses. We can only win through numbers and brute force. Don't worry about it, though. I have prepared a special secret weapon for this. God, Boris. How could he let them do the briefing right under his nose? By his behavior, Boris resembled the first hero. And for this, he would most likely pay. Defeat and humiliation. The golden golem of the god of war was summoned at the demon lord's castle. I thought that super robot disappeared along with the fourth curriculum. It was the most powerful golem created by a wizard who turned the northern continent into an eternal battlefield. And along with it were two more golems, which I saw for the first time. A white one and a black one. Both had epaulets on their left shoulders with the image of a tower with an eye. It was the symbol of Sage's tower, which meant he created them. Bloody Sage. This is starting to annoy me. The last time I ordered a super robot from him, he made a fragile android girl for me. For Hero Ritual, however, he made actual combat robots. As soon as I saw their powerful arms and legs, I immediately felt the need to add them to my collection. They wore strong armor, and on their heads were helmets, through which the sparkle of their blue eyes could be seen. Just unbelievable. How could he make them so cool? Ack. Now wasn't the right time for me to admire them. As soon as the three golems moved according to my junior's command, the demon lord's castle shook violently. I'm not sure if the castle can withstand this. Soja tried to dispel my concern. Who do you think designed this building, cowardly hubby? Don't worry. This place is actually stronger than it looks. Well, time to find out if it is. Hero Ritual prepared well over the past three years, which allowed him to climb here without any losses. However, I didn't acknowledge his merits. This was the first time my junior entered the Demon Lord's castle, yet he already knew how to defeat all four Celestial Lords down to the smallest details. That was simply impossible. It was as if someone had leaked information to him. I didn't even have to think about who would do such a thing. The faculty members. I knew they were sneaky s ever since they questioned my identity as the max class righteous hero, but now I was convinced that they definitely had no conscience. My golems will fight the android. You are incredible, sir hero. I pay you my respects, sir. Your ss are impressive. The ignorant dummies began to praise him. I hated it, but I was too busy answering my mother on my Malin phone right now. Mother, son, you reply to my messages quicker now. 742. Son, I changed my smartphone to a Malin phone. 743. This invention could even work through space. Mother, Malin phone. Is that the smartphone of fantasy? 744. Son, sewing like that, but much cooler. It has a lot of cool built-in functions. 745. Mother, can it also transform into a robot? 746. Son, into a robot? 747. Why was she suddenly talking about robots? Mother, it's nothing special. It's just that all smartphones have such a function now. 748. Son, why would smartphones have such a function? 749. In what situation could one use such a small and easily breakable robot? Maybe it could feed its owner with popcorn while they're watching a movie in the theater. Mother, Sonny. Sorry. 750. Son, huh. 751. Mother, you're upset right now, aren't you? You were probably in a good mood because you changed your old phone to a new one. I'm sorry. 
752. Son, it's all right. 753. Mother, don't worry. Mom loves you even if you're a fantasy redneck. 754. Son, I love you too. I have guests. They'll contact you again when I'm free. 755. Mother, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I need to go to kindergarten school, so it'll be busy. 756. Son, okay. 757. As always, my mom charged her son with the power of love. Hey hubby, are you okay? You look like you're about to cry. I'm fine. Don't worry. I was waiting for the hero and his dummies to appear. Honored guests. Take my love. Chapter, 297. Sometimes events didn't develop the way one imagined. The situation with the enemy golems was an example of this. Their thick limbs made their joints stronger, which should have increased their fighting power. But what transpired surpassed everyone's expectations. Bang! Bam! Boom! The android girl with slender limbs easily destroyed them. It was hard to believe what was happening, even though I watched it unfold with my own eyes. Why are the golems weaker than Boris? The cat kicked the tiger's asses. Boris didn't even cheat using powerful magic like cowardly anime girls. The conditions were equal. They were all at level 1 and fought using martial arts. All the conditions indicated that Boris was bound to be defeated. However, it was actually the opposite. Boris single-handedly destroyed Ritual's party. K.H. Aag. Pitch. With his slender figure, he defeated individuals far larger than him. The final victory was only a matter of time. It was Boris' moment of glory. Bang! Crack! Bam! The three powerful golems, which my junior called his secret weapons, quickly turned into heaps of scrap metal. They couldn't even fight back since their thick limbs couldn't withstand Boris' blows. Was the difference in their combat power really that great? This isn't as surprising as you think, cowardly hubby. How so? Think about it. What would happen if romantium chopsticks collided against steel pipes? Ah! Soja's example was easy to understand. Romantium versus Steel The legendary metal Romantium's strength depended on the power of love. On the other hand, the enemy golems were made of steel, a common metal found everywhere. They weren't even worth comparing. Boris' founding material made it pointless to discuss the thickness of the golem's limbs and the laws of physics. Stop 2D. Quick. Sir Hero. 2D is too strong. 2DS coming. The dummies Hero Ritual gathered for three years were eliminated in thirty minutes since they met the last Celestial Lord, preventing them from even reaching me. What the hell? They lied to me about the combat power of 2D, Lord of Steel Ugg. The hero, cursing those who gave him false information, was rendered unable to speak. Listen carefully, numbskull. My name is Boris, not 2D. I was the Dark Prince who ruled over the three stars of Andromeda. That is my real identity. I'm not a numbskull. My name is KKHKH. I'm by no means interested in the name of a loser. I'll forget about it once I regress anyway. Get your dirty hands off me. Crack. Boris committed a terrible crime against Hero Ritual. Oh, God. Oh no. My friend Boris. What have you done? He broke his neck not between his sixth and seventh vertebrae, where cervical hernia most often occurred, but between his fourth and fifth, which was essentially a meaningless place. In other words, he was telling him that he wasn't even worthy of herniated discs. That was an indelible disgrace. He was far more malevolent than the demon lord himself. If that's a disgrace, then what I feel every time I sleep with you is a real mockery. Hey! If anyone hears that, they might get the wrong idea. Besides, the last time we slept together was three years ago. That doesn't change my point. Listen to the max class righteous demon lord before you speak. I'm only mocking your pelvis. 
That's what I'm talking about. Those are completely different things. Like Mollen and Mullen. Mollen. Oh. Master Mollen. You decided to show yourself. Please impart words of wisdom to this stupid demon who can't seem to understand the difference between Mollen and Mullen, try as she might. Mollen. Mollen. Do you understand now, cowardly wife? No. Mollen just swayed from side to side as usual. That's the whole point. TSK TSK. You'll be able to understand it one day. When Rachel's neck was brutally broken, the world of fantasy began to crumble, and we immediately regressed. Everything from Lenovel to the Demon Lord's ruined castle returned to its original state. Additionally. Karma e Karma D. Since the director changed the rules, all of the hero's SS remained the same, but the rank of his karma increased. Type, S. Name, Karma. Rank, D. C. Credibility diminishes every regression. D. Favor diminishes every regression. E. Fame decreases every regression. F. Reputation decreases every regression. Favor, Fame, Reputation. Even if they decreased, they didn't affect the combat power. However, their fall discouraged the inhabitants of fantasy from cooperating, which was indispensable in the hero's adventures. I didn't ignore the hero, though. Ha ha ha. You dare call yourself a hero and even desire to challenge the demon lord Parmamon with such a weak spine? And you, Lenovel. Your pitiful pelvis huh? The unexpected event Demon Lord's incarnation welcomed Hero Ritual like the prologue of a game. Again. Don't tell me you didn't expect this. This event would continue to repeat itself. I wanted to relieve stress, but I didn't get a chance to fight because of Boris. It upset me. Sneaky Junior. I bestow upon you a blessing. Ha ha ha. I won't let you hit me so easily this time huh? I hadn't been fooling around for the past three years either. Having become accustomed to the body of the young aristocrat, I began to manage it more effectively. After jumping, I fired my knee into his lower jaw, tossing him into the air, then performed a combination that I learned from my dear comrade Noebius. Malin. 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 It was important to maintain a rhythm. Bang. Bang. Snap. I wasn't done yet. The most important part of it was to make sure he wouldn't fall to the ground and lose consciousness. X10 combo. Not bad. X20 combo. Good. X30 combo. Excellent. X40 combo. Ideal. Mullen phone was better than Earth smartphones. I wasn't a fantasy redneck. I would prove it to my mom tomorrow at 10 a.m. The Count's stupid son had gone mad. Has Demon Lord Parmamon really risen? The Count probably just didn't discipline his heir properly. Are you just going to watch this? If you don't intervene, the hero will die. The surprised nobles raised a fuss, and the royal knights drew their swords and rushed to help. Fshuck. 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 The Demon Lord's incarnation that had beaten hero ritual collapsed to the floor. This time, my wounds were fatal. Bad luck. The Dumpling King, seeing that the situation was resolved, finally spoke up. How could this happen in my domain? Hero. Hero, can you hear me? Uh, O-O-K-H-Y-S, Your Majesty. You are to blame for what happened since you've shown yourself to be weaker than my subject. Thank you, Your Majesty wait, what? Ka ka. Hero Ritual coughing up blood, was amazed by the Dumpling King's insolence. I will not spread rumors that the hero is weaker than the young aristocrat. However, in return, I command you to serve me for one year. This is insane. Did you say sewing, hero? Oh, no, your majesty. He humbly bowed his head, not wanting to spend ten years sitting in a dirty dungeon for insulting the king. The expression on the Dumpling King's face softened. Did he like the humility of the hero chosen by God? But if you are as weak as you are now, you will not be able to serve me properly. 
I shall write a letter of recommendation that would allow you to train with the sword god Alex. Thank you, your majesty. Ka ka ka. You may go. As you wish kh. Hero Ritchell left the throne room, muttering curses under his breath and spitting out his knocked out teeth. Lenovo looked at his back with anxiety on her face. She seemed to be already thinking of tapping out of this world. Sir Hero. I think you should undergo medical treatment first. Having caught up with him, Lenovo nevertheless decided to watch the hero a little longer. It's okay. Kh kh kh. Your condition might prove detrimental for your journey that will start in a year. In a year. You have the chance to learn from the sword god Alex himself, at least. However, there wasn't a shadow of joy on Ritchell's expression. He knew that Alex was already on the demon lord's side, after all. After a moment, however, Hero Ritchell smiled, lifting the edges of his swollen lips. Miss Lenovo is right. He he he. It didn't work out well, but it was worth it as the demon lord's incarnation has definitely died. His max class senior being unable to interfere with him anymore as I did in the 19th round seemed to satisfy my junior. It was quite an optimistic way of thinking. What happened to you, my cowardly husband? I thought you were going to harass his journey again with clever tricks. Why would I? His karma ranked up, but unless Riel is an idiot, he's better prepared to invade the demon lord's castle than he was before. Look. He's already taking action. As Soja said, Hero Ritual, leaving the throne room, didn't go to the wretched bedroom of the royal palace. Instead, he went out into the garden and shouted. Flying ship Orgat. Clap. He summoned the vehicle that I had taken away from him earlier. Its ownership was returned to him as soon as he regressed. I didn't resent him for it. I also used the black box to invoke the holy sword and divine from the very beginning of my journey. However, I wouldn't just sit idly by. My father-in-law was lazy and didn't progress over time. However, I, the max-class impartial demon lord, was completely different from him. The fight had to be fair. I will show you how broad-minded your husband truly is, Soja. What? You've got tricks up your sleeves again. Not tricks. Progress. I took out Molenphone A from the demon vault and pressed the button to send data out. Smartphones don't exist here, cowardly husband. Who are you even planning on contacting? Soja had a really good question. In contacting the manufacturer of Molenphone. It didn't matter how many times Hero Ritual regressed. The world of fantasy would continue to evolve further. Transferring data done. Unpacking done. Waiting for confirmation. Recipient, Shakespeare. Ah. Reading a message from my past yet also future self is a completely different experience. I've received a complete description of the situation, so I have no questions. Shakespeare, the connoisseur and de facto ruler of the Western continent, didn't seem surprised or shocked when he contacted me for the first time. It looked like the other Shakespeare got him up to speed quite well. Thanks to him, I was able to eliminate a lot of otherwise needed explanations. Lord of demons and hope, this world will obey your truth. My truth? I wasn't interested in such murky philosophical reasoning. The teachings of Grand Master Malin were all I needed. He was fair and just to all. As his disciple and first apostle, I became the max class impartial demon lord. Therefore, I wouldn't allow the only hero who could regress to become infinitely stronger. Shouldn't the fight be fair? Shakespeare, take control of the flying ship Orgat and turn over its ownership to me. Give me five seconds. In confiscating the private jet your parents bought you to attend primary school, my sneaky junior. Chapter, 298. This is just ridiculous. Sewing is really wrong with this place. Hero Ritual, whose flying ship was confiscated, sat in the garden of the royal palace with a desperate expression on his face. He had just started a new round, and his vehicle had already been stolen. He did nothing but cheat, and now he muttered complaints to himself that the world wasn't being fair to him. How pathetic. I don't think you have the right to say anything about cheating, hubby, 
considering you rushed to the demon lord's castle at level 1 and defeated my father in just one day. What's that got anything to do with this? Soja didn't seem to want to recognize the merits of her max class husband. The black box was perfectly legal. It was AS and job developed by my resentful senior, whose power was scattered throughout fantasy. However, it wasn't the black box that allowed me to win. Even if I didn't have it, I was strong enough to defeat my father-in-law at level 1. How? Thanks to Master Malin's teachings, I was able to harness the power of biology and develop my body. Aside from his dark energy, the previous demon lord couldn't do anything to oppose me. But you had problems with me. You distracted me with your cowardly chest. Even my holy sword bounced off of them. You should at least be aware of your cowardice. Don't make excuses for UAL harassment. Meanwhile, the adventure of Hero Ritual continued. Without his vessel this time. Breaking his promise to serve the Dumpling King for a year, he fled at night and headed north. Hero Ritual went to the Mercenary Guild first and invited Mercenary A again, nicknamed the Stormbringer, to join his party. He then continued on his way, setting up camp in the forest to avoid being found by his pursuers from the Dumpling Kingdom. Where was he going? I didn't have to wait long to find out. He headed to a secret place that even I didn't know about with my 100 years of experience. A cemetery. But it was no ordinary cemetery. It was of the Lanyaburk imperial family, the founders of the Holy Empire. Only the emperor and his immediate heirs could be buried in it. Of course, public access was strictly forbidden, and its security was so high grave robbers wouldn't even dare peek into it. Most powerful families, large or small, had such cemeteries. So I didn't pay much attention to them. However, as soon as Hero Ritual spilled his blood on the tombstone outside the cemetery, sowing strange happened. BR. It split vertically in two, with both pieces skidding to the side like a sliding door. But there was no secret staircase leading to a dungeon. Rather, it revealed a spatial gate, a resonant sky-blue vortex filled with white divinity mixed with blue magic. Sir Hero. I don't think we should enter that. It's all right, Lenovel. Don't worry. They'll just show the fools what a noble lineage is. Oh. Let's go inside. I didn't want to do this, but now I have completely lost interest in the world of fantasy. Is that so? For a moment, I doubted my eyes. What happened to Lenovo? Her expression suddenly darkened, losing his falsified cuteness. Hero Ritual didn't seem to notice the changes in her behavior, but not me, who had spent many years next to her. She was acting strange. And in what form does her strangeness manifest in, hubby? Watch closely. Lenovo's no longer swinging her pelvis from side to side, as she usually does when entering any dungeon. You are so pathetic. That just means you're constantly staring at that beautiful girl's buttocks whenever you enter a dungeon. I only noticed it because it annoyed me. I wouldn't deny that I had an unrequited love for Lenovo in the first days of my first round when everything seemed scary and unfamiliar. I relied on her at least until I realized that she deliberately stepped on traps or chose the most difficult path to complicate my adventure. F.S. Hitch. Hero Ritual, Mercenary A, and Lenovo entered the dimensional gate while Soja despised her Max class husband. And they were gone. I could use Shadow as honorary teacher status to secretly oversee all students. However, there seems to be sewing wrong, my asses of beautiful girls loving hubby. I love pelvic bones, not butts. Anyway, I noticed that too. Ritual disappeared from the surveillance system. My junior, whom I could spy on until quite recently, completely disappeared from my radar. How did that happen? I wanted to consult with Soja, the system developer, but... Stop saying such strange things. Strange? My pride was hurt. Soja, I tried not to talk about it, but to avoid such misunderstandings, I have to confess. Your hip bones are the best. Of the countless pelvic bones I examined, she had the most beautiful. Huh. I, I don't want to hear anything. Idiot. He he he. My niece is so cute when she blushes. Auntie, 
I hate. I rose from the demon lord's throne, interrupting Soja's excuses. It was time to survey the Lanyaburk family cemetery with my own eyes. It was possible to fly there using my wings, but I decided to use flying ship Orgat instead. For the sake of fairness. Since I went on a business trip to the north of the central continent for no reason, it would only be fair to send the rest of my copies there to not violate the overall scenario. However, whenever a new variable intervened, history changed. Introduction, the hero summoned a flying ship. Main body, the demon lord confiscated the flying ship. Conclusion, the demon lord boarded the flying ship. Ritual summoned a flying ship, so demon lord Parmamon decided to respond. In other words, I didn't violate the principle of fairness. The reason behind my actions was my dastardly junior's movements. Admiration, you are simply amazing. You make even that interpretation possible. One must be able to adapt to any situation, trainee teacher. Even the faculty members, who were always prejudiced against me, wouldn't be able to say anything against it. Welcome aboard, Captain. Please set the course. If another hero summoned a flying ship, my copy would also have to act the same way I did for the sake of the principle of justice. However, except for my little junior ritual, whom his parents provided well for, all heroes began their adventures empty-handed. So there was no problem with that. The holy empire of the central continent is the country founded by the descendants of God, right? Knowing the secret of the royal family, Ritual opened a secret gate with his blood. Are you trying to say that my aunt's the founder of the Lanyaburk family? Are you coming with me? My cowardly wife boarded Orgat. If I don't go with you, you'll think that I stayed because I felt ashamed. I want to understand your affection towards pelvic bones. My niece. Don't take this the wrong way. I had enough of their tongue twisting. Since when did my cowardly wife act like a cute character? A flashback of the first round suddenly came to mind. We were aboard the flying ship Lorita, borrowed from the Guardian of the Northern Continent. And we were breaking through the blizzard towards the hideout of one of the five great disasters, the Snow Queen Elsh. Delight, it must have been very romantic. The cold was fierce, trainee teacher, who has a warm heart and soul. And the day turned out to be strange. I fell in love with the sword princess, who criticized me for ing the ice princess that fled and caused suffering to the villagers. Hence, that time, I mustered up the courage and called her on Lorita's deck to confess my love. It was a very dark night. The sky didn't have even a single star. Anticipation, how did it go? Walking on the deck covered with a thin layer of ice, the sword princess slipped and fell overboard somewhere in the snow. Embarrassment, bad luck. Yeah. I never imagined that the woman called the strongest knight of fantasy would fall so ridiculously. Rescue operation. I didn't want my companions to start blaming me again, so I didn't tell anyone about it and went to bed. I thought she froze to death, but the sword princess later turned out alive and stayed in my squad until the very end of my first round. Needless to say, our relationship was very tense. And you had a son from such a woman? I didn't answer Soja's jealous-filled question. It was the best move I could take back then. The northern continent, ruled by a sweet three-year-old emperor, needed a successor. Even now, I don't regret my choice. Why the sword princess? Because the nurse who gave birth to me was her childhood friend, and she trusted her. There was no other reason. Captain. You have arrived at your destination. Landing. Flying ship Orgat, which used to be a public transport for young angels, was very fast. In the time it took to fly from south to north of the central continent, I would have only had time to satisfy Soja three times. Did you actually do the math? No. Didn't she know what an analogy was? All I meant was that we arrived at our destination in no time. I I know that. You are as cute as ever today, my niece. Please be quiet, auntie. Just for today. He he he. And don't laugh with that expression on your face. You're my niece, so you can openly confess to me. Confess what? Your obscenities. What? I ignored their argument and looked at the tombstone. 
However, there was a noise around me that prevented me from concentrating. It's a divine ship. Ah! Oh my God! God herself has descended upon us. The flying ship Orgat was enormous. It was a five-masted sailboat, making it hard to miss. The people of the Holy Empire were amazed to see it come to a stop at the cemetery's flatlands. This is the descent of God. There was some truth in this. The demon lord was also a deity, and my power made up half of the world of fantasy. I wanted to tell them immediately about the greatness of Master Malin, but at the moment, I was busy with my dastardly junior. However, I couldn't just ignore the crowd of onlookers since I didn't want my identity to be revealed. Someone had to go out to them and distract them. A good idea came to my mind. Clap. You called, Master. She was reborn as a spirit with a cloaca, but she still looked like a beautiful goddess. Rice cake. The main face of the festival of heroes. The pinnacle of beauty. No resident would doubt her nobility and holiness. I apologize for asking you to do this immediately after summoning you, but please go out to the people and tell them about Malin's teachings. Please leave it to me. Unlike the first spirit, whose facial expressions and speech was deplorable, Rice Cake, who used to be Saintus H, was the perfect goddess in every way. Ah! Oh! God! Everyone who saw her hovering in the air prostrated themselves before her, which was quite natural for the citizens of the Holy Empire, who considered themselves the people of God. And at this moment, Fashu, the hero ritual, Lenovel, and mercenary A jumped out from the sky blue spatial gate of the newly opened tombstone. Everything was different about them now, however. Their level and SS had increased significantly, and their equipment was much better than before. Hmm. What the hell? The Holy Sword C hung on Hero Ritual's belt. As far as I remembered, it contained the soul of the former hero. And it had the function of changing its shape and size. I didn't use it because I was pissed off by the instructions of the soul within, but it seemed to be useful for those who felt lonely. Its name was different now, however. Malinrod, the Holy Sword of Mermaids. That wasn't the problem, though. There were five holy swords in total in the fifth curriculum, each hidden on one of the five continents. The current holy sword C, as in the fourth curriculum, was located on the northern continent. But he got hold of this holy sword from a tomb on the central continent. Was it just me, or was the smell of corruption running rampant? Just as I was surprised by his new weapon, Hero Ritual was surprised when he looked in my direction, bewildered by the fact that his lost vehicle now belonged to the Max class impartial demon lord. That was as expected. Except. Hey, where do you think you're looking at? My dastardly junior didn't even glance at his distinguished senior. His gaze was fixed on someone else. Grandma. His eyes were on my personal heating pad, who was busily preaching about Malin's teachings. Chapter, 299. Grandma. Hero Ritual was the director's grandson. Therefore, there was only one entity whom he would call that. The first angel, also known as the fantasy system operator and the director, flunked the max class student due to her discriminative notions. What about Saintus H? Correction, her name is Hippolia. She directed the Festival of Heroes and had been devoting herself to me for almost ninety years. I wouldn't be able to find someone more loyal. I might not trust my wife despite her beautiful pelvic bones, but I would always trust Saintus H. The proof of her loyalty was the eighth round. When I died and was reborn, she protected the nurse that conceived me. That's just ridiculous. If she really were the first angel, she would have gotten rid of me long ago. There was other evidence as well. Hey, Soja, tell me what your aunt looks like. She looks very different from her, if that's what you mean. I see. How exactly were they different? Well, for one thing, her waist is bigger than her breasts. Aha! I felt like rejoicing. I already firmly believed in her from the very beginning, but now at least now, it has become undeniable that my first heating pad couldn't be the evil director. The first spirit, lying on my head, voiced her own opinion as well. 
I've always wondered how she can fly since whenever she does, she looks like a huge peach with wings. Hee <laughs> hee. An obese angel. I couldn't even believe it. Although the angels were stupid chickens, their beauty was flawless. It was hard to believe their leader would have a body that made it difficult even to fly with. It's true, drug demon lord. Hmm. Trust me. She's as round as a ball and can do nothing on her own if no one takes care of her. She's a spirit of light, but all she does is eat and sleep all day long. Her face has become so swollen that it's become impossible to say with certainty whether her eyes are open or closed. He he he. Is that so? Unlike the director they described, my personal heating pad was beautiful both inside and out. She was a real work of art. Eyes, nose, mouth, arms, feet, chest, waist, cervical vertebrae, pelvis, skull, lumbar vertebrae. Her beauty seemed to have been carefully created by respective masters at every single detail. It was rude to compare the face of the Festival of Heroes with the director. Their personalities are also completely different, added Soja. The first spirit agreed with her. As my niece said, whenever she speaks, she only complains about the world around her. And when she's quiet, she only did what she could do while laying down, like giving orders to the angels with just hand gestures. Addicted spirit. What? You're just like her. She didn't complain about the world, but she lay on my head all day, sniffing at me and giving orders to the spirits. I didn't know how her limbs and wings hadn't yet degraded, as in the case of her cloaca. That's because I love my children. I lays around to ensure they'll have jobs and responsibilities that allow them to realize the meaning of their existence. I don't want to deprive them of their work and the meaning of life. I am definitely different from the first angel. You sound pathetic, auntie. Torment my niece's ass for not respecting her aunt, drug demon lord. I understood what they were trying to say, though. My hard-working rice cake and this institution's lazy director couldn't be the same person. I looked back at the Festival of Heroes. After graduating from elementary school with excellent grades and changing my specialization from hero to a saint, I entered the great temple to collect the treasures. Glittering eyes, I remember that too. My secret friend's help was invaluable. As a saint, I had to cleanse the followers of the demons locked up behind bars. In the end, thanks to those prisoners' support, I was able to corrupt Saintus H. We spent a lot of time touching each other's spines while the golems guarding the great temple watched us. I still hadn't forgotten how I felt back then. If she really were the school director, she wouldn't have let me grab her by her pelvis. The system also said that she was assigned to her role at the Festival of Heroes. Grandma. However, Hero Ritual didn't give up. I'm not your grandmother. Saintus H always had a gentle smile on her face, but it seemed that even she found it difficult to ignore his rudeness. Her smile faded. I must show kindness to heroes, no matter how rude they are. And I would like to keep true to that responsibility, but. I cannot forgive you for trying to embroil my owner and me. I'm sorry, Grandma, but I can't take it anymore. I can't be in this stupid place anymore. You. I'm sorry for inadvertently revealing your identity, but this is becoming unbearable. I'm about to go crazy. These stupid study guides and incompetent teachers have worn me out. Let me out of here. Their conversation failed. Regardless of what she answered him, Hero Ritual continued to bend her identity. Hmm. It seemed I had no choice but to intervene. I grabbed him by the neck as he kept shouting for her to let him leave this place. Hey, Junior. Kh kh kh. Stop it. Even if you're right, she's still my property. She even reincarnated into a spirit with a cloaca to become mine. The price she had to pay is so high that it still makes tears well up in our eyes. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here, chicken head? Kh. Keep your answers short. Kh. Well done. The system goddess, who looked like Soja in her youth, said that Saintus H, appointed to run the Festival of Heroes, belonged to the system. Essentially, she was a puppet that could be taken control of at any time. 
It bothered me, so I reincarnated her into a spirit to separate her from the system, thereby eliminating such a dangerous variable. That rendered what he thought of her obsolete. Phew. My daring Durank Jr. soon unsheathed his holy sword C and attacked me, his Max Class Senior. How cute. Swish. The wings of the righteous hero, sticking out of my back, parried the hero's weapon with so much power that it flew from his hands. Clap. However, from the gem imbued on its hilt, a woman in armor resembling a bikini emerged. Ha! She grabbed Holy Sword C and swung it at me as she screamed. Race, Sword Soul. Level, 7. Job, Hero Experience, 500%. SS, Interpretation A, Friendship A, Oblivion B, Travel B, Sword Mastery B. Status, Affiliation, Appeal. I immediately knew who she was the moment I checked her stats. Golem D. A foolish predecessor of mine who fought to the death alone for the sake of saving her useless companions. She was such a stupid soul she even tried to mentor her Max Class Junior based on her idiotic experiences. Her existence aside, the Holy Sword C that I knew didn't have such a convenient summoning function. Boom. However, her swordsmanship left her with a lot to be desired. Ha. Huh. It didn't impress me since I had achieved max rank many times. Nevertheless, my curiosity grew. I want to see what happens when you return to the Holy Sword without bones. What? Please spare me, Demon Lord. Don't worry. It'll be careful. Snap. My body, which was as impenetrable as a fortress, swayed like a leaf in the wind, and my sacred finger, which conquered even the first spirit and the second demon, was broken. Holy Sword C wasn't capable of such feats. I quickly understood what happened. Race, United Spirit of Fantasy. Job, Demon Lord Hero Level. SS, Dark Energy Z, Sword Mastery SS, Strength SS, Resistance SS, Evasion SS. Condition, Demon Sword, Blessing, Empowerment, Amulet, Engraving, Ascension, Fortify, Inspire, Haste, Luck, Protection. Superiority, Charge, Backup, Guardian, Synergy, Fracture, Restraint, Weakness, Paralysis, Confusion, Broken. My clone's level had plummeted. For me, trained by the great Master Malin, SS were just a bonus, but everything was relative. Demon Lord Parmamon. There is nothing else you can do. Shouted Hero Ritual, escaping from my grasp. Where was his confidence coming from? Race, Half Angel. Level, 999. SS, Divinity ZZ, Annihilation Z, Slaughter Z, Dexterity Max, Combat SS. Status, Holy Sword, Blessing, Enhancement, Engraving, Protection. His Level. As the Demon Lord, I suffered from a handicap that reduced my level to match the heroes. If there were two heroes in front of me, my level would apparently follow the weakest one. Brave fairly lowered everyone around the user to level 1. But with two heroes, one of which was weaker, fairness was out of the question. Since I naturally adjusted my level to equal the lowest of the two, they probably thought they could make a punching bag out of me. That was how I ended up in this position and why my sneaky junior was filled with so much confidence. He weakened the demon lord while retaining his strength. Demon lord. It's time to end this. Hero Ritual was confident of his victory. His expression told me he was excited to defeat the weakened demon lord and return to his beautiful hometown. I liked his determination. However. You're too arrogant. I worked non-stop with pitiful companions who prevented me from graduating from this school for an entire decade. I had overcome far more difficult situations than this before. This predicament wasn't even worth being compared to what I had to go through in the past. Pip. It was time to show the greatness of the Molenphone. Shakespeare. Ha. Two seconds. Flash. A ray of light from the sky over the western continent hit Hero Ritual directly. Levels did not matter against the G-Class Connoisseur. In just zero. One seconds, Ritual turned into a fried chicken. Hey, Junior, let's have a chat. 
Ugh. I had a lot of questions about the relationship between the director and the Lanyaburk family. I wouldn't give up until her grandson had given me all the information he had. Principle of fairness. Impartiality. My actions wouldn't violate them. Fairness was broken the moment he got hold of the Holy Sword Sea at the Central Continent, which should have been stored on the Northern Continent. He brought this upon himself. It was simply time for him to pay the price. Can you let my grandson go, Demon Lord Parmamon no, Cadet Kong Han Su? When I grabbed the chicken by his neck, I heard a familiar voice call out to me from behind. Her tone was different, however. This couldn't be. Seriously? I turned around slowly. It's nice to meet you know, we meet again. An angel with three pairs of snow-white wings looked at me from the heavens above. I couldn't believe it. How? Aren't you too arrogant to inherit Pednar's power? You're still too inexperienced compared to me. I have a question. I'm listening. Do you really enjoy showing off your uncovered crotch that much? You don't have a cloaca anymore. You know that, right? H. Huh? Answer me. Close your eyes. Despite her attempts to appear noble and elegant, the director ruined her chance to leave a good first impression. Chapter 300 FSH As if changing the outfit of a game character, typical angelic rags appeared in the blink of an eye and covered her body, albeit only a small part of it. Her divinity was overflowing. Reading your mind makes me feel like I'm being eulally harassed. So don't read it. She shouldn't pretend to be noble either. The director just called a student in. Her identity was questionable. What do you mean? Im but a friendly director enforcing the school rules. To that end, all I did was reprimand a student for insolently looking up a lattice skirt. Im also an understanding and compassionate leader, though, so I will forgive you just this once. Grandma. Riel, you little. Keep your mouth shut while I'm still talking. Hero Ritual immediately fell silent. The director smiled brightly again. Ho ho. I am kind to students and strict with my family members. I'm apparently a member of your family, then. Are you insane? Don't you even dare say that ahem. Kong Han Su is such a comedian. Ho ho ho. She tried to keep a smile on her lips as she landed, wiping the cold sweat from her forehead with the back of her hand. I never took my eyes off her as she descended. There were many ways to occupy someone else's body. Possession, adventuring, incarnation, reincarnation, usurpation, introduction, fusion, coexistence. What happened to rice cake, then? I couldn't verify it in any way, so I looked around, wanting to hear the excuses of the first spirit and my cowardly wife, both of whom knew the director well. I gave them time to defend themselves. I haven't seen my aunt in such a long time, but I won't tell you how long exactly to avoid revealing my age. I'm in the same boat as my niece. Was that all? Go on. Yes, yes. I just never imagined that my aunt, who insisted that women personify the wealth of a family, would look very different. It's not my fault. That's right. If you have a conscience, show us how you really look, boo. The director shuddered when she heard criticism from her niece and friend. But she didn't back down. Are you two accusing me of sewing that happened in the distant past? At that time, women who ate well and had large forms were called beauties. Now, I have become the symbol of poverty and hunger. What a pitiful excuse, auntie. Shameless. If it didn't lead to complications such as hypertension, hyperglycemia, leukemia, infertility, arthritis, shortness of breath, cholelithiasis, fatty liver disease, apnea, rhinitis, asthma, arteriosclerosis, stroke, arrhythmia, angina pectoris, myocardial infarction, snoring, and hyperlipidemia, I would have retained my previous beauty. Hey, auntie. You do know that you don't sound convincing at all, right? I feel so sorry for you that my tears are already welling up. TSK. The director, being pressured by her niece and friend, blushed. Her grandson, Hero Ritual, was silent, 
but the expression on his face was enough to tell me what he was thinking. This is the first time I've seen my grandma being embarrassed by others. I now roughly understood what truly happened. I secretly hoped it wasn't, but the reality was brutal. Puppet. Rice Cake was the director's avatar. There was a reason why the first spirit and the second demon didn't recognize her. It didn't matter how beautiful she was if her bones ended up hidden under layers of fat anyway. Embarrassment, recognize her by bones? Not flesh. You heard that right, trainee teacher. As far as beauty was concerned, one's collarbone and pelvic bones should be clearly visible. That aside. What options did I have left? If she was the director's avatar, then there was nothing I could do. A puppet was a puppet. That's right, Cadet Kong Han Su. Saintus Hippolia, whom you call Rice Cake, is my puppet. The students never noticed, but I've always been with them, conducting the Festival of Heroes, even though I'm the school director. Hmm. Sports events and festivals in schools began with the opening speech of the director and principal. Did you know about this, trainee teacher? Denial, no. I'm a trainee. I always hung my head down in front of my seniors, so I haven't had many opportunities to see their faces. I saw a framed photograph in front of the director's office, but I think it was a photograph taken in the distant past. She seemed to have many regrets about the past since she hadn't changed her photo in quite a long time. Why? I was really curious. That's a very good question, Cadet Kong Han Su. It leads us to the heart of the matter. I love that you've taken an interest without throwing accusations like my friend and niece. Enough nonsense. Get to the point. Watch your tongue, mother or ho ho. Beauty is relative. Just like how rare stones are classified as precious stones, its formula is no different. Beauty is comparable to rarity. I see. I thought I knew why the director was obsessed with the past. In the old days on earth, when people found it difficult to gain weight due to poverty and problems with obtaining food, chubby women had their advantage. The fantasy world was similar. The average woman here looked so gorgeous that their SS had become part of the criteria that assessed their beauty. Charm, nobility, dignity, divinity, innocence, seduction, sociability, mating, lust. Those were human standards, however. It was different for angels, a race already born with SS. You seem to understand. No. Angels didn't put on excess weight because their SS always adjusted their figure and appearance. But the first angel mistook her obesity for beauty because it was rare. It was really funny. Funny? My niece and friend criticizing me for being different from my past body is what's funny. Enough of this. Isn't it time to solve another problem of ours? Disciple Kong Han Su, let my grandson Riel go and retreat. And if I refuse? She was greatly mistaken if she thought I couldn't harm her because she was using rice cake's body. Never obey your enemies. That motto helped me survive my first round. Since then, nothing had changed. Race, first angel. Level, 999. Job, Goddess Demon Lord Level. SS, Divinity G, Haste ZZ, Slow ZZ, Flying ZZ, Infinity Z. Status, Blessing, Protection, Divine Dragon, Management, Director. Her stats were as vile as this whole system. Her goddess profession automatically raised her to a level higher than that of the Demon Lord. But it didn't matter. I had no intention of beating the Director with Fantasy SS from the beginning. PSS. I would deal with her with my own power. Disciple Kong Han Su, you seem to have forgotten. I am the first angel. Just as you control space, I control time. I know. No, you don't know anything. Have you ever noticed that the baby dragon you named Green Cake is growing too fast? To be honest, yes. However, I thought it was because of Rice Cake, who raised and educated him. But that wasn't all. Although he belonged to the fantasy dimension and not the festival of heroes, Green Cake didn't disappear even after regression. It was a phenomenon that was initially impossible. But the director's intervention explained it all. 
Your adopted son, green cake. Bang! Concentrating demonic power in my right hand, I threw a punch at the director. Wah! Bending down due to the blow that landed on her stomach, she spat out blood. The damage it caused wasn't as huge as I hoped, though. She managed to slow down my attack speed to soften the impact. Even so, it still turned out well. My surprise attack was successful. Before she spoke, she should have known that playing hostage wouldn't work against me. In my first round, that was the most common cause of death for my companions. Without hesitations, I threw away my companions that became hostages because of their audacity to act alone. I didn't mind if they died since I always made sure to avenge them. As the true hero, I brutally exterminated enemies who hid behind hostages and neglected their defenses out of their belief that I would surrender. That's not what a hero is. Speak for yourself. It might seem like we entered a truce after my surprise attack since we were having leisurely conversations, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Who? Time had slowed down a lot, after all. My attacks could no longer even reach her body. But I wasn't too bothered by it. TSK. You separated space. Yup. You can't leave this place without my permission anymore. However, her subjugation wasn't eternal. The demon vault we were trapped in was shrinking ever so slowly because of the director's time manipulation. What was she saying about me not knowing her power over time again? Einstein's theory of relativity was one of the basic knowledge of high school students living on Earth. I was prepared against her. And he got caught. He he he. I knew the drug demon lord could handle her. My cowardly wife and the pitiful spirit reacted differently. To me, however, it was obvious. The max class righteous demon lord had won this battle. Disciple Kong Han Su. Surrender. I admit. Thinking that you were inexperienced was a mistake. No negotiations. Don't you want to go home? He'll do that once I'm finished with you. No. It will be too late by then. Woo. I felt the first angel exert pressure against my space. However, the cracks caused by the acceleration or deceleration of time couldn't create any holes. Do you still believe that you can escape from here? Of course. If it keeps going like this, you'll definitely eventually win. I can't fight, after all. Will your family still be alive by then, though? Your bullshit won't work against me. The demon vault was completely cut off from the outside world. Of course, that meant there was no communication either. The director wouldn't be able to instruct anyone to harm my family on earth. How dare you assume that I, the director, will try to harm a student's family? I'm surprised it even occurred to you in the first place. Your words, not mine. You misunderstood me. I mean, by the time you get out of here, your family members will have grown old and returned to nature. Hmm. What nonsense was she talking about? Time is relative. While I am explaining this, three decades have already passed in the dimension of fantasy. On your home planet, that's three years, right? TSK. It didn't sound like a lie. The first hero had done this to me once before. Now that she was in my trap, she could no longer influence the outside world, but she could still freely manipulate time within this space. Hence, it was theoretically possible. Forty years now. We can take our time negotiating, but you'd better hurry. Five years on Earth have passed now. I closed my eyes. And thought about my family. My mother, my father. My mother again oh. I almost forgot about my younger brother, who took away my mother's love and attention. I was prepared. Keep going. Years, decades, centuries, millenniums, eons. Do what you want. You're not getting out of here. Even if it's at the cost of losing sewing of value, he'll at least be protecting sewing far more valuable. You. So what are we going to talk about next? Oh. Do you like spines? Rice cake loved it when I rubbed her back between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. Looking back now, I think she wanted to please my tastes. What does your actual body think about it, though? Ah, uh, 
You. Ha. How inappropriate. Isn't this the kind of hero you've been dreaming of? What? A selfless hero. Im right, aren't I? Even if a hero had to give up their own happiness, they should never suck to evil. I got it now. Chapter, 301. You. What the hell do you know about the education system? Fshuck. 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 Enraged, the director randomly shot beams of divine light at me. She slowed down my body and accelerated her beams of light, disabling me from avoiding her attacks. But I could still defend myself. Bang. 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 The light beams were intercepted by dark matter and were completely absorbed. The first angel was right in front of me, giving her an array of other means to attack, but she didn't dare approach me and instead kept a safe distance, which ultimately led to her limiting herself. How boring. I felt like yawning. Although my movements were sluggish, I didn't need time to defend myself. Sped up at least 100 times, or slowed down at least 100 times. I didn't know if her attacks were faster than my cognitive abilities, but from that distance, she certainly wouldn't be able to hurt me. I fended off her onslaught over and over again. It might seem strange, but I understood why this was happening. No one in the fantasy dimension could fight toe-to-toe -to -toe against the all-powerful director. And no one really had any reason to. She was also the first angel, ruler of the entire race of angels, who were always ready to fight for her. This was the result. She was like a newcomer who didn't even know how to fight. No, she really was a rookie. Well, isn't this just funny? You still dare call yourself a hero even after calling me a newcomer and taking pleasure from it? Don't confuse the concepts. Right now, the evil that I needed to defeat was right before me. Love, friendship, sacrifice, loyalty, weakness. If I compromised and decided to forgive the enemy for any reason, I could no longer be called a hero. I would just be a powerful criminal like her. How dare you? Ha ha ha. Come on. Stimulate my spine. Simplify the calculation with compound interest. This is so exciting. Continue. Keep going. Hey. What are you doing? Do sewing already. Let's resolve our differences through conversation. How? What did this suddenly come up with? So far, only 80 years have passed. If we stop now and get rid of our past grievances, we'll be able to reach an ending where everyone can be happy. There's no such path. There is. No, and I'm certain of it. Those who had sucked to force couldn't sincerely desire reconciliation and coexistence. As soon as they gained strength, they would immediately stab them in the back. I was even willing to argue about it. How can you be so sure of that? Because I've done it before. What? I've done it before. I knew I wouldn't be able to immediately cope with companions who would abuse me the moment we met, so I did nothing but develop my power for ten years. At that point, I hit the jackpot. Ironically, it turned out they were hatching the same idea. They were going to get rid of me while I was exhausted after defeating Demon Lord Pedinar. Funny, isn't it? Well, that's. There's no room for compromise, Director. Hence, we need to fight to the end. That way, we won't regret anything. Or do you want to surrender? Don't look down on me. I was just trying to avoid sacrifices. But keep this in mind. Since you forced me to do so anyway, there will be no mercy for you in the future. Ha! Huh. That's the spirit. Laugh while you can. Green Cake. SKR. When the giant green creature appeared, the shrinking demon vault creaked. The dragon who became my adopted son appeared. Grar. Roared Green Cake, who seemed much stronger than before. The space around us wasn't destroyed, but the speed of its compression was significantly reduced. The reason was simple. Race, Green Chaos Dragon. Level, 999. Job, Brave Everyone Level 1. SS, Chaos G, Divinity G, Vitality G,
Dark Energy G, Dragon Scale ZZ, Large Size ZZ, Acceleration ZZ, Slowdown ZZ, Magic ZZ, Love ZZ, Flying ZZ, Friendship ZZ, Hope ZZ. Luck ZZ, Giftedness ZZ, Genius ZZ, Versatility ZZ, Magic Power ZZ, Immunity ZZ, Witchcraft ZZ, Politics ZZ, Society ZZ, Literature ZZ, Friendship ZZ, Diplomacy ZZ, Z. Status, Submission, Brainwashed, Obsessed, Empowered, Unique. His stats were absurd. Among them, the most annoying were his brave job and his black box S. In particular, the latter. Type, S. Name. Rank, Z. ZZ. Z, record the target. SS, change. SS, reproduce. S, record. A, confuse the target. B, destroy the target. C, make the target forget. D, will never become confused. E, cannot ever be destroyed. F, you will not forget. I ditched my SS rank black box and went my own way. To my surprise, Green Cakes S was upgraded to Z rank without my knowledge. It was probably because of one of the director's tricks. Ho ho. Surprised? Yes. I was genuinely surprised. Black Box was a buggy S that the first hero used to fight the system. I didn't think the system operator would use it herself. It isn't a system bug. What is it, then? Contrary to what you think, the first hero didn't create this S. He's simply the only one who's been authorized to use this power. Authorized? Was she saying that it was her who created the black box? Unfortunately, I wasn't the one who gave him the authorization. If it had been my power, I wouldn't be having this debilitating confrontation with you right now, would I? Sure. The brave job and the black box S could destroy system rules and balance. I was personally convinced of this. Based on this, I concluded that their creator had to be on the same level or higher than the first angel and the first demon, the creators of this system. So who was it? Some reckless demon god. The most impatient creature in the universe. Demon god. Was there someone else besides me? The director explained it to me without hesitation. He's a deity who raised heroes using any means and ODs, which were often so reckless that they began to call him a demon. Nevertheless, his power cannot be ignored. Gra. Green Cake's paw fell vertically on my head as he roared. SKR. His claws collided with dark matter and immediately tore through it. Of course it's the black box. Although my wings saved me, the demon lord's power, which was considered absolute, was broken. This was becoming a little annoying. Ho ho. Green Cake is a unique dragon. In his veins courses the blood of Noebius, the strongest dragon, and Erdanti, the first saintess. While he was growing, you and I also endowed him with our own powers. Technically speaking, he has four extremely strong parents. Were you aiming for this from the very beginning? Not really, no. He's a product resulting from a chain of coincidences. If he couldn't resist regression thanks to the black box you inherited, he wouldn't have grown so strong. All I did was hasten this beautiful child's growth. You feel sorry for having to sacrifice him without being able to raise him further. Yes. Green Cake has such an excellent bloodline and even has the impatient demon god support. Even his personality perfectly embodies what a true hero should be. A pet that is devoted only to you. I snapped my finger. TCK. The dark matter hovering around me began to envelop Green Cake. It was impossible to avoid it or defend himself from it. Regardless of his size, he couldn't be larger than the world he lived in. Gra. Katich. I was going to crush him in an instant without causing unnecessary pain, but defeating him proved difficult. Was my heart wavering? I couldn't deny it. His growth would have made him into someone so incredible head surpass everyone's expectations. It pained me that I wouldn't be able to see him grow. I'm sorry. P.S. Dark matter completely devoured my son. Not long after. 
Gra. A deafening roar thundered through my space as my dark matter began to burst. Skr. He managed to resist thanks to his life force, and even though he couldn't escape, he caused a crack in the demon vault. He was a truly absurd adopted son. Ah. I hastily checked the director's location. Tisk. Too late. The director had ripped off one of her wings but not to inflict senseless. Boom. The first angel impaled her bloodied wing into the microscopic crack in space. SHT. I cursed as she used her own body part to widen the crack, which would allow her to escape. For the goddess. Defeat the demon lord. Break it faster. We don't have much time. Countless angels flew in immediately. I could easily destroy them, but then I wouldn't be able to maintain the demon vault. There was only one thing I could do now. Come. Wah. A cute baby appeared, crushing many angels. Captain Fantasy. The resulting chaos caused the demon vault to shake dangerously, but now wasn't the time to pay attention to it. Hey. Why don't you two help as well? I called out to my cowardly wife and the pitiful spirit. I can't really help since the space has been cut off, but I'll at least pretend that I am. What are you talking about? I'm serious. I'm not lying. Soja, spreading her ethereal purple wings, flew toward the director. Her flight speed was too slow, however, due to her aunt's ability to manipulate time. She definitely wouldn't be able to help me. What about you? It's finally my turn. Can I count on you? First spirit. She wore one of my paired rings, which copied the strength of whoever was wearing the other. It was time to finally put the true power of these rings to good use. Trust me, drug demon lord. Just go already. Ha! Malin power. Sewing's wrong. Why didn't it work? Because it's not AS. Controlling dark matter was more of a technique than AS. Master Malin. Father-in-law Pedinar. This technique couldn't be without having a high understanding of the teachings received from those two beings. And what's even worse? Skr. No. The ring that the first spirit wore on her thigh was shattered. I warned you, didn't I? From this moment on, I'm ready to make sacrifices. Ka ka ka. It was the director's doing. I didn't know how she did it, but she coughed up blood after destroying the item I received as a reward. Hmm. Stop fooling around in the sky, cowardly wife. Come down here and explain. Oh. Soja returned to me and picked up the shattered ring. What happened to the director? Ex officio abuse. She paid for the destruction of another teacher's property. Employees of the Fantasy Institution are members of the Malin Union, the fairest union in the universe. Once you join, it will no longer matter if you are a dictator or a major shareholder. Malin Union will punish you for any violations you commit. That is indeed fair. Was there any limit to Master Malin's greatness? Ka ka ka. Oh. So, Director. How exactly will you be punished? I was curious. What makes you think he'll tell you? Ka ka ka. I can see you're not feeling well at all, at least. Victory will still be mine. The angels who darted back and forth to avoid Captain Fantasy's attacks finally made a hole in my space. That wasn't all. Father, I'm sorry. Race, Green Chaos Dragonian. SS, Chaos G, Divinity G, Vitality G, Dark Energy G, Dragon Scale ZZ. Status, Submission, Transformation, Wounded, Fractured, Weakened. Green Cake escaped the captivity of my dark matter by transforming into his Dragonian form. Brainwashed and obsessed had disappeared from his status. However, the submission remained in effect. The director said approvingly. Ho ho. Well done, my dear son Green Cake. Rest until your wounds are healed. You're not my mother. Clap. She forcibly de-summoned him, causing him to disappear. It was the worst development of events possible. It seemed it would take a little longer to get paid with compound interest. 
Ho ho ho. This will be our first and last meeting. You better be ready, master. Are you deaf? I said you better be ready, master hm. Say it again. Kong Han KH Master. What's happening? Why am I calling him master? Get out of my head. Be gone. You're just a puppet. Rice cake. Yes, master enough. How dare you? I am the first angel, Hippolia A.A. The director grabbed her head with both hands and began to scream. It didn't look like she was trying to trick me. If so. This is my chance. Wah. Captain Fantasy and I jumped towards the director almost simultaneously. Stop them. Protect Mistress Parmiel. Get out of my way. Well defend her. Countless angels stood before us and recklessly struggled. But it wasn't pointless. Tisk. Having lost her mind, the director fled from their support, leaving behind mountains upon mountains of her kind's corpses. The terrible sight didn't last long, however. Exactly ten seconds later, the world of fantasy collapsed due to the death of the director's grandson. And everything began anew. Chapter, 302 Born amid the darkness of the universe, I had no purpose in life. I merely drifted through space and counted the beautifully twinkling stars. But nothing lasts forever. Naya ha ha ha. Give it back give me back my panties if you don't. What's that? I can't hear anything. Retribution. Oogie ha ha. A pink pillow hit the cheeky guy holding sky blue panties in his hands. But what was happening didn't amuse me at all. Because in the place where the pink pillow landed, there was nothing left. No light, no darkness nothing. Except for one creature. Are you alive? Yes, I'm fine. This often happens when one's in such a hurry they don't even have the time to look back. Naya ha ha ha. Is that so? The being was extremely emotional. And powerful. If that pillow hit me, I would have disappeared without a trace. You're a spirit, right? Spirit? I bowed my head in disbelief. Until now, I hadn't thought about who I was. You didn't achieve perfection through training as I did, spirit of darkness. Rather, you're a deity that's perfect by nature. Deity. Wow. You began to shape your body as soon as you realized your personality. Not bad at all hm. Hey. Did you just copy my horns on your forehead? That's plagiarism. Plagiarism. Were these horns called plagiarism? I just decided to imitate him. These are the trademark of all demons. Naya ha ha ha. You really don't know anything. Don't worry about it. It'll make an exception for you. That aside, let me introduce myself. I'm the demon god, and you oh. You will be the demon lord. The demon lord? The demon lord, my friend. I hope we get along. Naya ha ha ha. Yes. From that day on, I became the Demon Lord. A passing god called me Pedinar. Demon Lord Pedinar. It sounded kind of strange, but I thought it was just me. So much time passed after that that it was pointless to count. I gained experience, began to visit the most famous restaurants in the universe, and learned how to use dark energy. But this joy did not last forever either. So I needed advice. Are you bored? Go and steal that innocent goddess underwear. There will definitely be no time to be bored then. Oh. If I disappeared without a trace, then I would definitely not be bored. The advice of this demon god, my mentor, was always rash. Hey, Pednar. Yes. If you run away because it's hard, of course, you'll be bored. Look at me. I never get bored. Naya ha ha ha. You're just very impatient and cannot sit still for a long time. Don't jump to conclusions. But if you're so intimidated by the innocent goddess underwear, why don't you try sewing easier, like conquering the world? Consider it an initiation ritual. Initiation ritual? Yes. Nobody knows you. So let them know. Okay. After that, 
I watched as he bravely approached the innocent goddess and held out a bouquet. Have my children. Kaya ha 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 ha. The pillow, which the goddess lovingly hugged, moved from its place, and an entire galaxy disappeared without a trace. Hundreds of thousands of stars had been obliterated from existence, making it impossible to turn into black holes. Why did she punish him like that? No harems. That was a valid and plausible reason. Conquering the world will be much easier. I was sure it was much easier than trying to touch the underwear of an innocent goddess. After that, preparatory work began. I went to a distant galaxy that the gods didn't visit. Since it was untouched by the deities who loved to spread their knowledge, I could watch the wild locals running around in nothing but their underwear. I decided to stay here. More precisely, on the planet Phronesis. It was named after the first spirit Phronesis, the elder sister of all spirits. Having made this place the starting point for conquering the world, I created weapons and turned the locals into my soldiers. As my mentor said, every day felt rewarding, eliminating my boredom. Additionally, I fell in love. Demon Lord Pedinar, abandon your childhood plans to conquer the world already. How many animals and spirits have lost their homes due to the deforestation you ordered for the sake of building yourself an exorbitantly huge villa Pedinar? Are you even listening to me? Yes, I am. Really? What did I say, then? That you're very beautiful, fantasy. That's not even close. You're no lord of demons. You're the lord of fools. You are stupider than my sister Phronesis. Why are you smiling? It's not a compliment. Ha! If it means meeting you, I'm ready to be a fool. Lord of Fools Pedinar, please listen to me properly. How many times do you want me to repeat the same thing? Unlike my sister, I'm not an idle and lazy spirit. I have a lot to do. If it means getting to talk to you, I am ready to cut as many trees as needed. I wasn't joking. The reason why the size of my villa increased unnecessarily was due to the first spirit sister. Star Spirit Fantasy She had lived on the planet Phronesis since time immemorial. For the sake of meeting her, I was prepared to burn down all the forests in the universe. What? Then this will result in a vicious cycle. Stop behaving like a child, Lord of Fools Pedinar. Now that we've figured out the cause, let's find a solution to it. What do I have to do to keep you from down trees? You. What about me? Speak faster. I still have a lot to do. Well. Do you need time to think? Fantasy was about to leave. I had to act urgently. It would take decades to meet her again, considering that she listened to the complaints of even the tiniest organisms living on the planet. If I missed this opportunity, I would have to take up what again, which would cause her to hate me. Looking back, I realized I acted rashly. I could have caused the destruction of an entire galaxy. Have my children. But I didn't regret it. After all. Dad. What is it? It was a success. A beautiful demon resembling fantasy was born from a star. I felt so delighted raising my daughter Soja with her that I even gave up world domination. He he he. Soja, you can call me Auntie. Hi, Soja. I am Parmiel, the first angel, mistress of a neighboring planet, and your father's older sister. In other words, I'm also your aunt, but from your father's side. Hello, aunties. Soja's so cute. Ho ho ho. But our happiness lasted only a few hundred thousand years. Because fantasy, which had gone off to warn the adventurers from the neighboring planet Parmiel not to dig into its ruins, was Ed. Parmiel, instead of apologizing, accused me of not looking after my own wife. It was partly my fault, of course. But. I will take revenge. I continued preparing for world domination, which I had long abandoned. Don't do this, Dad. Mom wouldn't want you to do that. Soja. If you have time to lecture your father, you'd better continue your mother's work and take care of the planet. And what about you? I can't forgive myself for becoming so careless out of sheer happiness. I understand farewell. I didn't see her for a long time after that. 
and our most awaited reunion wasn't the most pleasant one either. Soja, whom I met again, joined a group of adventurers formed to stop my revenge. But their attempts were in vain. I destroyed all who indiscriminately aid demons, the people I raised to conquer the world. This was the difference between God and man. They could never defeat me. I became too arrogant. Wait. This is. I felt the energy of the cheeky demon god from the last adventurer who called himself a hero. Take this. SHT. It was already too late by the time I noticed it. If I had thought everything through and prepared for this in advance, I could have avoided it. I forgot. About who advised me to conquer the world. The demon god wanted to have fun. Damn mentor. That being said, I was defeated. It was undeniable that the adventurer who challenged me was stronger. Where did a human get such strength? So I asked, Hero, what is the source of your power? The rage from losing my comrades. Is that so? To think that I, the one who considered himself the strongest, would be defeated by the power of friendship well, it was a great battle, at least. Defeated, I found myself sealed on the planet where my beloved wife fell asleep forever. My sister stole my power and made me a training dummy for the adventurers she raised. Those were miserable days. Much time had passed since then. Hello, father. Soja. My aunt betrayed me, which was really stupid. Instead of avenging my mother, I helped slay my own father. This must be my punishment. Wah. Shoo. Everything's going to be okay. I patted my crying daughter's back, treating her like a little child. World domination. While for me, it was initially a bit of a joke to brighten up my boring everyday life, it turned out that my sister, the first angel Parmiel, took it seriously. Sewing had to be done about it. But what exactly? Sewing is making this hero late. It took heroes an average of three years to reach my villa, which had been named the Demon Lord's Castle. But this particular individual hadn't appeared in ten years. How long did this pathetic guy plan to take? Boom. Finally, he brazenly kicked my doors down. Are you the Demon Lord? Right. I am Pednar, evil itself. I shall be the one to plunge this world into eternal darkness. Great show as always. My audience was only a single hero, though. That being said. Where were all his companions? He was a strange guy. It looks like it's really you this time. Ha. Hero, your eyes are full of determination. I love it. Let it be so. I accept the challenge presented to me by humanity. Wait a minute. Before we fight, I want to ask you sewing. Why did you just watch and wait for your subordinates to die? Surprised, I frowned. Just watched and waited. How crude. I've always sent my strongest subordinates against you to take revenge. But they were Ed nonetheless. Then I sent even stronger subordinates. They died, too. Are you really unhappy that you were lucky enough to survive, hero? He was a really strange guy. No hero ever doubted what was happening. If the infamous demon lord had acted himself from the start, would I be here now? He had a sharp mind. Or perhaps the others were just too stupid. But I couldn't tell him. About my escape plan. Your speculations are meaningless, hero. They're definitely not. Unless you're knowledgeable about the politics of demons, shut up. I was able to adapt to the level drop caused by the demon lord's handicap because we talked for a long time. Now I was at the same level as him. He was the perfect adversary because there weren't even any companions next to him. I thought it would be an easy victory, but I lost in an instant. How? I immediately remembered the time the first hero defeated me. However, unlike him, this hero remained calm, and he didn't use the holy sword, imbued with the power of the first angel Parmiel. He defeated me based on pure S alone. I couldn't believe it. I had to ask him. K.H. Does your mighty power come from the rage of losing your comrades? No, this is the result of training. Having said this, the hero smiled. 
And I got goosebumps. How is that possible? Well it's at least a great fight. At that moment, my instincts whispered. I had found a suitable successor. Thank you so much for your warm welcome, father-in-law. That meal removed all of the accolated stress that your cowardly daughter has brought me. However, I would now like to set this aside and get down to business. The Last Supper The time has finally come. I understand what you're trying to say. Even if you are my father-in-law, I cannot calmly close my eyes to everything you've done. Sorry, but I must you. If you were a hero, then that really would be our fate. However, you haven't officially become a hero yet, have you? I am a hero. They've told you that you are, but the doant stayed otherwise. Am I wrong? Striking the table with both hands, my daughter got up and looked at me in surprise. How do you know that? Did you really think I made him my son-in-law without any preparations, my beloved daughter? Since we first met, I had already decided that he would become the demon lord's vessel. I doubted my decision at first, but as soon as you became the first to fall in love with him, I started thanking my fate. I could never forget that day. The face of my son-in-law, who defeated me with nothing but his own s. His eerie smile. I knew then that he was ready. My son-in-law would become an impeccable demon lord. It was fated. Fate. No. Run. Be freed from your shackles as the hero and let the second demon's curse devour you. You shall become the second demon lord as I, the first demon, gladly accept the fate the universe itself has prepared for me. This was also fate. I would start all over again. I handed over the family business to my reliable son-in-law and turned him into an actual part of my family. Bound by blood. Wow. It was time to begin world domination from scratch. I had sewing to say to my sassy and impatient mentor. That aside. Ah. Our youngest is often so quiet. Hansu was always crying. As soon as I saw the smile of the woman who was trying to feed me, goosebumps went down my skin. It was better to keep quiet for now. Ha 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 I'm rolling 1010. Chapter, 303. 21st Round The Perfect Hero. The beginning was always the same. I sat on the throne on the top floor of my father-in-law's villa, with the first spirit resting on my head. And in this position, all my copies waited for days on end for heroes to come. However, when I personally controlled one of them, additional people appeared. My cowardly wife. Shadow A. Captain Fantasy. Rice Cake. Green Cake. But now, I had lost almost half of them. This is annoying. You have a frightening expression on your face, hubby. Anyway, I have good and bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Start with the bad news. As with food, I saved the dessert for last. Since you lost Hippolia and green cake, your combat power had dropped by zero. 48%. That's much lower than I thought. I thought it would be at least 5%. Green cake was attached to my aunt's strength, and she took over the body of the puppet herself, so her power's been limited. That was understandable. Where's the director now? That brings us to the next news. My aunt ran away. She's currently somewhere in fantasy, but I don't know where she is. That was within my expectations. Time to hear the good news. Or are you not done with the bad ones yet? Judging by the way my cowardly wife rolled her eyes, the good news wouldn't come soon. There's still more bad news. My traitorous husband has no other heating pads anymore. If you don't want to sleep alone in the future, you better treat your wife well. My God. That news was worse than the one about me losing combat power. Should I continue? Go for it. We had already gone down this path. It was only proper for me to see it to the end. While you were fighting with my aunt, 13 students were able to graduate. This means that you died 13 times just sitting on the throne. TSK. Because of that, a guide for the fifth curriculum has appeared, which you'll be able to find using your smartphone. 
The graduates were nicknamed the 13 legendary heroes because they turned out to be much stronger than the other heroes. This is ridiculous. If I controlled my copies, they never would have been able to pass. I was a little annoyed by the fact that my juniors graduated only through sheer fortunate coincidence. I'm not done with the bad news yet. Huh. There's more. The fantasy institution is now accepting students from other planets besides Earth. Accepting? More like kidnapping. Okay, they'll call it kidnapping. The fantasy institution usually switches to other planets only when the number of people they can kidnap has been depleted. However, due to several operational errors and the director's years of absence, the school's reputation has been severely undermined. Even the outside world has begun to view it as kidnapping, not enrollment. Isn't that good news? That meant that the fantasy institution, led by the first angel, might meet its end soon. If this were still my aunt's world, it would be. But things are different now. You have a chance to usurp control, and you're just going to give up like that? Hmm. It'll continue. Since its reputation has fallen, the school will again only abduct the inhabitants of the Earth until its situation stabilizes. After all, that planet is this establishment's go-to place, considering we've been working with it for a long time now. All this information is making me feel like my head's splitting up. And now for the worst news. Some of the gods have started showing interest in the fantasy institution. How's that the worst? Well among them, there are many strange and unpredictable creatures who became gods, having reached perfection. Imagine my aunt and father while they're deeply distraught. Now multiply them by the dozen. That's really dangerous. I just wanted to return to earth to my parents and be a civilized citizen. Why did I keep having to go through all these trials? Also. You're still not finished. This is the last one. Alright, fine. Your battle against my aunt ruins 69% of the system, which means we should expect it to have a lot of bugs and errors. Due to its current state, even though I'm its developer, I can't predict what will happen next. Ruined? One of you fought so hard that he was willing to sacrifice everything. We can consider ourselves lucky for having only 69% of it destroyed. Is that all? Yes. I'm done with the bad news. Stop nervously fiddling with your fingers now. You're going to make me start feeling nervous as well. Bad news, huh? I closed my eyes and tried to calmly lay it all out. It was really bad. I felt like this situation couldn't get any worse. Soja, who had caused her wonderful Max class husband to develop a neurotic disorder, continued in a cheerful tone. And now the good news. Well, let's hear it. I wondered what news could possibly be positive in this situation devoid of all hopes and dreams. My crazy aunt still hasn't come to her senses. How do you know? Because the ownership and control over the fantasy system have almost been passed completely to me. If my aunt were okay, this wouldn't have happened. Even if she regains her sanity now, she won't be able to do anything. Hmm. A logical question arose. If she had taken control of the fantasy system, why couldn't she find the director's hideout? As I said, 69% of the system has been destroyed. Oh. But I'm sure of one thing. Now my aunt is locked in a fantasy institution just like us. After the classroom was destroyed, my aunt's puppet hid somewhere on one of the continents. Then it's time to go treasure hunting. I thought my insurmountable sacrifices were all for naught, but after my cowardly wife explained the situation, I realized there was still hope. It seemed that luck hadn't left me yet. The president of the universe was still showing an interest in me. That wasn't all. Type, race. Name, perfect deity. Rank, mythic. Mythic 1, perfect hero. Mythic 2, perfect demon lord. Feature 1, sponsored by Universe Company. LTD. Race 1, perfect human. Race 2, perfect darkness. My race's characteristics had some form of obsession with perfection. Its arrogant statements about perfection didn't make me uncomfortable, though. I felt like it was as meant to be. You are now a deity, after all. According to the system. 
No. A true deity. From the moment you inherited my father's divine essence, you were already a deity. You were divided and weakened, which prevented you from feeling it. This time, however, another divine trait appeared. Perfect hero. Yes, said Soja, her eyes shining. What are you doing? My heart's beating faster because my husband, whom I considered a cowardly traitor, was able to achieve perfection. Hmm. Was that enough to turn my cowardly wife on? Gods born of nature, such as my father and auntie, are weak, considering they don't have complete control over their innate attributes. Those like you, who became gods by achieving perfection, are different since you reached the pinnacle of excellence through your own efforts. It all depends on what type of perfection one strives for, but only perfection can cope against perfection. What do you mean? An imperfect being can never defeat those who became a deity. Because they've reached perfection? Yes. It was a weirdly logical concept. Even though I became a deity, I couldn't feel it. Do you have any more good news? Sure. Look. This is the photo your mom posted yesterday. What? I didn't know where Soja got the Malin phone from, but I grabbed it and looked at the messages. Mom, where have you disappeared this time, son? 725. Mom, are you sick? Are you in pain? Tell your mother. 1347. Mom, son, ill you someday. 1053. I didn't reply for a long time, so she was understandably upset. That aside. Son, I'm sorry, but I have found the perfect woman, prepared for me by fate, and I've fallen head over heels for her. 1329. Who was the person sending such stupid messages under my name? Mom, oh, you're still alive. 1534. Mom, son, is that girl really so perfect that you forgot your mother and my daughter-in-law? 1536. Son, She's the second most beautiful woman in the entire universe. 1537. Mom, who the first? 1538. Son, you, of course. 1539. Did my impersonator have no conscience at all? My mother might have been a beautiful woman in the old days, but she was by no means the most beautiful woman in the universe. How could they be so shameless? Mom, my son has finally matured. I love you 1540. Mom, what's your relationship status? 1541. Son, I married her. I was drunk, and it happened by accident. 1543. Married drunk? I hoped my mother wouldn't believe what this imposter says. Mom, ah. Well, since it's already happened, there's nothing we can do about it. Don't make her cry and take responsibility. 1546. Son, yes. Thank you for your approval. 1547. Mom, what's the name of my new daughter-in-law? 1549. Son, Soja. 1550. Seriously? Mom, be attentive to Soja. 1551. Son, of course. If I dare cheat on her, please hit me as hard as possible with your tennis racket. 1553. Mom, will do. Ha. My son has really grown up 1554. Son, thank you for your kind words. 1555. Soja. Don't yell at me yet, hubby. Just keep reading. What the hell are you doing with my account? I reassured your mother who was angry at you since you were unreachable for ten years. Because of it, she even commended you for growing up. You coward. What? She found peace of mind. What peace of mind hmm? Wait. No matter how advanced science had developed on earth, a person's lifespan couldn't be increased by tens of thousands of years. However, she was still sending me messages. I investigated this mystery. Mom, look at this photo of your little brother when he started elementary school. The Minister of Education is standing in the corner of it. 954. Mom, and this photo was taken on the beach during his summer break before entering second grade. 
Wherever we go on vacation, he always attracts the attention of girls who call him cute. 958. I saw a series of family photos with comments from my mother. But that was weird. As my brother grew older, my mother and father seemed to get younger. Soja gave me an explanation. It's only been a century. Hmm have my parents become vampires? Judging by their photographs taken in broad daylight, that didn't seem to be the case. What happened? Oh. You got it all wrong. One hundred years have passed here in fantasy, but only ten years have passed on Earth. Tens of thousands of years should have already passed because of the director. With a grin, Soja replied, such a sacrifice was too much for her. What? Time is the same for everyone, which means she loses as much time as you do. What do you think would have happened if she had left her position for that long? Ah. The perfect hero was prepared to sacrifice everything, but the first angel wasn't. That's really good news. My family was still alive. I was more delighted with this news than with being promoted to perfect deity. My brother didn't make me happy, though. His expression was like a brooding old man. No matter how hard I looked for it, I couldn't find any cuteness in him. I couldn't understand why my mom was so obsessed with him. That's the end of the good news. It's more than enough. In high spirits, I slowly rose from the demon lord's throne. I was prepared to sacrifice everything, but I didn't lose anything. No, that was wrong. I lost rice cake and green cake. Are you going to search for them? Naturally. I wouldn't let go of the director so easily. Urgently, Cadet Kong Han Su. I have very important news. What? Trainee teacher has news for me too. Is it good or bad? The perfect hero was ready to listen to everything. Chapter, 304. 21st Round Inspection Team. Explanation, the fantasy institution is a prestigious school, which means it has many partners, sister schools, and investors. However, due to unfortunate events, there's been a sharp drop in the number of its graduates, triggering one of its dissatisfied investors to send an inspection team here. The director would normally be the one to explain the reason behind it and the one to share her vision to combat the situation, but she's gone missing. Wasn't the world of fantasy supposed to be the center of support for those who couldn't adapt to society? If so, then why was it focused on being a profitable business? This was making my head spin. I had always been more of a science guy. That's why I said they're useless here. Shut up, addicted spirit. He 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 kia. I flicked my finger against her butt and continued listening to the beautiful trainee teacher's explanations. Depression, to be honest, I've never been to outer space, so I don't know much, but my senior colleagues turned pale when they heard the investor's name. We can't talk about this in public, but the faculty room has been thrown into absolute chaos. I also didn't know much about what was happening out there. When I was still on Earth, I grew up watching doenteries where scientists and believers argued about whether aliens existed and whether there was life on Mars. Not much had changed since I was abducted and dropped into fantasy. However, I found out that aliens did exist. Unfortunately, this world's stupid local space travel capabilities were still far behind, even when compared to Earthlings. Cowardly husband. What? Ask your beloved trainee teacher about the investor's name. Due to my failed marriage, I live my days without due attention. However, I am still a graduate of the El Melanda University, which is recognized and respected by everyone in the universe. So, in a sense, you're an astronaut then? I didn't like what Soja said about our marriage, but I didn't punish her yet since she might have important intel. Who's the investor that made the teachers feel fear and panic? Answer, Molensoft. Molensoft. Their name alone hinted at grandeur. Explanation, they're the largest manufacturer and supplier of hardware and software in the universe. That company is said to have had such a great impact that history itself is divided into before and after its founding. I immediately shared the information with my wife. Molensoft. My God. Even though I single-handedly created the fantasy system, I couldn't land a job in that large corporation. So there's nothing special about you. 
all she could talk about was that she was a graduate of El Milando University. Stop interrupting me and just listen until I'm done talking, hubby. I couldn't get a job with them, since I was chosen as the model for the latest androids design, I was able to get an excursion with them. Heh. Well, at least there was that. Such proposals are quite natural for me. I am the second most beautiful woman in the entire universe, after all. Well, how did you like the excursion? I can't tell you because of the non-disclosure clause in our contract, but I can at least tell you to never make an enemy out of Molensoft. The androids they produce ack. Just keep my words in mind. Clutching her head with both hands, Soja interrupted her speech. Molensoft inspectors. It was hard to believe such a thing. I accidentally destroyed a planet before, but talks about space still seemed like a distant concept for me. Besides, this was business. I could have easily made sewing up if it were any other field, but this particular one wasn't my specialty. You were the emperor. What makes you think business and politics are one and the same, silly wife? Governments are no different from corporations. What? Don't be an idiot. Corporations give money in the form of salaries or wages, while governments take money in the form of taxes. What could they possibly even have in common? Their systems are completely different. This is why you're not a humanitarian ouch. Shut up. I decided to punish my cowardly little wife for groundlessly insulting such different sciences, then focused again on trainee teacher. Go on. Dejection, rumors have begun to circulate that they wanted the school to close, and I can't even do anything to help my alma mater. That's why I rushed to you and told you everything. I just need advice. You've come to the right place, trainee teacher. I no longer gave advice as often as I used to, but in my first round, when my hands didn't slip as much as they did now, I usually had to listen to the locals' problems. I understood the essence of the problem. We need to make sure the Molensoft inspection team's review of fantasy is positive. How do you think ITLL be that simple, my clueless hubby? Molensoft isn't just any small shop. They most likely already scouted our situation even before the faculty members knew about their inspection visit, which means they've already reached a decision by themselves. They dispatched an inspection team simply for formalities ouch. You're too noisy. I slapped my F-rank wife's ass since she was being too pessimistic. I am a hero. Many of Fantasy's students presented themselves like that, but they were mostly just beer anchors. My rank was max. The gap between us was all too obvious. They traveled calmly, relying on the power of friendship and love, while I always had to overcome obstacles. Today wouldn't be any different. I decided to fix this hopeless situation. Oh. Do you even have a plan? Hope, I'm also interested in Cadet Kong Han Su's plan. I wanted to eliminate the inspectors to buy time, but after listening to Soja, I realized doing so would prove detrimental to our goal. Don't you even dare. I'm not even allowed to think about it. You're not. I don't want to become a widow at such a young age. Young. Stop nitpicking at my words. My wife was imposing too many restrictions. Then we need to turn the fantasy institution into the ideal academy to prevent them from finding any flaws in it. The problem was time. How long do we have until they arrive, trainee teacher? Confirmation, according to my senior, they'll be here in about a year. Which senior? Supervisor Bakery. Surprise, yes. How'd you know? It was just my intuition as the perfect hero with 200 years of experience. While the director who oversaw the system was absent, my wife and I would have to get things in order. Aside from trainee teacher, who was looking after me, we couldn't set up a meeting with the faculty members due to school rules. There was a simple solution to that, however. Supervisor Bakery deliberately passed on such vital information to trainee teacher. Henceforth, if there were any important news or changes, had deliver them to me in the same way. How do you like my logicism and critical thinking? Admiration, simply incredible. It was too early to admire me. Based on how I knew Bakery, he most likely told trainee teacher what criteria the inspection team would use to assess fantasy. 
He did, didn't he? Surprise, you're right. He told me they would randomly choose a class and watch the hero's journey from start to finish. They will evaluate the effectiveness of his training on criteria such as combat power, responsibility, actions, confidence, analytical ability, psychological stability, adaptability, integrity, compassion, and potential. How confusing. However, the most crucial intel I gained from that was that they wanted to evaluate the effectiveness of the hero's growth. I wasn't going to tell you this because you've accused me of pessimism, but since this is objective information, it'll tell you anyway. If what trainee teacher said is true, then we won't be able to avoid the school's closure. The heroes right now didn't just cease to grow. They're actually losing ground. Is that so? Yes. And my aunt's grandson, whom you beat up, is still in shock. Really? Yup. The angels are secretly treating him, but he holds himself up in one place and refuses to go anywhere. He has no mental strength at all. But he wasn't to blame. The core of the problem was that the teaching staff kept kidnapping such weak-minded people. I could hardly change those losers. What was the optimal course of action in this situation? Stroking my ungrateful wife's back between her fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae, I reached a decision. Let's go back to the past as we did before, Soja. Are you planning on changing history again? Yes. Give me a minute. Do it, Malin. 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 Pulling Master Malin out of her chest, Soja began to roughly knead him with her hands. And voila. They created a purple stick with a five-pointed star at its tip. What is it? A magic wand. ITLL allow you to change the fantasy system settings at will. It can't handle heavy tasks like S creation, but it can execute simple ones in no time. I used this a lot before my aunt betrayed me. Hmm. My cowardly wife always complicated things whenever she pretended to be intelligent. Was my explanation that hard to understand? Yeah. Well, basically, if you need anything, just let me know. You should have just said that from the start. Oh. Soja waved her wand, forming a spatial gate before my eyes. I was the perfect demon lord. It wasn't that hard for me to intuitively deduce where it would lead me to. The past. Not a distant one, however. You got that right. Well go back to a year before Lenovo summons the hero. One year won't be enough. There's nothing we can do about it. You're the one that said the inspection team would arrive in a year. Only the changes you make over that duration will apply to all courses and classrooms. We could go back to any point in time if my aunt helped us since she's in charge of it, but I'm sure you're well aware that's impossible given our current circumstances. Complaining was a waste of time. I entered the spatial gate fearlessly. It felt like my whole body was in chains. I remembered the moment the max rank hero who defeated the demon Lord Pednar was sealed for 2000 years. The seal most likely caused this feeling of stiffness. However, judging by how it weakened, it would probably disappear naturally in a year, even if nothing was done about it. A year. That signified that the demon Lord was resurrected and arrived safely a year before the hero was summoned. I filled my body with strength. PSS. History would change dramatically once I, the perfect demon lord, had broken my seal a year earlier than anticipated. Bang! The moment it was destroyed, I regained my five locked senses. Husband! Be careful! Soja's insistent cry immediately pierced my ears. But there was no need to warn me. From the moment I removed my seal, my defenses became as perfect as I was. Bam! A dark space formed around my neck, causing a sword to ricochet. My head would have been decapitated if I deployed my protection a second later. Who the hell? Although it was a little later than my hearing, my eyes finally reactivated, allowing me to identify my enemy. Strange. It couldn't be. The rage of losing my comrades. Wait. Give me a moment. My comrades are not dead. They live on inside my heart, supporting and cheering me on. K.H. I need to think. 
K.H. Why is my senior here? Demon Lord Pednar. Ha! Huh. I will punish you. My resentful senior, clad in heroic armor, called out my father-in-law's name and charged again. Did my appearance change? That didn't seem to be the case. If so, then why? Well. I decided to do sewing about my corrupted senior first. Chapter, 305 21st Round The Demon Lord's Retaliation Race, First Ultra Human Level, 1 Job, Brave Everyone Level 1 SS, Love GG, Friendship GG, Hope GG, Divinity GG, G Status, Enhancement, Blessing, Miracle, Courage, Hope, Divine Dragon, Love, Friendship, Cooperation, Inspiration, Advent, Protection Strengthening, Relic, Holy Spirit, Immortality, Awakening, Support, Transcendence, Goodwill, Energy, Responsibility, Hope, Salvation. It was with those same stats that he once defeated Demon Lord Pedinar. This was absurd. I understand that the first hero in front of me was a fake created based on his personal file, but his strength was still impressive. Although, of course, he still couldn't rival my power. My father-in-law was helpless, weakened by the power of Brave and the effect of the black box, but such tactics would never work against me, the perfect demon lord and hero. I could feel it. Darkness. Hero. Perfection collided and faded away. The power I inherited from my father-in-law allowed me to manipulate the space created from dark matter. Absolute dominance. There was no way one could fight the space they were in itself. But he did it anyway. More specifically, the black box did. K.H. He resisted my dark matter, which was supposed to crush his body. Such a phenomenon normally would have been impossible to occur. His power was imperfect as well, considering a perfect deity didn't directly use it. However, second demon Soja created the system SS specifically to counter the first demon. They were weapons to defeat her father. And now, they were threatening even her magnificent husband. However. Go away already. The situation would have been different if the real first hero was in front of me, but the one annoying me was just a fake. Created from my dark energy. Such an existence couldn't defeat me. But my senior's clone used another trump card. Courage. Light enveloped him, increasing his speed so much that my space couldn't contain him. He sped up time, which was the first angel's power. She, too, was imperfect, but the system compensated for her shortcomings. I see. How he defeated my father-in-law became clear. My opponent was just a clone, but I was divided by the fantasy system. We fought on equal grounds. It's time to meet your end, Demon Lord Pedinar. My end? I wasn't going to lose as my father-in-law did. Taking a step forward, I extended my right hand. It was time to show my senior. How perfect his junior was. I am the perfect hero. I supported my allies' spines in difficult situations. And I punished the villain's spines. Not a single spine in the world would be left unattended. I was the spine hero. Spine. All spines would bend in front of me. Clap. The perfect weapon formed in my right hand, reminiscent of my cowardly wife's pelvis. But that wasn't all. I grabbed it as if it were a hilt, and its blade immediately began to appear. Seven cervical vertebrae, twelve thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, five sacral vertebrae, and five coccygeal vertebrae. Its blade, consisting of twenty-six vertebrae, was ready. It looks pretty cool. This was my new holy sword. I felt tremendous power. That's not a holy sword, husband. That's just a spine and a pelvis. I wasn't sure if I should ignore Soja's prejudices. Bam! My senior's inferior holy sword and my perfect holy sword collided. Neither of us was pushed back or had our weapons destroyed. Cock! Preparing another attack, the first hero grabbed his lower back with his left hand and screamed desperately. His fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae were dislocated, eliminating the support for his upper body. 
With his spine injured, he struggled to even stay on his feet. My victory was certain. Phew. But I couldn't finish the fight. He was swiftly engulfed by light and moved through space, ultimately allowing him to escape. That defied all logic. The space in this area was under my control. However, his S bypassed my ability. TSK. He even had a contingency plan for this situation. I'm sorry. Soja immediately apologized. After all, that spatial movement resulted from her collaboration with the first angel, which they prepared to make sure the first hero would be able to retreat if he failed to defeat the first demon. Well, it doesn't matter. The chances of my senior's clone recovering from his spinal injury and taking his revenge on me were extremely low. I did all that I could to ensure I wouldn't have regrets later. My new weapon enforced that will. His spine, struck by the power of my holy sword, couldn't be healed by anyone but a perfect deity. My husband's power is too fraudulent. To receive a spinal injury from just a single collision against you. Ha ha ha. Soja, you'd better treat your husband well in the future unless you want to suffer from a herniated disc. You are a tyrant. Say what you want. Even my runaway father-in-law wouldn't be able to stop me now. At that moment. Malin. Master Malin, held by Soja, swayed from side to side. As soon as I looked at him, I felt like I was struck by lightning. Being honored by his presence brought me enlightenment. He had no spine. My strength was nothing in front of the greatest being to ever exist. Oh I felt chills claw up my spine. I had become too arrogant. The truth was I had only become a little stronger. I felt ashamed for being so impudent. I spoke of perfection in the presence of true absolute power. I needed to rethink everything. With such a tremendous lesson deeply imbued in my spine, I hastily reverted my image to that of a humble hero. Hubby you're an idiot. He he he. Malin. They could laugh as much as they liked today. However, come tomorrow, I would no longer forgive them. Oh. Naturally, it went without saying that Master Malin could laugh at his humble disciple any time. Delight, I think Cadet Kong Han Su is great because he never turns his back on his beliefs. Thank you. I also think beautiful trainee teacher is amazing. What was that anyway? I asked Soja, examining the demon lord's castle, which turned into ruins. First hero. I didn't know how he could appear here. His personal file had already been destroyed. I already explained it to you, Soja reproached me. What? When? 69% of the fantasy system has been ruined. Errors like this will frequently appear in the future. I see the inspection team would be arriving soon, and fantasy was still filled with errors. If we continued at this rate, we would definitely witness this institution's end soon. I, the perfect hero, wanted to return to my home planet to oust my little brother and suffer from fewer tennis racket hits from my mother. I hated fantasy for always preventing me from going home, but the school closure was an entirely separate issue. After all, even if the fantasy institution closes, we still won't be able to escape. Why's that? Just because ITLL be closed down doesn't mean its building will be demolished. You are its foundation, after all. And if I destroy it myself? Oh listen closely. You do know that the name of an establishment often depends on its purpose, right? Police station, fire station, royal palace, office, daycare center, and so on. And? The same goes for the fantasy system. Since my aunt and I use it for education, we call it an institution. Even if it were shut down, its system wouldn't disappear. Hmm. That was bad news. Moreover, if you destroy this divided dimension, all the creatures that live here will be destroyed, including the son you conceived with the sword princess. I hadn't thought of that. If the fantasy world were destroyed, its inhabitants were obliterated along with it. However, since Regression rebuilt it and resurrected the dead locals, I didn't pay attention to it. However, if its system collapsed along with its dimension, Regression would become impossible. That would result in everyone's permanent death. Do you understand now, hubby? 
I have another question. What is it? Since I won't be able to get out of here even if the school closes down anyway, why should I bother saving it? 88% 88% Thanks to your victory over my aunt, I now have that much control over the system. If it hadn't been tainted, fantasy would have already been ours, and you'd be able to do whatever you want. Ah. However, ITLL be a completely different story if Molensoft encroaches on the rights to manage it. I expected as much. I realized the seriousness of the problem. It wouldn't be about partnership anymore. If a financial giant like them interferes, we will lose all control over fantasy. You'll be turned into a slave that'll provide them with dark energy, and you'll be fighting a battle that's much more difficult to win compared to your battle with my aunt. It couldn't get any worse. I learned that my destiny was inextricably linked with the fantasy institution. I didn't know what he was doing now or where he was, but I would have to punish my father-in-law for throwing this family business to me. He deserves that that much, I guess. What about you? Look at the bright side of things. You got the second most beautiful woman in the world. My niece. What is it? I'm just telling him the truth. As the two argued, I thought about our current situation. If I could successfully overcome this crisis, I would be able to return to Earth. As a bonus, I'd be able to get my revenge on the faculty members who had been oppressing me for the last 200 years. It was time to focus on what to do next. Soja. Yes. Can you reconstruct this place? Easily. She waved her wand using her right hand, which caused a sudden change in our surroundings. BR. A new castle emerged from the ruins of the demon lord's villa. Hey, this is some kind of tower, not a castle. My headquarters turned into a huge cylindrical obelisk without windows. Novels about heroes climbing up a 100-story tower are popular these days, and I thought we should keep up with the trends. However, if you're not satisfied, leave my tower as it is. I didn't want to be considered an FF-class redneck. I've thought this through nicely. All 100 floors of the tower are unique, having been based on currently popular romance novels. You have nothing to worry about. Romance novels? I was already worried. It's impossible for the heroes to destroy this building from the outside, so they'll be forced to climb the floors. Perhaps the only exception to that rule is the buggy first hero. However, since practically nobody can stop him but you, there's no point thinking about it. Lord of Legends, Yasuho 20th Floor. Lord of Betrayal, Hanjo 40th Floor. Lord of Death. Lord of Steel, 2D 80th Floor. Soja diligently brandished her wand as she explained the structure of the tower. Pop. Clap. Knock. The area around my new base was quickly covered with forests, lakes, and swamps. She then transformed nearby fortresses and human cities into eerie dungeons where ghosts and undead appeared. She seemed to have a passion for terraforming and designing planets. My niece really likes decorating planets, drug hero, especially this one since she's born and raised here. She inherited that talent from her mother. Anyway, I'm glad to see her in high spirits. He he he. Mother-in-law. She died a long time ago at the hands of evil adventurers from a neighboring planet. Now I understood why Soja was called God Creator Fantasy. Like an artist, she added more and more strokes, touches, and details on the lands around her, which served as her canvas. It might seem like she was filling the space without any layout, but that wasn't the case at all. It looked very beautiful. This was the first time I felt this way. You mean my niece? The fantasy world. Soja turned the area around the tower, which became a wasteland after my battle against my senior's clone, into a wild jungle. After that, she set up dungeons all over the place, which were indispensable for the hero's adventures. Caves, tombs, temples, citadels, ruins, nests, dungeons. Monsters and traps weren't even worth mentioning since those would naturally be a part of the world she was making. Admiration. I've often heard stories about her from senior colleagues, but the counselor really is amazing. You shouldn't be modest either. 
Without trainee teachers' help and support, I wouldn't have become the perfect hero. Embarrassment, my help. Cadet Kong Han Su is very talented in his own right. I wouldn't say that. Before Master Malin, I was nothing. Therefore, I had to work hard. Hey, stupid husband. Where are you going? I'm going to subdue Lenovo. I would kidnap her before she could kidnap the hero. Chapter, 306. 21st round What about Lenovo? Worry, with you in charge, there shouldn't be any problems anymore, but try not to the archaeologist in charge of summoning the students, please. Don't worry, trainee teacher. If she didn't pretend to be cute, everything would be fine. I thought about where to start. But I couldn't find Lenovo by myself, especially not without any information. I had a rough idea of where the other companions lived and what they did, but I didn't know anything about Lenovo. In the present timeline, she was always with the hero from the moment she summoned them, so there was no need to guess where she was. However, here in the past, I could only guess. Since Lenovo was a looter who dug through ancient ruins and dungeons, she always travels across continents. Which dungeon was she in now? I wasn't even sure she was on the central continent. For the record, I don't know her whereabouts either, cowardly hubby. I'm not surprised. There were so many things in this world that its creator couldn't do. If the system were in good condition, we could summon her directly to us. However, it will take decades before it can be restored, and that's assuming nobody else will further damage it. I only had one year. I couldn't just roam every dungeon looking for her. Pip. I contacted the western continent directly through my Malin phone. Oh. It's only been 1,999 years, my benefactor. There should be a year left before your resurrection, but the wave of power that passed from the south of the central continent to the western continent is undoubtedly yours. Shakespeare, who received my call, quickly understood the situation. It was quite convenient. He was the connoisseur for a reason, after all. However, if it had been just that, our conversation wouldn't have been so laconic. What about the data I sent? Molenphone's power helped me with this. Ha! Huh. I've already checked it and found out it belonged to me since it was sent through my future self-secret network. It had information stored within it that had been accumulating for 110 years. I'm even willing to bet that this data, mined throughout the span of 110 years, is far more useful than all the advances I've made in the past 1999 years. Right. While I wrestled with the director for a century, Shakespeare busied himself with his research. And before the world rebooted, he sent the collected data to my Malin phone. In the end, a total of 110 years worth of data were collected. However, I didn't know why he rated them higher than his 1,999 years worth of studies. That's interesting. Why is it much more useful? I asked the happiest married man in the world as I spread the wings of the righteous hero, soaring up into the sky. Shakespeare provided an explanation. The battle between the demon lord and the goddess who oversees fantasy lasted for 100 years, and it left a lot of interesting data as a result. You may not know this, but it looks like my future self went straight to the battlefield in search of truth. Due to that, I now have a huge amount of accumulated information in my hands. Not bad. In three years, I will show you even more interesting things. Take your time. There's a much more pressing matter to focus on right now anyway. I came back a year before the hero's starting point. Do you know what that means? Of course, Lord of Demons and Hope. You mean to say an important moment will soon occur that would put the world in an endless loop of time? Yes. There was no need for detailed explanations, considering the truth was always with the connoisseur. What can I do for you and the world? Soaring through the skies above the Dumpling Kingdom in search of Lenovo, I replied. The western continent of fantasy must become the last bastion that no hero can invade. If necessary, I need it to turn into a prison within which the heroes can be eternally trapped. I must also have information networks on all other continents. Lastly, and most importantly, we need to develop a Malin phone that will allow heroes to use Wi-Fi on a limited basis. Of course, all this needs to be done within a year. 
On a limited basis? Yes. To prevent them from receiving any data from Earth, we need to launch sites and messengers readily available only for Molenphone users. Naturally, we'll have full control over all of that. I had been keeping this plan in my head for a long time now. And it had finally become possible to execute it. The classrooms weren't connected to each other, but Wi-Fi would connect them through the intermediate bridge called Earth. I had done it before. After taking a photo of Soja's pelvis at Class A using my Malin phone and posting it online, my clone from Class B exclaimed, Oh. That really is a cowardly pelvis. Did you really take a photo of my pelvis, double hubby, or is that just an example? Of course I did. I even photographed it at a beautiful angle. What? While you were moaning on all fours in front of me, I took a test shot and uploaded it onto the messenger. You're a pervert. Why are you shouting? Your husband just took a couple of pictures of you. There's nothing wrong and out of the ordinary in that. A couple of pictures? What if someone else sees it? What's wrong with taking family photos? Everybody does it. What you photographed has nothing to do with family photos. Soja gave it her all to convince me to delete it. Wife's pelvis hmm. Shakespeare, quietly listening to us, took a step closer to the truth. Did I present my plan clearly enough to be understood? Yes. Everything will be ready soon. Ha. Huh. Do you have any other requests for me besides the information network and the Molenphone, my benefactor? I want to know Lenovo's current location. I can say for sure that she isn't here on the Western continent. Other continents are outside my jurisdiction, so I have little to no information on them, especially the Central and Eastern continents. I see. After ten years of researching and experimenting with Shakespeare on the Western continent, I came upon a realization. The dragon aura of my dear comrade Noebius, who had built a nest in the form of a mountain range right in the heart of the central continent, completely negated all types of detection. It was the same with the eastern continent, home to the largest number of dragons in this world. In other words, Noebius all dragons. My friend was truly unique. Anyway, I didn't really expect Shakespeare to immediately pinpoint Lenovo's location. If only she were on the western continent. However, I still benefited from this, considering its elimination from the list of possible places she could be at, which reduced my search range by 20%. They'll gradually explore the northern and southern continents in search of Miss Lenovo. Benefactor, do you have any other requests? We will deal with the rest as we go. I see. They'll start developing the information network and will contact you again once I've found Lenovo or when the new model of Molenphone is ready. Thanks. For the demon lord and the world. It was a shame I couldn't find Lenovo, but it didn't matter. Shed be back at the Dumpling Kingdom within a year. To kidnap social outcasts from other dimensions. Are you thinking of distributing Molenphones, hubby? Why? I hope you've given this a lot of thought. Separating each dimension is a OD conceived during the early days of the fantasy institution. Hmm. It was most likely to ensure the students would grow more independent by blocking information. In part, I agreed with that. Because of my 200 years of experience here in fantasy, I now held a lot of knowledge, but in my first round, I had to gain valuable experiences through trial and error. The ability to solve problems without needing to rely on others was extremely important. Perhaps spreading the Molenphones among the heroes would prove to be a rash decision. Ahem, husband. There are no such grandiose intentions behind it. Ha. Huh. Why then? It's to make the heroes feel special and one of a kind, making them think they're the only ones that can prevent the destruction of this world, and ultimately making them feel responsible and proud. They exploited the concept of the 8th grade syndrome. Funny. There's nothing wrong with making them think they're special and that only they can prevent the destruction of this world. That still sounds like 8th grade syndrome to me. If one thought they were one of a kind in a cut above the rest, then they had already developed an incurable disease. Aren't you like that yourself? Is it because I consider myself the only normal member of society among all these outcasts? Isn't that just the purest truth, though? I wasn't a social outcast, 
and that was made evident when I defeated demon Lord Pedinar without the dastardly power of friendship and love. It didn't mean I was special. On the contrary, it was just a system error that got me kidnapped with these losers. Of course, there was a time when I lamented why I was kidnapped into this barbaric world. But even then, I didn't think I was special. Any normal member of society could do what I had done. I was normal. Simply put, there were enough talented people on earth who could achieve even more than I did. Do you seriously think so? Why ask if you can read my mind anyway? Fair enough. However, if the system were working, we'd be able to see evidence that my cowardly husband huh? Husband. Someone has infiltrated this world. Infiltrated? This wave of power spatial movement. Someone arrived here through the hero summoning magic circle, but they're not a hero. There's still a year left before the hero's arrival. Where exactly did they appear? At the northern continent Kia. I grabbed Soja's cowardly waist and took her in my arms. My cowardly wife let out a squeal that was unusual for her, but I paid no attention to it. The hero summoning magic circle. Chances were high that Lenovo would be there. Teleport us to that place. Soja was the creator and developer of fantasy. She could ignore causality. No. The system is broken. We should use the spatial transportation magic circle instead Kaya. We didn't have any time to waste talking. My cowardly wife offered to use the spatial transportation magic circle at the nearest mage tower, but flying to the northern continent would be much faster for me. Holding Soja in my arms, I soared into the sky. Get to work. The wind spirit king, rubbing his cheek against my armpit, lifted his head lazily. Pop. 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 He summoned lower-ranking spirits, who immediately went to work. They removed the air resistance in front of me and added speed to my flight. I wasn't fooling around either. Darkness. Phew. 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 I caused short-distance spatial jumps by shrinking space itself. We reached the northern continent in about ten seconds. If I were at the peak of my strength, I would have gotten here in an instant, but in my current state, that was my limit. Whoa, that's amazing. I think you control the demon lord's power better than my father did. Thank you for the compliment. Now give me exact coordinates. I thought I would instinctively know where to go when I got to the northern continent, but that was an arrogant mistake. I wasn't sure if the energy being emitted was being concealed or not, but I couldn't locate it. If Soja hadn't told me, I wouldn't even have known that someone had trespassed in this world. There. Soja pointed her finger somewhere in the distance. An intruder. Lenovo. Those two could be in the same place. I'm not sure. Whoever they are, they're moving east of the magic circle at high speeds Kaya. Tisk. Narrowing the space, I quickly darted to the eastern part of the northern continent. Aren't you going to track them, hubby? That won't be necessary. I used to be the northern continent's lovable emperor. Like a 3D map, I had every nook and cranny of it preserved in my memory. I had already figured out where the attacker was heading. A small estate located in a kingdom bordering the Magic Kingdom. It was south of the Snow Mountain M in the middle of the northern continent. Ah! That place! Soja, reading my mind, seemed to have finally realized it as well. They were heading to where the cruel duke's daughter, the sword princess, and her son Horus lived. Correction, his name is Chris. Chapter, 307. Twenty-first round above your head. My son Chris was undoubtedly born from the womb of the sword princess, who attracted the attention of the sweet three-year-old emperor. But after that, my son became an entirely independent, complete soul that no longer needed to be mothered. Further details remained a mystery to me, however. I waited for the developer to give an explanation. Life born from the union of divided souls is like a sandcastle. It can't sustain itself. However, when a complete soul is involved, like the heroes, the results become different. Scientifically speaking, a complete soul is born if the sperm or egg is from another complete soul as well. That's not what I want to know. 
What is it, then? I'm wondering if the Sword Princess is still Chris' birth mother. Don't worry about that. Chris is still her biological son. She often has dreams about you impregnating her, too. I see. After getting ahead of the intruder and reaching my destination, Duke Q.S. Estate, I began to descend. They were one of the few noble families on the northern continent whose magic developed and flourished through swordsmanship. Duke Q.S. family wielded sewing similar to a magic of mass destruction they were like wizards that honed magic through a sword rather than a staff or wand. Instead of graceful swordsmanship, they used cataclysmic sword energy to wipe out their enemies. Before the appearance of the God of War's Golden Golem, Duke Q.S. family was the strongest on the northern continent. Even in the fifth curriculum, that fact hadn't changed. Their peaceful estate was located amid a forest where finding even just one goblin would prove difficult. But that didn't mean that monsters didn't live here. Hark! Gurg! Gur! Plip! Warriors wandered like guards throughout their land, wishing to become knights. They leveled up by hunting whatever monster they could find, but there were too many of them competing for the chance to slay the few monsters left in the area. In the end, this orc is mine. Nonsense. I found it first. Ha. Mine. Gur. Monsters being slain as soon as they emerged from the womb of nature was a rare sight since it only happened within Duke Q.S. territory on the northern continent. That was due to the policy of the local swordsmanship academy, where all who had talent and desire for the S were trained and appointed knights, no matter if they were nobles, commoners, or slaves. Of course, it was possible to find other estates where students were recruited into knights. However, few individuals could teach as well as the people of Duke Q. Rumors gradually spread, ultimately making the academy famous enough for people from faraway lands and even other continents to come here to study. As a consequence. Get out of here. Let me pass. The prince is coming. Get out, servants. There were many strange personalities here, most of them bachelors from high-ranking noble and royal families. But they didn't visit to become knights of Duke Q. There was another reason why this place became well-known. Swordsmanship tournaments. Nothing's changed. The training hall of the Swordsmanship Academy, built next to Duke Q.S. Castle, was full of spectators, most of whom were wealthy bachelors. They all came to spar with swords. With whom? Ha! K.H. The young man screamed desperately as he rolled across the dirt floor of the training ground. His expensive metal armor was dented, and his coat of arms had turned into tattered rags. He was by no means a weakling. It was just that the woman he fought was far stronger. Sword Princess. She drew attention to herself by announcing that she would only marry the man who could defeat her in a sword fight. However, no one could defeat her on the northern continent because she was a master of mid-range combat. The aura emitted from the tip of her sword increased the radius of her attack. Race, Human. Level, 999. Job, Knight Devotion Fortitude. SS, Sword Aura ZZ, Fortitude ZZ, Charm Z. Status, Board. Sword Mastery, the most basic S for all swordsmen and knights, wasn't even in her top 5 SS. However, she was extremely powerful. After all, none of the swordsmen and knights could break through her aura doing so would have given them a chance to defeat her with the power of their swordsmanship. Sword god Alex and the mercenary king might stand a chance against her, but ordinary people didn't stand a chance. However, unbeknownst to all, she's shameless. She was already a married woman and had a max rank son. She was merely pretending to be an innocent maiden. I can't do this today. My back's hurting. Um, I'm not in my best condition right now. Perhaps I'll just return next year. Ah. I forgot. I have an urgent appointment. One by one, the bachelors, aiming for the sword princess pelvis, began to scatter the moment they witnessed how she turned one of their stronger competitions into a crumpled tin can. Sheathing her weapon, she turned around. The sword princess looked a little over twenty, but it should never be forgotten that she was the mother to a person that no longer looked like a child. Sir Chris. I love you, 
Chris. Am willing to give you all of me. Please notice me. Kia. Cries. Her son, surrounded by fans and watching the battle from afar, held out a towel to the sword princess when she reached him. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. If one weren't aware of their relationship, they would probably think they were siblings, and the only reason the two wouldn't be mistaken for lovers was that they looked too alike. Regardless, he definitely inherited my spine since his bones were also strong and healthy. What are you planning on doing, cowardly hubby? I need to protect them. If they die or are captured, the situation will become more complicated. I snapped my finger. I could secretly protect them from a distance, but in this situation, it was impossible to predict when the intruder would show up and what they would do. It would be best for me to use a reliable OD. Clap. Clap. A dark space formed under the feet of the two. H. Huh. Ah. To their surprise, they both fell into my demon vault. It was safe there. Have you confused protection and imprisonment? Have I? Do you want me to protect you too? You'll be safe in Captain Fantasy's mouth. Oh no. Ho ho ho. You did everything just right. Get it together. They're here. I could now feel their presence without Soja's assistance since not many living beings could move through space at such a high speed. Spreading the wings of the righteous hero like a cloak, I took off, forming the perfect holy sword in my hand. It was time to check their spine. The intruder had a strange presence accompanying them. Though I couldn't grasp it at first, my eyes soon dawned upon it as I heard a loud sound similar to a rocket engine, dumbfounding me. The person was standing on a black aircraft that looked like an electric stingray. What was that? It's a space horse, my cowardly wife said, still in my arms. Space horse? Yes. Space horses are slow here because of the planet's air resistance, but they're really fast in space. Additionally, since they're creatures born from the power of God, they're also extremely powerful. I know you're strong, hubby, but it would be best for you to aim at its rider right away instead. I think so too. I tried to keep it from moving, but the stingray pierced through my attempt as easy as tearing a piece of paper. Proving itself to be an adversary that couldn't be easily defeated by the power of a divided demon lord. If so. Phew. I abandoned the plan to contain the enemy's steed and rushed towards the rider instead, narrowing the space between us. Demon lord. Hero. I could freely change my job between hero and demon lord, depending on the situation. Right now, I was the perfect hero. I wasn't a big fan of this profession, but it was perfect for punishing evil. This does not correspond to the information I received. Who gave you that information? You don't need to know that. Lenovo. I hate talkative men. The Max Class Righteous and Perfect Hero's eyebrows trembled from the childish provocation of the intruder. Oh. Finally silent. I was distracted by your cowardly pelvis. What? The intruder, falling from my provocation as well, looked insulted. I tried to close the distance to punish their pelvis, but, unfortunately, the stingray didn't take its eyes off me. They immediately flew away. This isn't going to be easy. The space horse's mobility is outstanding. In space, it can fly at the speed of light, completely avoiding the microscopic dust of the universe Kaya. To punish the villain, I held back my tears and threw a heavy soja into the air. Drug hero. I'm much lighter than my niece. I'm not that heavy either, auntie. This cowardly. Don't make excuses, niece. But I'm telling the truth. The perfect hero picked up speed by sacrificing his cowardly wife. I examined the intruder on the space horse from head to toe. She was a beautiful woman in her thirties, showing off her lustful nature. Her silver hair that went down to her thighs and her golden eyes contrasted her dark skin perfectly. Hey, intruder, are you a hero too? No. Why is your outfit like that, then? What's wrong with it? If you don't understand, that's okay. She wore steel armor, revealing strong thighs, forearms, a narrow waist, and a large chest. 
Did she wear it for protection or beauty? With the level of protection it provided her with, it would be better not to wear armor at all. Additionally. Race, Archhuman. Level, 1. Job, Unemployed 110% Experience. SS, Interpretation A, Writing C. Status, Good. The intruder's stats were almost a blank slate. Aside from the base configuration, she only had Writing C, which I assumed appeared because she was riding a Stingray. Her power wasn't reflected in her stats at all. She looked like an ordinary earthling who had never been abducted by fantasy. However, as soon as she saw me, she immediately called me Demon Lord. That alone told me she wasn't just an ordinary innocent and oblivious maiden. Shuck. I raised the perfect holy sword in front of me, deciding to save my questions for later. I'd interrogate her once I had neutralized her spine. What an ugly weapon. This is the holy sword. Hearing such stupidity already makes me want to laugh, but its divine power seems real, so the intruder, who was trying to keep her distance from me, sharply raised her hands. Kugu goo goo. At the same moment, a dark thundercloud formed amid the clear sky. It wasn't magic. Lightning. It was the power of God. I wondered how she planned to defeat the sword princess and my son at level 1, but I understood now. Flash. Lightning struck my head. Darkness. In return, she was swallowed up by darkness. The lightning struck so quickly that I couldn't escape it, but it couldn't harm me. Is that all you've got? Of course not. Click. An iron mechanism appeared in the hands of the unarmed malefactor. It resembled a machine gun. That was quite a useful weapon in fantasy. Almost instinctively, I shouted. Soja. Tra ta 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 ta. She opened fire almost at the same time as I shouted my cowardly wife's name. Ignoring her bullets, I closed the distance. What? Even her stingray, a master of evasion, found it difficult to escape since its rider stood motionless, focusing on raining down bullets upon me. Bam! I thrust my left fist into the muzzle of the machine gun, and with my right hand, grabbed the rider by the neck. K.H. Her surprise became evident in her expression. She couldn't seem to understand why I rushed into her line of fire instead of blocking her shots. Did she really not know? Selflessness was the main quality of true heroes. Standing astride the space horse, I gently stroked the intruder's lumbar region between her fourth and fifth vertebrae with my left hand, which had broken the machine gun. Having lost her fighting spirit, she, in turn, trembled like an aspen tree. Who are you? I hate talkative women. Crunch. I arched her back. At that moment. Husband. Above. Lightning. Babak. A bolt of electricity, which I had neglected, pierced my space and fell right on my head. What's up there? I was a conductive hero. Nothing hmm. You can continue your love affair. Niece. Don't misunderstand, your niece. As his good wife, I simply warned him of danger. However, since my husband isn't only cowardly but also tough, he remains perfectly fine. You know I'm not talking about that. I don't. He he he. The Max Class Righteous Hero had caught the chatty villain. Or not. It seemed that the foreign made electric rug under my feet exploded along with its owner due to a short circuit. You shouldn't have ignored the power of electrical voltage, madam. Chapter, 308. Twenty-first round what's your name? The electrocuted intruder looked terrible. Both of her eyes burst, and blood gushed from her nose and ears. I checked her stats to make sure. Race, Archhuman. Level, 0. Job, Unemployed Experience 110%. SS, Interpretation A, Riding B, Barrage B, Accuracy C, Dodge C. Status, Death, Dislocation. She had definitely died. But I wasn't disappointed. After all, the life insurance here in fantasy was in the form of resurrection. One could resurrect not only useless pieces of experience but also villains who had important information, 
allowing them to interrogate them and get the intel they needed. I couldn't do it in the first round because the Saintists and my companions were against it, but it was different now. TSK it still angers me whenever I remember it. My companions constantly complicated matters. They recused Inhabitant B, who was as useless as could be and left the high-ranking demons holding a lot of information untouched. If I had squeezed all the information out of them, I wouldn't have had to spend ten years on the first round. I never thought Demon Lord Pedinar would be so weak. I don't want to defend my father, but he wasn't weak. You're just too strong. Im average. If any other person who wasn't a social outcast got into fantasy, they would have gained the same achievements I did. How's the damage from her attacks? I have already restored everything. My cowardly wife didn't stop the damage but repaired the aftermath instead. She wasn't a guardian god, but a creator god, after all. It was as if she made time itself rewind. With a wave of her wand, the destroyed terrains and casualties all reverted to their original states. She didn't even need a saintist to resurrect the dead. Now, bring this lustful intruder back to life. No. Jealousy is out of the question right now, Soja. Your pelvis is much prettier. Do I have to constantly tell you that? Niece. You are so shameless. Soja, who her husband and aunt had criticized, turned red and immediately began to make excuses. You're twisting my words again. It's not that I don't want to do this. Shameless. I really can't do it. Her soul's now tied to the world of fantasy and is prepared to regress and start a new life as a novice hero in the elementary curriculum. I understood what she meant. She wasn't abducted, but the system treated her like she was anyway since she got here through the hero summoning magic circle. It automatically registered the intruder as a hero. She failed and died in the middle of her adventure. Hence, like any other student, she would be forced to regress. As a result, even though her body was intact, she couldn't be resurrected since her soul was nowhere to be found. That's correct. What about Lenovel? Her trail was cut off. Bill checked the magic circle and its surroundings. You take care of the sword princess and her son. You haven't seen them in a long time. To my surprise, Soja said sewing really sensible. But I didn't think it was worth letting her go alone. If the system admin got into trouble, our whole plan would fail. It would be much worse than losing the Sword Princess and Chris. Therefore, Soja, ride with the wind. I pointed to the Black Stingray, quietly letting me stand on its back even though I was the one who had its rider. Say EX. On this ramp like creature that's been making obscene sounds. Soja, who had already spread her ethereal violet wings and was about to fly away, had her eyes widening out of surprise. You're giving it to me? Yes. I could move quickly on my own. Plus, this stingray was agile enough to dodge my attacks. If Soja had this ramp, she could hold out against enemy attacks until I arrived. Ah. What's with that look? I once read in a women's magazine that husbands who give space horses to their wives are the coolest. At the time, I thought it was stupid, but now I understand. What's so special about it? Space horses are a real rarity, my wonderful hubby, and they are the symbol of a successful woman. Even I can't afford them. There are no other means of transportation as convenient as them when it comes to shopping in a neighboring galaxy since they're fast and can hold quite a lot of luggage. Additionally, in an emergency, they're great escape vehicles. So do you like it? Yes. Okay. My cowardly wife, who acted like a child who just received her favorite candy, rode the space horse and flew west. Giving her a cool car was enough to make her attitude towards me, her own husband, rotate a full 180 degrees. He he he. Why are you laughing, addicted spirit? My nephew is so cute. Hmm. Keep making her happy. Although she's old, she has the heart of an innocent child. Sure, I said, waving it off as I landed in the middle of Duke Q.S. estate. At the same time, I released the sword princess and her son Chris, whom I had transferred into my demon vault. Splat. Slap. Hopefully, their buttocks had cushioned their fall. 
Confused, they looked around as they tried to figure out what had happened. I went to the local market. What was that just now? A battle between a demon and an angel? It was a dragon. I'm sure of it. Are we safe now? Naturally, the lightning strikes that tore through the clouds made the townspeople anxious and worried. However, they didn't stay that way for long. The residents of fantasy were already used to seeing, adapting, and adjusting to all sorts of strange phenomena, allowing them to return to their usual daily routine with ease. I haven't been to ordinary cities in such a long time. Each province had its own characteristics, and the domain of Duke Q was among the most developed. Still, compared to the huge futuristic city on the western continent, this city was indeed ordinary. Perhaps I should make some changes. Race, Perfect Deity. Level, 1. Job, Great Sword Master Hero Demon Lord. SS, Selflessness Max, Love D, Courage D, Hope D, Friendship D. Status, Good, Holy Sword. I was the hero and the demon lord. I could activate both options simultaneously, but I deactivated my demon lord profession, full of dark energy, for now, and took on the mantle of the max class righteous hero once more. SS didn't matter. I was supposed to only have selflessness, but it looked like my cowardly wife decided to play a trick on me. And one more thing. Race, perfect human. Job, hero experience 500%. Condition, good, holy sword. Even if I used the hide function, my race still stood out too much and could raise Suyin among heroes and teachers since they could check other stats. Only my cowardly wife could hide the title perfect. Regardless, the locals would remain oblivious to it anyway. Except for Shakespeare, the connoisseur. Are you going to meet the sword princess now, drug hero? Yes, but I am a gentleman so I'll go through all the necessary steps to meet with her. I thought you were in a hurry. I am. But I had to change history wisely. Everything needed to be well planned if I wanted to miraculously change the fifth curriculum within a year. Fantasy consisted of five continents. Suppose I devoted two months to each continent and devoted the remaining two months to El Milando. The City of Angels to the north of the central continent, and the City of Sea Mermaids, I.D. be able to do everything within a year. However, would two months be enough for each continent? It was hard to say. After all, I had to consider intricately intertwined ideologies of many countries and the colliding interests of various people and groups. Feuds, friendships, alliances, private sponsorships, marriages of convenience, contracts, jealousy, loyalty. Hey, drug hero, I'm getting a headache from all this. I'll just lie down here and watch. The lazy spirit sprawled on my head, sniffling. I sincerely condoled with all the spirits who had to accept this pathetic first spirit as their boss. Malin. I'm not the boss. We are a family. I'm telling the truth. Back me up here, my dear children. The spirit kings didn't answer, exercising their right to remain silent. You're making me upset. While the addicted spirit was in disarray, I visited the reception room at the entrance of Duke Q.S. Swordsmanship Academy. Each spring, many men and women gathered here to express their desire to enroll, but right now, there were only traders and parents who wanted to get permission to enter to see their children. Judging by your age, you didn't come here to study. I suppose you want to propose to the Duke's beautiful daughter Ahem. I suppose you want to register for the tournament. What is your name? Upon seeing me, the employee immediately decided the purpose of my visit for me. He looked familiar. I knew more about his daughter than him, though. She would marry a promising knight from the academy, who would die in a trap set by goblins just five days before their honeymoon. In other words, she would become a young widow. Although my companions criticized me for choosing to brighten up her loneliness, I still didn't regret it. Mr. Manager. Yes. When your daughter is about to get married, advise her to postpone it for five days. What? Ahem. Let's get started with my registration. My name is Parpar, and I'm 33 years old. Although I look young, I am actually a year older than the Duke's daughter. 
I don't know if that's your real age or you just love being called big brother by the ladies. Regardless, tell me where you're from and what you do. That was a very good question. I took out a ring from my vault and put it on my left finger. The signet ring featured the head of a blue lizard. Surprised, the manager dropped his pen. What is the name of the capital of this country? Moscow. Mosquito. Moscow. Ah. Exactly. Moscow. The name seems to be correct. Ha. It has been a long time since I last visited the country of the woman who gave birth to me. That can't be. I am a member of the noblest royal family and will become the sweetest emperor in the future, though I am a child born in a barn. I see the manager's tone became polite. Stupid fantasy savages were very weak against the words imperial and royal. What about the registration? Sorry, I'm almost done. Having a magic ring, which only royal family members can wear, is enough to confirm your identity. Sir Parpar, what profession should I write for you? My ring wasn't a mass-produced magic accessory given out to all princes and princesses. Only kings could wear it. However, the manager didn't seem to be aware of this. And since I identified myself as an illegitimate child, it was impossible to list prince as my job. What should I tell him ah? Sword King. Assumption, do you miss Alex? Eek. Trainee teacher. Don't say such scary things. My heart almost stopped. Chapter, 309. 21st Round Sword King Parpar. If I recalled properly, the Sword Princess was jealous of Alex's Sword King title. Sword Princess. The strongest among women received such a nickname, which she found not at all suitable. As a swordsman, not a woman, she wanted to be called the Sword King. The Sword King. What's wrong? The title is vacant. Or do you want to register me as emperor? Oh no. Alex, who married the armless snow woman, was now much stronger than during the fourth curriculum. Quite frankly, he had reached a level enough for him to even challenge me. Now he had become the sword god. Naturally, the sword king title, which was below it, had been vacated. However, if I claimed it for myself, it would be a clear provocation towards the sword princess. Are we done here yet? Oh oh, yes. You are registered under the name of Parpar, who originated from Moscow. 33 years of age. Profession Sword King. A tournament for applicants who have decided to challenge the Duke's beautiful daughter is held each time 64 people pass the initial test. Even if it annoys you, you need to pass this test too. Take this piece of paper and show it to the guards at the entrance. Mr. Manager, how many applicants are there at the moment? 56 including Mr. Parpar. The tournament will not start until 8 more people apply. From experience, it will probably take about four days to complete the quota. Thanks. I made my way to the academy entrance next to the reception area. Are you here to get tested? One of the guards asked. Yes. I handed the paper over to him. Thanks. This seems to be your first time, but you look confident. Everyone's usually nervous. I've challenged her before when I was 22 years old. Hmm. Not sure if I was 22 years old then. I don't remember anymore. But I did. I challenged the sword princess, even though Lenovo told me fighting her without the holy sword was too reckless. Ah. So you already have experience. That's impressive. For ten whole years, you've done nothing but prepare for your next fight against her, never once marrying anyone else or trying again. Emma Romantic. The age of marriage in the world of fantasy was quite diverse. On the northern continent, men were 18 years old, and women were 16 years old. It differed depending on the continent and country. Additionally, if their population were greatly reduced due to war or natural disasters, that bar would be lowered. This was different from Earth. They hadn't come up with a convenient weapon that would eliminate hordes of monsters without requiring much effort from the owner. In other words, the survival of a group of people depended on the size of their population. 
When a king or feudal lord concluded that their territory was under threat due to their small population, they would encourage even the youngest of their people to marry and have children. In critical cases, they even made it compulsory. But I declared my age to be 33 years old, making me seem like a bachelor who was very late in getting married. Appearance, when in fact, you're actually a seasoned veteran when it comes to marriage. You got it all wrong, trainee teacher. I still have a pure and innocent heart. The academy guards, who considered me a bachelor, were very friendly to me. My fantasy career was 200 years running. I could earn a good reputation with the locals just by breathing. Ha! Huh. I will personally root for you, Sir Parpar. I will support you too. Oh! Eleven years I wouldn't have been able to tolerate it. If you change your mind later, please let me know. I know a widow. Follow me. It'll take you to the training ground. After accepting words of encouragement from them, I quickly made my way to the training ground for the test. Hiya. Ha. There I saw people of both genders training with swords in their hands under the scorching sun. All of them were academy students who had received recognition for their talents, ultimately turning them into potential knights. Among them was my son Chris. Race, human. Level, 249. Job, Prince Strength of the Nation Willpower. SS, Gifted Z, Sword Mastery Max, Omnipotence Max, Charm Max, Willpower Max. Status, Training, Awakening. Fraudulent Stats. His SS ranks were impossible to obtain at such a young age. Even though my experience gain was always multiplied by five due to my hero profession and trained tirelessly for ten years, unlike Chris, I still couldn't get a max ranked S, let alone a Z rank. I knew why. He had the perfect combination of gifted and omnipotence SS. His level was low because he didn't particularly hunt monsters, but it was still significantly higher than the other students. Level, 94. Job, Noble Daughter Bloodline Charm. SS, Charm S, Swords Mastery A, Sword Aura B, Sociability C, Dexterity C. Status, Heart Palpitations. That was the stats of the girl spinning around my son. Her low S rank wasn't a problem, but her spine and pelvis weren't impressive. For some reason, she made me feel uncomfortable. Sir Parpar. Oh. My apologies. I was watching how these weak outstanding students train. Ha ha ha. I know how you feel. Whenever we watch Master Chris train, whom the princess loves so much, we often lose track of time. I feel proud and relieved every time I think that boy will become the next owner of this estate. Is that so? I'm sorry, but this is where I take my leave the test will be carried out by a knight who also happens to be an instructor at the academy. Good luck, Sir Parpar. I turned around and parted ways with guard A. Oh. I recognized the tester. Knight L, the old man who loved the sword princess, the only daughter of Duke Q, like she was his granddaughter. He was the one who tried to turn a normal test into the embodiment of hell to make sure his precious sword princess wouldn't go to some fool. As soon as I saw him, I gritted my teeth. I got my ass kicked that time. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lolican. Since my back's beginning to give up on me due to old age, I decided to start educating young students of the academy. Although I look like an ordinary old man, I'm still a count, not an ordinary knight, so behave accordingly. You can call me Instructor Lolican, Count Lolican, or Sir Lolican. Whichever you prefer. Count Lowly. Don't call me that. That nickname is only for the young lady and my lord. Let's begin the test already. Even though I introduced myself as a count, you still behave so impudently hmm. What is that ring you're wearing? Oh. Are you royalty? Yes, I replied, showing it to him. Knight L.S. brows twitched. Hey. Stop wasting time. Let's finish the introductions here and proceed with the verification process. Put your right hand on this ball. Don't be afraid. I've done this before. The soccer ball-sized green crystal ball was a magical tool for measuring experience and level. It showed more accurate numbers than magic glasses. 
your level must be above 300. I see. At the moment, I was just level 1, which was no different from a newborn baby. It fell far below the standard set by Night L. However. Woo. Experience was a fantasy resource created by the power of the Demon Lord and the Director. I couldn't generate experience points on my own, but I could trick this primitive tool. Level 580. Night L was amazed. Transcendental entities such as my dear friend Noebius and connoisseur Shakespeare easily crossed level 999, but that was unreachable for most locals and monsters. If a person's level exceeded 100, he was already in the top 10%. And if they exceeded 200, they would belong to the top 2%. Due to the nature of their job, which more often than not made them fight only the strongest opponents, it became it more difficult for heroes to realize that. Let's move on to the next test. I could have made my level higher, but I deliberately adjusted it to the Sword Princess level. In doing so, she would mistake me for an equal opponent. Now, this ball. Tool for viewing jobs, right? That is correct, Sir Parpar. It's a very valuable magical tool specially crafted by the Tower of Sage. Specifically crafted. Would I be able to deceive it? Night L, holding me back from trying to put my hand on the ball, said, Before you begin, I want you to know that this is just for reference. I know. The ball will change its color depending on one's profession. Wizards are blue, warriors are red, artisans are green, and scientists are yellow. White represents nobles, and black represents a profession that shouldn't be openly discussed. Bright glows signify dignity, and the darker the color, the more useful they are in their profession. There have been cases where the measurement results were so bad the applicants became unhappy. That's why I needed to give you a fair reminder. I got it. Now then, you may proceed. Finally. This time, I was unable to influence the magic instrument. The magical structure turned out to be more complex than the one used to measure experience points. FSHSHSHSH. It didn't take long for the result to appear. Hmm. This the crystal ball turned so black that it absorbed almost all light from external sources while emitting a bright obsidian glow. That made me curious. In my first round, when I took the profession test as a hero, the ball turned hot pink. Its glow also seemed to be much more intense than my first round. Night L, whose face turned white, swallowed. Interesting result, I said. Why yes, extremely so. You have a job that shouldn't be talked about in public, but you also show strong signs of dignity. A color like that. Okay. After that, I took a simple written test given to all students to test their literacy. And then I got my chance. Ga. Fi. Kia. I sparred with the students of the academy. They used the warriors hoping to get the sword princess hand in marriage to hone their students' actual combat experience. If the challenger lost the fight or were to be seriously injured, they would be disqualified. I, of course, passed without a problem. Even my mood has improved now. You are a very strange man. I was given a legal and official chance to punish the girl hanging around my son. If she wanted to become the Max Class Righteous Hero's daughter-in-law, then she needed to work on her pelvis. The final test was welfare. Sir Parpar. You are allowed to give a gift to Our Lady. If she likes your gift, you can skip the tournament and challenge her right away. That's called bribery. Ha ha ha. Knight L.S. expression made it clear he wanted to give me a piece of his mind, but he decided to just laugh it off. Hey race my gift. I handed over my ring. Are you serious? Asked Knight L., whose smile had disappeared. Royal family ring. Members of the royal family could be punished if it was passed on to the wrong hands. I answered cheerfully. He'll still get it back from her anyway. Delight, it's so romantic. Trainee teacher understands me. However, Night Owl didn't support my optimism. I have seen many young men from noble families who also gave their signet rings and then lost. I am different. They also said so at first. Let me give you a piece of advice, Sir Parpar. Don't confuse reality with fantasy. 
give it to her. I hope you don't regret it later. Lalikan. Let me give you a piece of advice, Count Loli. Sometimes reality is more like fantasy. The tournament was held the very next day. A friend of mine, the manager, assumed it would start only after four days. But it began much earlier thanks to the eight people who joined voluntarily after having their spines grabbed by the passing hero A. I was really lucky. Chapter, 310. 21st Round Finals. Greetings. Before you all are the 64 brave warriors permitted to join the tournament to earn the right to challenge our princess, whom we aptly nicknamed the Thorny Black Rose, for her hand in marriage. Let us welcome them. Boo. Boo. Combat in Fantasy, a place with few entertaining activities, was a welcomed event for locals. However, applicants who came to gain the favor of the Sword Princess, whom the people loved madly, were greeted with boos and angry exclamations. We were no different than some rogues trying to take away their favorite idol, whom they were crazy about, after all. How dare those pitiful commoners! As soon as I get her hand well see. Those s. The unwelcomed royals and nobles approached the arena, gritting their teeth and muttering curses. It wasn't surprising that most of the applicants had high statures in life. The minimum level for participation was 300. The top zero. 1% strongest individuals were concentrated among the nobility, knights, and wizards. Commoners in jobs such as agriculture, handicrafts, and fishing had few opportunities to level up. They could gain experience by ing animals, but in fact, men who hunted animals all their lives wouldn't even reach level 20. Everything is exactly as I remember. The fourth and fifth curriculums differed only in detail. The Sword Princess, who was actually a married woman and the mother of my son Chris, was now older and stronger. However, the difficulty of the tournament didn't increase that much. Boo! Boo! Even the crowd booing the participants was similar to the previous tournament. Regardless of who won and lost, the audience's attitude would remain the same, which only seemed fair. It would be bad when one was applauded, and the other was booed, after all. In the first round, even my companions argued that I couldn't win. All in all, the atmosphere was invigorating. The Sword Princess will be mine. Ha! Stop joking around. Behold, the power of my swordsmanship. It's time to unleash my sealed power. The contestants of the tournament finally clashed. The fights weren't that impressive because the rules forbade ing the opponent. Soon enough, my turn came. I present to you the 53rd participant. He hails from the Velo Estate, located at the north of the already cold northern continent. Please welcome Count Velo's second son, Harpy Hunter Kyo, with thunderous applause. And his opponent, the 54th participant whose origins can be traced back to Moscow. Sword King Parpar. Awesome nickname. Applaud him. Boo. Boo. Contender No. 53 and I, the max class righteous hero, went to the center of the arena as the audience warmly welcomed us. I decided that I would deal with the opponents in a fair fight without using the power of the demon lord and the hero. As soon as we got close, my opponent immediately tried to provoke me. By hunting harpies, I became stronger and even faster than the winds themselves. Try to keep up with my speed. He seemed confident in his speed. That was sewing that I was good at, too. I answered him with the righteous hero's smile. Is that so? Let's have a fair fight and put our spines on the line. Ah! Show me this faster than the wind speed of yours. I I G give up. He really was a windy man. Contender 53 gave up without even giving me a chance to grab onto his spine. Damn it! That was unexpected. Well since Harpy Hunter Kyo has surrendered, Sword King Parpar advances to the next stage of the tournament. He's really lucky to be able to save his strength for his next opponent. The first day of the tournament ended. I thought I would show them the power of the SS I learned from Master Malin. But I didn't even get the opportunity. We had to spend the night under strict guard in a temporary accommodation provided by the Duke Q Swordsmanship Academy. Participants could take care of their injuries, 
have their equipment repaired free of charge, and prepare for tomorrow's battles. However, it was impossible to relax. Because the battles took place not only in the arena. Ouch! My stomach! Is the soup poisoned? Who did this? Some participants complained of diarrhea. As far as I knew, one of the chefs took a bribe and put a laxative in the soup. But the tournament judge dismissed their complaints, advising them to solve the situation themselves using appropriate SS. As a result, three people withdrew from the tournament that night. People whose level had exceeded 300 would tell others that at that level, diarrhea was no longer terrible since they could now control many processes of the body through the help of SS. However, if there were level 300 individuals, there were laxatives made from the excrement of level 300 monsters as well. The next stages of the tournament went pretty quickly. 116 finals. I give up. 18 finals. Quarter finals. Hmm. Semi finals. KH. I finally caught one. I was glad that my friends, delighted by the righteous hero's smile, decided not to interfere with my objective and gave up, but this confused the public. This has to be some form of scam. How many times has this happened? The Sword King Parpar is Suyas. He's almost definitely a crook. Fortunately, the Suyan subsided when I managed to grab one of the participants by the spine before he could give up. My reputation as the perfect hero shouldn't be spoiled. When would these ignorant fantasy savages realize that admiration should be shown in moderation? Sixth day. The final stage had begun. Greetings to all of you attending the final stage of our tournament. Today, we shall witness a legendary being, the Sword King Parpar, fight off against a mysterious swordsman named Porori, who hails from the distant eastern continent. Whoever emerges victorious from this battle shall earn the right to challenge our mistress, the beautiful Rose, and the deadliest swordswoman across the lands of fantasy. Boo! Under the thunderous ovation of the speaker and the audience, the max-class righteous hero and the insignificant challenger A appeared and stood opposite each other. Since he made it to the finals, I checked his stats out of courtesy. Race, human. Level, 451. Job, brave everyone level 1. SS, sword mastery S, dual blade mastery A, dexterity A. Status, concentration, determination. So that was how he made it to the finals. Brave. If I encountered him during the first few days of my journey, I would never be able to defeat him. But now. He wouldn't even be suitable for my warm-up. My name is Porori. I'm the one who will soon conquer the Sword Princess. I don't know what tricks you used to get here, Sword King Parpar, but it won't work on me Tisk. Oh. I attacked Challenger A right in the middle of his fervent speech, but he dodged my surprise attack. Even though I wasn't even using a sixteenth of my strength, I still didn't think he would be able to dodge. However. There wouldn't be a second time. I immediately grabbed his neck between his sixth and seventh vertebrae, not giving him time to recover. I had no time to waste. Boom! Holding his neck, I pinned Challenger A to the ground. He had a pretty strong skull. You surprised me. K.H. You are the first to hold against Sword King Parpar this long. You can be proud of that. Challenger A, delighted by the max-class righteous hero's praise, couldn't find the right words to reply with. The fight is over. Everyone expected a fierce battle, but Porori, a swordsman from the east, couldn't cope with Sword King Parpar's sudden onslaught and was almost immediately defeated, leaving Sword King Parpar as the victor. Please support him with deafening applause. Oh. Hmm. Clap. 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 Among the spectators during the finals, the academy students who watch and learn from the experienced fighters gave me, the tournament's winner, a round of applause. One of them was my son. He seemed surprised. He probably caught and understood every move of the max class righteous hero. His talent was really impressive. But that was only natural, considering he inherited my spine. Ah, after the boring action scenes, the romantic part finally comes. Hmm. 
trainee teacher doesn't like action. I thought it was her style since she dreamt of becoming the hero's teacher. Difficulty, I didn't say I don't like it. I just love romance a little more, but not enough for me to neglect my work. They'll keep that in mind, trainee teacher. Embarrassment, and I think Cadet Kong Han Su's way of fighting with a righteous smile on his face is good for both action and romance. A man fighting for a lattice heart is attractive in itself. Am ready to fight for your heart, trainee teacher. Um. What? Sir Parpar, Par, would you mind letting go of poor Ori? It seems that he no longer has any air left in his lungs. Oops. I completely forgot about him since I was distracted by my conversation with the beautiful trainee teacher. Bam. Challenger A fell to the ground, gasping for air desperately. There was nothing I could do. It wasn't my fault that a level 451 fighter was that weak anyway. Ka ka. My brave friend. Ha. Huh. How did you know ka ka? Relying on your profession alone is foolish. The sword princess can't be defeated in such a primitive way, after all. After our fair fight, I went to rest as I waited for the romantic part trainee teacher liked so much. To save time, it would be nice to immediately ask for the hand of the sword princess, but the tournament had a specific schedule that I was instructed to follow. It was extremely rare for challengers to win the tournament without injuries, after all. Bruises, cuts, and broken bones were all common. Only in children's cartoons and books did the challenger's limbs remain unharmed after fierce combat. However, there were always exceptions. The long-awaited event soon took place. Behold! The beloved daughter of Duke Curiel, the northern continent's epitome of beauty, the warrior who single-handedly slew 954 ogres, the Order of the Black Rose's head, one of the three strongest knights of the northern continent, guardian of the eastern and northern continents, commander of the eastern legion, deputy commander of the northern legion. High priest of Malin's teachings, the rank two Malin paladin, bearer of Malin medal of honor, guardian goddess of Moskara, guardian of Curiel Manor, the magic sword master, snow queen Elza's friend, the snow mountain conqueror, the ice princess bailiff, the ice troll slayer, the spiked black rose sword, the legendary princess reincarnated almost two thousand years later. Countess Kaisa Curiel. Wow. Yes. A ah. Uh. Woo. The sword princess entered the arena to the enthusiastic cheers of the assembled spectators. Her black combat suit, which looked like a combination of a woman's dress and knightly armor, was impressive. That was thanks to Duke Q for persuading his daughter from completely hiding her body under her armor. Her golden hair was cut at shoulder height to keep it out of the way during battle. A typical female knight. But one shouldn't fall under the spell of this strong but beautiful woman. Deep down, she was a crazy who, through her own fault, appeared in a nightgown and tried to the hero who had to save the world. It was time for me to go out as well. Behold. The man who wants to win the heart of Countess Kaisa Curiel. Sword King Parpar of Moscow. Boo. The stupid crowd didn't even acknowledge the max-class righteous hero. Their attitude towards me wouldn't affect the outcome of the battle, but I decided to create a romantic atmosphere. Addicted spirit. He he he. My children. Support the drug hero with me. Pop. 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 As soon as the first spirit called them, innumerable spirits appeared in the air. Earth, fire, wind, water, soul. From inferiors to kings. They all filled the arena to cheer me up. 
The fantasy savages were speechless, but their silence didn't last long. The Soul Spirit King went to work, setting mind control in motion. The Sword King is so cool. Good luck, Sir Parpar. -par. You will definitely win. Long live Sword King Parpar. -par. I entered the arena to the cheers of the crowd, appearing before the Sword Princess. Hi. Do you call yourself the Sword King? Yes, why? As expected, my taunt worked. The Sword Princess face became flushed with anger as she glared at me. That nickname goes well with your barbaric face, Sir Parpar. Ha! Huh. What was this talking about? Had she gone completely crazy? Chapter, 311 Episode 210 21st Round Malin Paladin Empathy, as a trainee striving to be a teacher, I shouldn't show any special preferences to any particular student. However, I think that Cadet Kong Han Su, who frightens even evil spirits, really has the most handsome face. Rest assured that this opinion of mine will never affect my work. Thank you for the compliment, trainee teacher with the most beautiful body and soul. I am undeserving of it. I wanted to talk to her a little more, but I needed to deal with the cheeky sword princess who took me for a savage. Ha! Barbaric face. She should never have dared to say sewing so atrocious to me, a civilized man from Earth. This provocation was too obvious, but I decided to pretend that I, the righteous hero, was hurt. Be honest with yourself, drug hero. Shut up. He he he. How was I supposed to fight? If I used the wings of the righteous hero, it would attract too much attention. Additionally, if there were a brave user in the audience, they would be able to recognize me. I couldn't use the perfect holy sword either. It would serve as my main weapon in the future. If I showcased it here for all to see, it would be no different from admitting that I was the demon lord. Should I fight with my bare hands? It wouldn't work either. The sword princess had a very powerful sword. If I blocked her attacks with my bare hands, even stupid fantasy savages would find it odd. The tournament also specifically indicated that the Sword Princess had to be defeated in a sword fight. The Sword Princess herself would be cheating with her medium range attacks, though, but I didn't complain. I resolved my predicament. Hear me, Sword of the End, ruined by chaos and reforged on the stars of oblivion. I hereby declare that I remember your sacred name and praise you for your blade that cuts the bonds of meaningless friendship and love. Awaken from your slumber and prove that our legendary alliance has existed since time immemorial. Come forth and serve me once more, Holy Sword Nucleon. Pop! From the moment I got the wings of the righteous hero and the perfect Holy Sword, Nucleon became a useless piece of metal. Nevertheless, I pulled out the obsolete relic that had been gathering dust in the corner of the demon vault. Problem, I've always thought it's a beautifully designed Holy Sword, which is perfect for you. I pulled out the wondrous novelty of our era, stored in the demon vault. Holy Sword Nucleon This powerful holy sword, used by the elf hero, was created specifically to fight demon lord Pedinar. At one point, unable to prove its truest worth in the hands of its pathetic previous owner, it fell into the hands of the max-class righteous hero, receiving a second wind. And now it had once again appeared before the world upon being summoned by the max-class sword king Parpar. There was sewing I didn't like about the crowd's reaction, though. If the spirits didn't want me to chase them all away, they should get to work. Wow! Awesome! The audience immediately burst into thunderous applause. Much better. Holy sword. Since I'm going to face the strongest sword of the northern continent, conventional weapons will not work. Right. Okay. Enough evaluating each other it's time to start the battle. Agreed. I decided to seal my level and SS using only the strength of my body, which had evolved in accordance with the teachings of Master Malin. I didn't like pretending to be weak, but this was not a fight to the death. Hence, I had to be humble. Delight, Cadet Kong Han Su, it's very romantic of you to hold yourself back for her. Of course, trainee teacher. I already defeated the Sword Princess in the first round. However, back then, I made her my companion, not my wife. I wanted to return to Earth, 
after all, where my mother's tennis racket was waiting for me. I had no time to pretend to play. However, as my companion, she never admitted defeat and didn't trust me until the end. She called me a demon. I still remembered my first round's last day quite perfectly. The sword princess, who was always ready for my surprise attack, fell, resisting to the end. The mercenary king, sage, and elf queen weren't even aware of anything. They never imagined that I would attack them before defeating demon lord Pednar, who was trying to destroy the world. It was considered impossible to defeat him without companions, after all. That was why they were confident that I wouldn't touch them until this moment. But I broke those prejudices by ing them all. I was weak against magic, so I first dealt with Sage, breaking through his magic shield. Then I ed the elf queen Sylvia, who had enslaved the spirits with ease, considering she didn't have time to give the spirits any orders. Without them, her defense was weak. I targeted the sword princess next, then the mercenary king. He boasted the highest level of protection, which should have allowed him to survive my surprise attack, causing the battle to drag on. However, the sword princess was the only one who dodged my blow. She didn't panic and calmly reacted to my sudden barrage. Just like now. You're fast. The sword princess was a mid-range fighter. Although she used a sword, she didn't rush into close combat situations. She stepped back, keeping a small distance between us. And I continued to chase her. To avoid losing to the sword princess, one should always stay as close to her as possible. Phew. However, as I expected, she didn't allow me to approach her that easily. Without showing her back, she quickly stepped back, unleashing dozens of attacks in my direction with her sword energy. I knew that technique well. Sword Storm. That was the sword princess' favorite tactic. Since it didn't require any preparation time and its range was long, it couldn't boast great strength, but she could still unilaterally inflict damage on her opponent, preventing them from reaching her. Bang! 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 I tried to close the distance while blocking her bombardment using Nusalan, but she wasn't easy to catch. Our fight would have turned into an endless pursuit if we weren't dueling in a confined space. Oh. Everything was the same as the first round. The sword princess' eyes widened in surprise upon noticing it too late that she was being squeezed into a corner of the arena. This was probably the first time it had ever happened to her. It was time for close combat. Bam. Boom. Our swords collided. Her hand did not flinch, however, because of her magic sword. Usually, when one's stats increased, swordsmen switched to more suitable weapons for their new level, but the sword princess sword grew with her, letting her keep it from start to finish. This makes no difference. Ha! Huh. The sword princess unleashed another sword storm at me. In close combat, the strength of that technique of hers became completely different. However, I, the max-class righteous hero, didn't even flinch against its might. I pierced through her chest. The events that transpired were the same as before. The sword princess, unable to stop my offensive, would fall to the ground as her blood burst out, ultimately ending our bout. However. Malin swordsmanship, third form, Malin's unity. What? Why did such a great name come up at this time? When she muttered sewing like a spell, her movements accelerated greatly. Fighting off my holy sword Nucleon, which had pierced her chest, she swung her magic sword art diagonally. This was madness. Thinking I was up against the same old sword princess was too careless of me. Just as Sword King Alex and Phantom King Shakespeare became extremely powerful when they got married, no rule forbade the sword princess from becoming stronger as well. I lost sight of this. Malin's teachings had become widespread on the northern continent of fantasy. I should have paid more attention. High Priest of Malin's Teachings. Rank 2 Malin Paladin. Bearer of Malin Medal of Honor. The Sword Princess didn't have those titles in the first round. She probably gained them in the fifth curriculum. All the countries of the northern continent had made Malin's teachings their state religion. It should have been no surprise that the Sword Princess had assumed a leading role in it. Oh Great Master Malin. You always remind me, 
your humble student, the importance of vigilance. He always caught me off guard when I least expected it. His greatness knows no bounds. But for me, Master Mullen's first apostle, this was nothing but a trifling matter. My serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin, neurotransmitters that activated the brain, jumped into action. My muscles howled in pain, but my adrenaline and endorphins suppressed it. Of course, there was no need to be so zealous. However, the Sword Princess counterattack exceeded my expectations. Hence, from here on out, our battle would be fair and would put our pride as followers of Malin on the line. The veins in my temples bulged, and the muscles on my limbs became far more robust and rounded. Moving faster than the charging Sword Princess, I parried her blow then kicked her bare belly with all I had. Boom! Sent flying to the side, the Sword Princess rolled across the arena. However, she was able to stick her sword into the ground, stopping her from skidding further. Ka ka! You ceaselessly amaze me. She didn't approach her situation from a scientific perspective as I did. Rather, she took control over her autonomic nervous system by maximizing the usage of her strong willpower. Could it be called self-hypnosis? I saw firsthand how the inhabitants of the northern continent evolved, who came to believe in Master Malin. This was really impressive. K.H. Sir Parpar, you are indeed very powerful and beautiful in your own way. My heart raced every time I watched you suppress your opponents with a deep, bottomless gaze and a smile. However, I have a reason not to accept defeat. Reason? She didn't want to lose so desperately, as if someone had already taken over her heart. The sword princess condition had become deplorable after suffering greatly from my blow, though. Race, human. Level, 999. Job, knight devotion fortitude. SS, sword aura ZZ, fortitude ZZ, charm Z, willpower Z, gifted max. Status, dislocation, fracture, overworked, excited, determined. The sword princess was rumored to be level 500 but she was actually a transcendental person who had surpassed level 999. That was why the men that challenged her after hearing those rumors had no chance of winning. Naturally, if her soul were divided among the education courses, she would no longer be as strong. Regardless, she was nowhere near my league. The sword princess, whose spine broke upon being hit by just one blow from me, could now only stand on her feet thanks to her sword, which she now used as a cane. Croc Biara. The sounds of bones cracking and crunching echoed. After a short while, she pulled the magic sword iron from the ground and straightened her back. Fracture and dislocation disappeared from her stats. She, on her own, healed her herniated disc, countering my signature technique that had never let me down for the past two hundred years. I apologize, Sir Parpar. Hmm. Our fight should be fair and conducted with swords, but I used the power of Malin's teachings that I had sealed to try to defeat you. Is that so? I thought Master Malin's teachings were an all-encompassing art. The sword princess raised her weapon above her head. From now on, I shall fight you as a Malin paladin, not as the sword princess. I may seem to you like a spoiled lady trying to avoid marriage, but my heart already belongs to another man. And your body? I was really curious. The sword princess face flushed. Malin fencing, fourth form, Malin scalibur. WZZH. Light enveloped Iyer's blade and shot high into the sky. That power went beyond the sword princess abilities. Even I wouldn't like to get hit by it. I decided to use a trick of mine as well. Water spirit king. The water spirit king, who had been rubbing his cheek against my left armpit all day, immediately slipped between the sword princess legs. Holding magic sword are above her head with both hands, she couldn't prevent his invasion. Aeon. The outcome was amazing. Chapter, 312. Not a good time to roll your eyes. Oh. I brought the sword princess back to her senses, knowing full well she wouldn't have time to react. My left hand wrapped around her waist between her fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae, and my right hand lifted the tip of her chin. And our lips closed. Mm. Hmm. FSS. 
once her concentration was disrupted, the huge beam of light emanating from her sword, ready to destroy the entire arena, disappeared. This show was over. The audience was swallowed by complete silence. Because their invincible sword princess finally tasted the bitter taste of defeat. It was just the same as the first round. Only the final touch remained. I used the technique of the Max Glass Righteous Hero with 200 years of experience, the Death Kiss. Of course, I wouldn't her, but I sucked all the energy out of her to make sure she wouldn't be able to resist any longer. Hmm, wait a second. What? I recognize this technique. I didn't answer. Rather I just showed her my righteous hero's smile. Clang. The sword princess dropped her to the ground and wrapped her arms around my neck. This time, she clung to my lips. Give us a suitable atmosphere, soul spirit king. Wow. Parpar is the best. Long live the sword king. Be happy together. Ho ho. We, the Righteous Sword King and the Cruel Sword Princess, ended our grand duel to the enthusiastic cheers of the audience. Delight, it's really touching. Romancing her was easy, trainee teacher. The Sword Princess behavior was very strange. In the first round, she was a crazy who almost ed me for accidentally seeing her. Now, however, she was behaving so aggressively that she could be suspected of being addicted to exhibitionism. Moreover, the Sword Princess insisted that we skip the engagement ceremony, a common practice among the nobility, and get married as soon as possible. I didn't mind. After all, I didn't plan on staying here for long. And there was more. Sir Parpar, could you take off this strange ring? No. The Sword Princess didn't like the ring on my twenty-first finger. Even though she wanted to conceive a second child, I refused to leave behind another flawed soul in this wild world. Every hero needed to remember to be responsible. I do not recognize this strange man, Mom. Chris couldn't come to terms with my sudden appearance in his life. He was known to the locals as the younger brother of the Sword Princess, the illegitimate son of Duke Q. And he was his heir. The Sword Princess was supposed to be the one to inherit his estate, but the situation changed when she gave birth to a son early. He grew up to be a wonderful youth. And since some people were unhappy that Duke Q.S. territory would be passed down into the hands of a woman, he decided to make my son his successor instead. The Sword Princess didn't mind at all anyway. At first, there were even exclamations of discontent that he was an illegitimate child, but Duke Q quickly resolved this problem, calming everyone down. Chris, stop shouting and listen to me. No. I refuse to hear another word about this. Chris. It hurts me to look at him. Don't you love me? Please listen. And where is your submissive tone coming from? Oh. Showing off in front of your new man, huh? One more word on this topic, and I will you. That's more like you. The two quarreled. They had already reached the point where even outside interference wouldn't help. However, the Sword Princess was still an adult. She calmly reassured her son. Chris, listen carefully. He's your real father. You're lying. This guy doesn't look like me at all. My father? Just tell me that you like him more than me. Have I ever lied to you? Yes. For example. You said my father was the sweetest emperor in the world. How am I supposed to believe this now? That's actually true. In my dream, the one I saw was the sweetest and worthiest person in the world to become an emperor. All the inhabitants of the northern continent also believed. Enough. I've heard that story a bunch of times already. Oh, he was at that transitional age, huh? Chris refused to listen to his mother, no matter what she said. Their conversation was going nowhere. I just watched them silently. I didn't think my intervention would resolve the situation. This was not the first time I had witnessed my son's rebellious nature. When I set out to conquer the northern continent, I saw a young man on the side of the troops of the united northern continent. I knew by his spine alone that he was my child. Embarrassment, I think I've asked you this question before but is it really possible to deduce that through one spine? Of course, trainee teacher. 
That aside. Under the strict supervision of my mother's tennis racket, I grew up to be a decent son. On the other hand, the sword princess seemed to have failed to discipline our kid during his earlier growth stages. However, I dared not blame her. I was never there for him as his father. I had no right to say anything. And yet. Noisy young man. Why don't we put an end to this issue instead of constantly running your mouth? Or is your strong spine just for decoration? Fight me. If you win, he'll call off our marriage. Are you serious? I.D. gain nothing from lying. Did you really think a weakling can be your father? Feel free to me and tell everyone that I died in an accident if you so desire. If you can, that is. Th that sounds too cruel Chris flinched as he stared at me with a confused expression on his face. But he knew I wasn't lying. He was young and naive, yes, but he was not stupid. So. Do you agree? All right. I'm in. Good. It'll give you until the wedding. Challenge me anytime. Then let's have a go at it right now. That was within my expectations. My son inherited the sword princess impatient personality. Doubt, I don't think that's the case. Really? Well, if the intelligent trainee teacher says so. Duke Q and the environment influenced him, then. Confusion, oh sure. Let's go with that. Chris and I stood facing each other in the center of a special training center built specifically for the Sword Princess. A fight between a 220-year-old and a 15-year-old. If my son were the main character of mangas or novels, he would have overcome that gap in experience, allowing him to win, but his reality was far too cruel. He'll let you go first. You'll regret that. You talk a lot. I hid my true power to surprise my mother, but to defeat you, I am ready to unleash it now. Knock yourself out. I was curious. What was the power he was hiding from the sword princess? When I first saw him, he didn't show anything like that. Shuck. Preparing to fight his father, Chris bared his torso. Was he doing a striptease? I doubted it. Kara. A pair of bony wings grew from the boy's back. Pale pink membranes stretched between the bones that formed the structure of his new appendages, though they resembled a spine and were completely exposed. There were no sharp thorns that punished all evil on the tips of his bones, but still. This is definitely. There is a legend that originates on the northern continent 2000 years ago. The hero, the first apostle of the great master Malin, was its max-class forerunner. Omitted by distributing flush toilets for the benefit of humanity, he finally defeated the demon lord Pedinar. However, the demon lord cursed the hero, turning him into the second demon lord and changing his name to Parmamon. He had no demon horns. However, his terrifying wings protruding from his back made even demons tremble in fear. With one flap of his wings, he swept away dragons, brought the giant king of the southern continent to his knees, and nearly destroyed the eastern continent. Omitted they feared and trembled before the demon lord's dreaded wings. Those who survived that waking nightmare must had their luck SS rank soaring to the skies. Ha! Some parts of the story were different from what actually happened, making me wonder who the author or the bard that spread this legend was. If I met him, I would like to gently touch his spine. That's why you can't be my father. I am the descendant of the demon lord Parmamon, who appeared in my mother's dream. I am a symbol of misfortune, born and trampled upon the future of a girl who dreamed of marrying a prince on a white horse. You are deceiving my mother by calling yourself my father, so I can never accept you. Chris. I have never considered myself unhappy. And the princes are ugly idiots that do nothing but try to suck up to me whatever means possible. Don't lie. The princes who offered you a hand and a heart were some of the most handsome men on the northern continent. Those pompous turkeys are not my type. Sir Parpar, on the other hand M.M. Mom. Wake up. I'm perfectly fine, but I'm surprised you kept such a secret from me. Well tisk. Anyway. My son Chris turned to me after the sword princess defeated him in an argument. Looking at him, I even felt pride. 
Race, Dual Core Chaos Man. Level, 249. Job, Prince National Power Willpower. SS, Divinity ZZ, Dark Energy ZZ, Z, Gifted Z, Omnipotence Max. Status, Activation, Demon Blood, Divine Blood. He had excellent stats, which meant he inherited the Max Class Lovable Emperor's genes. I didn't think he would inherit even the Black Box, though. With such abilities and talent, he would be able to surpass me in 5,000 years. It was scary. My son, at 15, achieved what I achieved at 50. Denial, I don't think so. He only followed the path that Cadet Kong Han Su paved. In not turning a blind eye to Chris' efforts, but the day hell overtake you will never come. If I'm wrong, I'm ready to go on a date with you and console you. Oh, son. Pull yourself together. Do your best to become stronger than your father, even if that means completely wearing out your spine and grinding it to dust. Admiration, haha. <laughs> that being said, I'm actually pretty surprised. I thought you were joking about the similarity of your spines, but the moment I looked at his wings, I just knew you two were related. That's what I've been telling you, trainee teacher. However, I did not know that he would inherit the wings of a just hero. Interest, are you going to show him your wings now and say, I am your father? Beautiful trainee teacher seems to have seen too many dramas like my cowardly wife. I wasn't going to show him my wings to make sure head fight in full force, driven by the thought of saving his mother from a random rogue. It was time to start raising my son. What wonderful wings! These are the wings of the cursed demon lord. Appreciate the power you inherited from your parents even if it is useless baldness. Honor them the best you can. Let's just begin. Unable to oppose my logic, Chris rushed forward sharply. Phew. He even sped up using his wings. His efforts were all in vain, however, considering I had the spirits on my side. Air resistance would slow him down. Or so I thought. At that moment, the first spirit said sowing strange and surprising. My children can't decide who to help, drug hero. Hmm. It seemed that he even inherited my hormones, which were so attractive to spirits. I was proud of my son, who had the same spine as I did, but he was beginning to seem more like an identity thief. The time had come to demonstrate the strength of his father. This wasn't a sword fight, so I didn't need a weapon. My right hand was enough. He copied me, but he didn't have enough experience. After absorbing the hero's souls at my infernal senior's house, my combat experience grew so much that it became worth hundreds of thousands of years. That was a fundamental difference between us. You're too arrogant. Ah. That's probably because you haven't met a master who can't be defeated yet, no matter how hard you try. It's time to show you. The ravine that divided our leagues. Our battle ended in no time. I didn't even have to use my strength. I did a pirouette like a ballerina, grabbing Chris by his wings and tossing him to the ground. Fa. He had no idea how to use them. For him, it only strengthened his SS. But our wings were an absolute weapon, especially against punishing evil. Of course, knowing how to use them wouldn't have changed the outcome. For me, the messenger of justice, they posed no threat. Bang! With my elbow, I hit the joint where his wings and spine connected, ending his struggle. You're too inexperienced. I'm not done yet KHH. Trying to get up, he screamed and fell again. I watched him in silence. However, he couldn't rebuild his spine on his own as the sword princess did. Before arguing who your father is, learn first from your mother. Ah, my loins. You lack faith. You wouldn't have lost so quickly otherwise. All you do is suckle on your mother's breasts it's time I put a stop to it. Leave her boobs to me and focus on praying earnestly to Malin. Stop joking around Aag. I had finished disciplining and educating my son. I walked out of the training center, hugging the sword princess around her waist. It was a sunny bright day in the yard, but this wasn't an obstacle for the Max-class demon lord, who ruled the darkness. When I snapped my fingers, the world was plunged into darkness, almost as if a solar eclipse occurred. 
Now that the world could no longer see me, I unfurled my wings with pride. The wings of the righteous hero. I soared into the skies, still holding the sword princess in my arms. Your wings are the ones the legends speak of. I supposed you're delighted to meet the sweetest emperor in fantasy again, sword princess. Do I have to say it out loud? It was a rhetorical question. Chapter, 313. 21st Round The Tower of Sage. Question, are you sure you want to leave them like this? It's alright, trainee teacher. I had spent enough time with the sword princess. Her influence on the northern continent was strong, which meant she'd be fine. I also taught my son a lesson that would make him even stronger within a year. How did it go, cowardly hubby? I don't understand what you mean. Two days after the grand wedding, I quietly escaped at dawn and reunited with Soja, waiting for me outside the estate. Stop fooling around. You know what I mean. Better yet, why don't you tell me about Lenovo? I couldn't find her. But the hero summoning magic circle was definitely activated. I have a feeling that won't be the last time, too. So, how's the sword princess? She's in good health. She had a very strong spine and excellent regenerative abilities. What's with that answer? I'm just telling you how it is. She's the first ever to heal from a herniated disc instantly. Humph. If you don't want to talk about it, then don't. Do you want to hear that your pelvis is more beautiful? What? Don't make me sound like a lustful, love-hungry demon. Heh. She denied it, but my cowardly wife's sullen expression betrayed her. T.S.K. Tell me openly that you couldn't find your place because of jealousy. Where did that stupid assumption come from? I am not at all offended by my husband who conceived a child with someone else then returned to her for marriage. Ugh. Being popular is so difficult. Do not flatter yourself. We moved swiftly while talking to each other. The first spirit, who had been lazing around on my head all day and sniffing at me, asked a good question for the first time in a long time. Where are you going, drug hero? To the Tower of Sage. We went to the Magic Kingdom city where Sage, the strongest wizard of the fourth curriculum, lived. When we entered the fifth curriculum, connoisseur Shakespeare took his throne, but that didn't mean Sage was weak enough to be ignored. Moreover, this was the northern continent, an area in which he had great influence. There were other reasons as well. Like. Have you finally calmed down? Ack. Stop teasing me unless you want me to tell your mother that she's got another daughter-in-law. Just remember that I've already created my own messenger account. That's too cruel. My cowardly wife not only poked my side but also decided to blackmail me. Even for a demon, she was stooping too low. I just need to take a photo of her so I can provide evidence. I apologize. Hey, hubby I'm not complaining, but didn't you give up too quickly? It's because I'm a good son. And totally not because mom's tennis racket scared me. I think I've said this before, but your stories make it sound like your mom can split the universe in half with her tennis racket. You've read too many novels, Soja. My mother was an ordinary housewife who had her apron taken away from her by my father even though she was a great cook. She didn't have the ability to tear apart the universe. She couldn't even cut carrots on a board, let alone the universe. By the way, hubby, why did you decide to meet Sage? As with the Sword Princess, do you want to reveal your true identity and ask for cooperation? What? How do you know that, Soja? I don't know what you're talking about. My cowardly wife was immediately embarrassed. All the evidence pointed to her guilt, but her compassionate Max-class husband decided to turn a blind eye to this. For as long as she didn't tell my mother anything, that is. The reason for meeting him is simple. The hero summoning magic circle requires many rare catalysts. When I was looking for ways to get home during my first round, I realized how rare and valuable those objects are. Therefore, if we assume that Lenovo created this circle in the usual way, then Sage most likely helped her in this. I get that, but will he even be honest? He can just falsify the ledger. Since when did you become so smart? This is nothing for the hero's ideal wife, 
even though I didn't even have a grandiose and important wedding ceremony. It seemed like she was obsessed with this a lot. I thought she should just focus on being happy since I found her pelvis the perfect one out there for me instead of thinking about such a burdensome ritual like a wedding. But my wife, like the nobles, seemed to suffer from vanity. How should I calm her down? At that moment, a flying stingray caught my eye. Say X. Exactly. That was the answer. I gave you an expensive foreign car, cowardly wife. I am indeed a successful woman who received a space horse from her husband. There is no need to rush the wedding ceremony. We have to make it grand, after all. Yes, yes. Although she hadn't shaken off her strange obsession with the wedding, she still seemed to be satisfied and couldn't get over the horse yet. Every time trends changed, so did a thriving industry. A city and province's economic rise and fall depended on which industry they specialized in. Agriculture, tourism, industry, information services, gambling, leisure, fishing, trade. However, in any industry, the one who took the leading position would have the power to survive any crisis. This rule also applied to the fantasy world. This rundown town is the Tower of Sage. Rundown or not, this is definitely it, my hubby who gave me a spare horse. Say X. The Tower of Sage I knew was the jewel of fantasy. Now, however, it was more like a manor house with a pagoda that could be found anywhere on the northern continent. It's worth investigating. Stop before your hand slips off again, hubby. Why should I? Your wife shall interview the locals herself with her space horse, which is a sign of success for women. Okay. I decided to trust Soja, who for some reason emphasized being a successful woman. At least she wouldn't run around and agree to the locals' every request, which my companions did in my first round, ultimately making my life much more difficult. But I was still interested to see what Soja would do. She wagged her pelvis. At that moment, the first spirit spoke up. Although my niece looks pathetic, please do your best to understand her, drug hero. She's always been jealous of her friend, who achieved success much earlier than others. Which friend? I'm not sure, but she's probably the one who gave my niece her slime. I see. It was hard for me to imagine. Who was this person who was able to assign Master Malin to Soja as her mentor? Whoever she was, she was apparently a very successful friend. I beg your pardon, but can I ask you a question? Hmm. Oh, a goddess. If you stare at me so openly, my husband, a jealous type, might break your spine. Ahem. So, can I ask you a question? Sure. The opportunity to communicate with such beauty is a great honor and joy for me. You are the second most beautiful woman I have ever met. Ask me anything. Thank you. Now, then. Soja, who hit her horns and changed her skin color to be human-like, caught a random passerby on the street and started asking him about various matters. Name of this place, feudal lord, job, history. Eavesdropping, I realized that my guess was correct. Sage's tower had lost its position at the top. Worried about his spine, the random passerby said sewing interesting. Madam, haven't you heard the saying, magic in the west, Malin in the north, which has become popular lately. In the fourth curriculum, the northern continent was considered the home of magic. And the Tower of Sage was considered the most advanced city in terms of magic on the northern continent. However, it was just an ordinary rural town now, which such beauties like Soja would never visit. By your standards, there are no cities in the world of fantasy that you would not consider rural, drug hero. Of course, addicted spirit. The only exception is the capital of the Eternal Night Empire on the Western Continent. Shakespeare's wife was definitely a beautiful woman, but not as beautiful as Soja. However, she had the potential to become the first and most beautiful woman, while the curse of being second forever bound Soja. Are you insulting me in your thoughts again, cowardly hubby? No. TSK. Ill let it go. Let me summarize the information I've gathered. History has changed since one of the five great disasters, the Phantom King, became the connoisseur. I already know that. 
The northern continent was famous for the fact that many people were born here predisposed to magic, which is why this place's magic industry used to be so advanced the current birth rate didn't change. But this place is experiencing a decline since all of its wizards keep leaving for the western continent once they have raised enough money for training. Instead, religion came to the forefront. Right. The main religion of the northern continent is Malin's teachings, which my husband preaches. As it turns out, I raised God. Malin. Master Malin, sitting in Soja's arms, swayed happily from side to side. So Sage also went to study abroad. Well. Come on, out with it. It doesn't really matter anyway. Sage fell morally. We can put it that way. As I said, nothing special weight. Fell morally. Sage. Yes. I couldn't believe it. Sage, a man so innocent that his nose bled whenever he saw women's underwear, had become a scoundrel. How was this possible? Soja's tone sounded bitter. That's what always being second can do. If someone who thought they were the best were to be suddenly overshadowed by a person even better than them and consequently lost everyone's support due to the fact. They would be left with two options. They would either try their best to regain the leading position or compromise the opponent to look better against them. And if one was impatient, they could do both at the same time. Sage. The girl I was supposed to meet today is missing. Please help, Sage. My sister is missing. I haven't seen my daughter since yesterday. Please find her, Sage. In the fourth curriculum, the entire city was called the Tower of Sage, but now only the tower in the city's center bore that name. That served as evidence that Sage's social status fell significantly, but this didn't mean he was forgotten. He was still in second place, after all. He appeared in response to the complaints of the townspeople. During the fourth curriculum, he would rarely leave the tower whenever someone called him. Now, he would almost jump down from it. He still looked like an innocent youth, but... The disappearance of young women in the city has continued since last year. It must be the work of the Western continent's Shakespeare, the evil wizard. Rumor has it that he is sacrificing young and beautiful women to demon Lord Parmamon. Even now, both of his nostrils were plugged with scraps of paper. That aside, what he said sounded funny. Physically speaking, Shakespeare could never kidnap women from such a distant country and somehow donate them to me. There was no point in it in the first place. Such lies. Sage was still far from my fabrication and incitement's ranks. Elaborate on the instructions you gave Shakespeare through the Molenphone, cowardly hubby. Why should I do such nonsense, Soja? Because you are Kong Han Su. Is that logic from some parallel universe? Humph. My wife seemed determined to just piss me off, unlike the silly fantasy dwellers. Is this the handiwork of Shakespeare? That's it. That envious married man is to blame for everything. Only Sage should be trusted. Connoisseur Shakespeare now lived with the most beautiful woman on the western continent. What made it better was that she never grew old and could only drink her husband's blood. But he sparked a flurry of anger in a rural town on the northern continent. It was an incomprehensible phenomenon. If such durable agitation and lies flourished on the northern continent while the connoisseur and I were doing our research, we definitely would have noticed it. Then the reason why this could happen was. Bug. Husband. Soja and I expressed our opinions at the same time. However, our opinions did not coincide. I really had nothing to do with it. Chapter, 314. 21st round what a meeting. What should I do with him? Sage was easy to deal with. I could just cross him out of the fifth curriculum forever. However, it wouldn't provide the best results. This wasn't my adventure, after all. I was just trying to help my junior colleagues. It shouldn't be forgotten that Sage was one of the hero's companions. To please Molensoft, I had to create an educational environment where the heroes could learn about love and friendship while effectively increasing their combat power. So far, everything had been going well. Is this really okay, hubby? You crossed out the Sword Princess wedding event from the curriculum, even though there were no problems with it before. Don't worry about it. 
I've taken everything into consideration. We were now faced with a serious problem. If the hero believed Sage's words and engaged in a battle with the connoisseur, their journey would end on the same day. Shakespeare was different from my father-in-law. He didn't send his subordinates, the power of which always equaled the heroes, to battle. Rather, he moved to the front lines himself. And that wouldn't be where their worries ended. From a satellite located in space, a beam could easily destroy the heroes, instantly ing them. There would be no hopes or dreams for them. Yes, this is really serious, hubby. But I assume you've already found a solution. Naturally. The fifth curriculum lacked enemies' textbooks that the hero student had to overcome. The five great disasters had disappeared from the curriculum. The former ice dragon who ate the snow woman even disappeared completely from the northern continent. Hence, we needed a new enemy who would stand in the way of the hero. Fallen Sage. He was unable to marry and lost the opportunity to become an archmage, eventually losing his mind and becoming the cursed mage. That's over. I am the max class hero. Here in fantasy, no one could rival my fabrication and incitement. I prevented wars and arranged political marriages while my companions did nothing but. Political marriages? What if the woman is unhappy? That's never been the case. If anyone looked at my second round, they'd understand that I had never arranged marriages that would make the couple unhappy. The harmony of yin and yang was very important. I didn't want anyone else to suffer from a problematic marriage like mine. Problematic? How so? Even when I tell my wife she has the most beautiful pelvis, she never believes me. She's got the max-class righteous hero as her husband, whom she doesn't deserve, but the cowardly demoness never ceases to be unhappy anyway. That's a lie. You refuse to believe me again. It'll always be second. This is the fate prepared for me by the universe. My husband definitely has a woman he loves more than me. Soja's logic was understandable. She was the second demon. She'd always be second, so she didn't believe me. But I had sewing to oppose her reasoning. How can you be jealous of your mother-in-law, Soja? That's horrible. Disgusting niece. How can you be jealous like this? Honestly and impartially assessing the situation, even the first spirit did not take her niece's side. Soja was surprised. Mother-in-law. My mother is also a woman. My wife couldn't refute the perfect counterargument of her max-class husband. Do you still have sewing to say? Ahem. I guess I was wrong. Since I'm cursed to always be second, I've always been pessimistic about ranks. I understand now, though. Despite having already heard from you, my husband, about your mother, I still regarded you with Suyin. Looking back, I understand that it was really stupid, the cowardly demoness exclaimed, looking at me with twinkles in her eyes. She even went on the offensive, pulling her max-class husband's right arm up to her pubic bone. What are you doing? For the first time since birth, I feel like I'm first. Okay, just don't bother. I can't concentrate on my work. Is it difficult to concentrate when your beloved wife is nearby? If maternal love were pushed aside, naturally, Soja would be the first. She was second, but still first. Her eyes showed madness beyond obsession. This is already serious. Perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. You must be upset because your work won't allow you to give me the attention I deserve. You love me too much, after all, my hubby. That's why for your sake, I shall use fabrication and incitement myself. Oh. No need to thank me. For the first wife, such housework is child's play. Okay. It would be difficult to calm Soja in her current state. The first spirit sympathized with me. My niece being sweet scares me, drug hero. Well let's see what shall do. I was curious. As the first wife, she decided to use fabrication and incitement herself. God's messenger descended upon us. Creator God of fantasy. Ah. It's a miracle. My God, is this not a dream? As I expected, the cowardly wife had very sneaky tactics. Using another personality, the creator God of fantasy, 
she sent a message to all the temples at the northern continent. What was its content? Sage has gone mad. Sage is a swindler. We need to drive out Sage. Soja didn't present any clear evidence or witnesses before the idiotic fantasy inhabitants, but her title was above law and logic. What better proof could they desire than the words of God? With direct fabrication and incitement, she destroyed Sage's reputation. But since Malin's teachings was the popular religion on the northern continent, the effects of her actions were weak. All nations would have rushed to Sage already otherwise. However, he was at least put in a situation where he couldn't fix or do anything. What's going on here? Locking the entrance to the tower and strengthening its walls, he fell into confusion. I couldn't blame him. Creator God Fantasy, who had no reason to be angry with him, suddenly pointed at him and said, he's a scoundrel. Thus, raising his karma to SS rank. If Sage knew the reason behind it, he would have been even more shocked. You can now spend time with me, hubby. Hmm. Fine, we can have fun just for today. Yees. Let's go. Your beloved wife will indulge you all day. Aren't you being too submissive? Im in the first place. Nothing else matters. I felt bad for Sage, a bachelor, but I had a good day today since my wife followed my every order. I should skip the details. Delight, Counselor Soja is amazing. No matter how hard the man I loved asks me to do what she just did, I'd never be able to do it out of sheer embarrassment. What I saw is beyond imagination. Did you see it? The power of love is very dangerous, trainee teacher. While I frolicked with my wife, Sage trapped himself in his tower. But it wasn't over yet. We didn't find the girls that Shakespeare allegedly kidnapped. They were not in the tower. Because when Soja and I entered it, there were only empty prison cells and ropes on the floor. And the security system was weak. Soja. All right. Soja, having read my mind, waved her magic wand. BR. Sage's squalid tower was reconstructed in no time, turning it into a dungeon. Sage is ideal for the role of a lustful maniac, considering his nose bleeds at the sight of alluring women. He was once appointed as one of the companions, which was amazing. But now, I felt like he got the role that was originally intended for him. The Sage's Tower dungeon would start accepting stupid heroes next year. If we can find an accomplice who kidnaps women, our problem will finally be solved, Soja added. It won't take long. It's time for the local spirits to investigate. Pop. Pop. Spirits lived everywhere. There were more of them than there were surveillance cameras in modern cities. However, their knowledge was sketchy. Just as we didn't care about the lives of insects in our apartments, spirits took no interest in the lives of humans. However, through their combined efforts, they would be able to gather enough information. They just needed motivation. If you want to see the second episode of your niece's secret entertainment, Addicted Spirit, you better start gathering useful information. Paid subscription for innocent spirits? This is too much. The first spirit seemed outraged. How can you spy on your niece's private life, auntie? Soja immediately exclaimed. My niece. Spirits are naive and do not know what that is. You were amazing yesterday, though. The way you arched m. Don't remind me. While my red-faced wife covered her aunt's mouth with her hand, the innocent spirits gathered information. Soon enough, their efforts' results came flooding in. Spirits are really naive. How could the first spirit expect the second episode if my cowardly wife didn't like it? I never said I didn't like it. He he he. Stop laughing, auntie. I'm just in a good mood, my secretive niece. Oh. I immediately went to the place the spirits told me about. Our accomplice was at the general store near the Tower of Sage. Many reports from the spirits indicated that a female human kidnapped girls from the city and took them there. We would soon find out who she was. I opened the door of the general store and entered it slowly. Sorry. There was noise in the street with the townspeople and soldiers surrounding Sage's tower, 
but it was quiet in this one-stop shop that could be found anywhere in the world of fantasy. They bought goods at a low price and sold them at a higher price. Items that might be considered garbage by some might be someone else's treasure. A customer. How may I help you huh? Laying out her products on the display case, the shop owner immediately froze in place when she turned her head to look at me. This is our first meeting, charming lady, but did you recognize me right away? And no I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. FSKH. The pretentious young lady ran away with incredible speed. Bam. However, she soon crashed into an invisible wall and collapsed on the floor. Give it up. What the hell the shopkeeper became furious, though she calmed down as soon as she saw my righteous hero's smile. Soja came in next. Ah. You. Even my cowardly wife recognized her. The shopkeeper's face turned white. Today was our first meeting. That was for sure. However, this wasn't the first time this lady and I had spoken. What are you doing here? The representative of the harem who threw the first hero's brooch in the trash can or should I call you a member of the faculty? Eek. Our future accomplice, who instigated Sage to commit this crime, wasn't a bug or Lenovo. My instincts had already allowed me to deduce her real identity. Nice to meet you, teacher morals. She taught ethics and morality to inexperienced heroes wandering in the world of fantasy. Our meeting gladdened me so much that I was at a loss of what to do. Are you sure you want to turn this meeting into a farewell this fast, hubby? What? Oh. I'm sorry, teacher morals. I put her fourth lumbar vertebra back in place. There's one more. What do you mean, Soja? Are you suspecting me of sewing bad again? Look at your left hand. Ah, her fifth vertebra. This is a gift from my favorite teacher. You can even ask her yourself. She's passed out. She just decided to sleep since she's tired. If you want to keep your title as my most beloved wife, you have to look at the world with a little more optimism. Is that so? Yes. Being the first wife is difficult, but I can handle this. My wife's euphoric state would probably last for quite some time. Chapter, 315. 21st Round Consultation Fee. As soon as Teacher Morals opened her eyes, she realized she had been rendered immobile by spinal problems. Hence, she immediately started lecturing me. How long had it been? Listen carefully, student Kong Han Su. They say there is no happiness in comfort, for it is brought forth by suffering. Oh. Then you will be very happy. Having herniated discs would teach her that true pain could penetrate even her very bones. Our relationship began to deteriorate from the second round when she first made contact with me. If I had just finished my studies, we could have parted on a good note. It had been two hundred years now. And that was surmountable to the colossal duration of twenty years on earth. The director was the one that had to be blamed the most for what happened to me, but teacher morals still contributed to it since she didn't teach properly. Student Kong Han Su just couldn't cope with the curriculum. Maybe. However, if one called themselves a teacher, they should know how to teach even the students lagging behind. A rank hero Sieg, introduced to me by teacher morals to learn the right course of action from him, was now forever stuck in primary education. In other words, before judging a student's ability to learn, it was worth first looking at whether the teacher was really up for the job. That is also your fault. How so? Your class activity was to imitate student Sieg, but you influenced him badly instead. That's make-believe, and you know it. Teacher Morals insisted that I somehow influenced Sieg, but we had little in common. He loved elves so much that he betrayed his people. What about combat power? Even after I got married, I still constantly developed. On the contrary, developing only male strength, he became a punching bag after marrying Sylvia. And we had a different approach to our journey as heroes. I didn't waste precious time trying to save one or two locals, which was the exact opposite of his actions. Need more explanation. You made a punching bag out of him. It's okay to love elves. His journey didn't go as planned, and that's why he betrayed humanity. 
If I gave up because my journey didn't go as planned, I would have given up thousands of times during my first round. Not certainly in that way. What? You should have surrendered right away. Oh. Advising you to end your life when you were unaware of the concept of regression would have been weird, but your first round was terrible. You should have abandoned the path of the hero and lived a normal life Kia KH. God. Don't twitch. She had a misaligned fifth vertebra in her lumbar spine, disabling her from supporting her upper body. You're the one who grabbed me. I don't want to leave such a good teacher with amazing logic lying on the floor. Teacher Morals, now seated on a chair, sweated profusely. The problem is that you defeated the demon lord by choosing the most difficult path and discarding everything you were taught. You cannot issue a diploma to a student who has zero points. The fantasy institution is not a place to educate elite soldiers to defeat the demon lord. Here, we guide students towards the right path, working not only on their strengths but also on their personalities. I remember how you ran away all the time, telling me you have a lot to do, but your stream of words can't seem to be stopped at all today. Strength and personality, huh? Strength is relative, and personality is absolute. However, when it comes to evaluations, strength is objective, and personality is subjective. You ran away every time and lost touch with your student. Someday I would tell others about my first round. Many times, like parrots, the locals, frightened by the cruelty and strength of the hero's party, said only one phrase, thank you so much for your help. And the hero's companions, drunk with complacency, never looked back. They were not interested in the further fate of the countries, cities, and people they supposedly saved. They seemed to think that once they had saved them, they would forever live in bliss. They carried such terrible ignorance and blind faith that surpassed even fanaticism. What the hell do you even know, student Kong Han Su? Professor Morrill exclaimed. Surprise me. Ha! You said that you have too little time to save the locals yourself. However, the average student does a lot of good deeds. Defeating bandits, punishing loan sharks, preventing political marriages, eliminating slave traders, and reforming countries. The bandits may have reasons why they have come to such a life, the usurers have families to feed, and a political marriage can save an entire country. Slave traders. First, you need to check the laws of each country to determine if it is a crime for them. Heroes shouldn't even be reforming countries. Those in this profession should carefully listen to the opinions of experts and the masses, assess the situation from different points of view, and only then begin to act. They shouldn't rush headstrong with only the power of friendship in mind. We looked at each other for a long time, without saying a word. The first to open her mouth was teacher morals. I am a teacher. And? I always try to understand what's on my students' minds. Go on. But I can't understand student Kong Han Su at all. Not even a little. Yes. The hero cannot provide perfect assistance to all the locals. If they do what I mentioned, the adventure will drag on so long they'll gain no progress rendering them unable to defeat the demon lord. Ha ha ha. What's so funny? I did not expect this, but you think like me. I I think like you. That is a very unpleasant remark. Why unpleasant? You said it yourself just now. ITLL take too long. I think you finally get it. ITLL take too long. If so, then a question arises. What is a hero? Are they just mercenaries who carry out orders, but for free? I remember extensively arguing against my companions about this. What are you trying to say? I came to one conclusion. Heroes need to do what only a hero is capable of. Defeat the demon lord with the support of the hero perk, which boosts their experience gain by fivefold, allowing the hero to gain swift victory over the demon lord. My god! She was stunned, like a lamb seeing a lazy god. Hey, hubby. Soja, who had previously only listened to us, suddenly intervened. I think you misunderstood the essence of the hero's 5x experience game multiplier perk. Misunderstood? It wasn't implemented for the sake of defeating the demon lord as quickly as possible. 
it didn't even exist at all before. Back then, students had to train all day, which made most of them give up. It was designed to provide students with a sense of accomplishment while providing free time. And for that, they needed a five-fold experience gain. Yeah. I'm shocked. I thought the concept was very different. I assumed that in 10 hours of training, one could pump 100s mastery. For me, Hero was a special training profession that allowed me to train for 10 hours every day to gain 500s mastery. However, other heroes trained for 2 hours to gain 100s mastery and spent their remaining 8 hours on love and friendship with their companions. It looks like you finally get it. Your way of training is wrong. I understand now. Glad to hear it. I understand the difference in our views. I don't think my way is wrong at all. You're just as much of a mistake of our school as the first hero. That's why I took the risk of coming here. A teacher breaking school rules. It was really curious. Faculty members were bound by school rules, which prevented them from interfering with the student's educational process. But teacher morals, who entered the world of fantasy, not only opened a grocery store but also prompted Sage to incite and concoct. This was a clear, out of bounds interference. Don't insult me. I have never broken school rules and didn't break any this time either. A classroom without students is just a normal room. Aha. It sounded like a play on words, but I understood what she meant. The world of fantasy collapsed whenever the hero died, but now we had gone a year in the past where there was no hero. And the world was all right. In other words, there may be more teachers across the continents of fantasy looking for the first angel. The director? Yes. While we are preparing for Molensoff's inspection team, teachers and school staff are trying to find her before investors come in and offer an alternative. Is that so? They interfered with my activities. But this was also an opportunity to deal with the faculty members who were distorting fantasy. Despite having two divine powers, I still couldn't enter the teacher's lounge. Now, however, they voluntarily walked out of its safety and into my territory. Are you going to go looking for them, cowardly hubby? No. I didn't need to look for them. It was quite obvious where and what the teachers and staff of the school were doing. They didn't have many goals. Connoisseur Shakespeare. Sword God Alex and Snow Woman. Black Dragon Noebius. The Sword Princess and our son Chris. Giant King Phoenix. Snow Queen Elsh. Queen of Wisdom Malfaritia. The list was longer than I thought. There might be others, including the overlord stationed in the demon lord's tower, but if they wanted to harm me, the ones I mentioned would attack them. But they wouldn't make a mess in this world. School teachers and staff also wanted the school to prosper. They only feared that its ownership would pass from the director to the demon lord. It is necessary to beautifully pack teacher morals so she can be used as a bargaining chip later. The first hero will love this. Wait a second. Student Kong Han Su. FSUH. I tore off any unnecessary clothes she had to minimize her weight, carefully tied her with red tape, then put her in the demon vault. Soja stared at me in surprise. You forgave her easily for some reason. Me? When? You fixed her fifth vertebra. My strength is imprinted on her spine. She would never get back on her feet again. Ah. Let's finish the work we started. Clap. We went down to the basement of the store where the abducted women were being held. In films and short stories, the prisoners were beautifully packaged and awaiting rescue, but in reality, things weren't so beautiful. They couldn't move because their arms and legs were tied, so their asses were stained with their own feces. The power of thought couldn't stop physiological processes. Their eyelids were swollen since they had been crying non-stop, their eyes were empty, and their nails and teeth with which they tried to cut the ropes were broken and bleeding. Some of them had even already died. There were buckets of water and cattle feeders with food in the corner of the cellar to keep them from starving, but they didn't seem to have been used all that much. These girls were mentally broken. Their mind died first, followed by their body. Disappointment, this is too much to think a senior colleague of mine, 
who taught morality no less, would do sewing like this. Cheer up, trainee teacher. She committed a crime and would pay for it. I loved evil. When someone had a distorted sense of justice, it was hard to call it evil. On the other hand, evil so obviously malevolent and vile made everything much easier since it made punishing perpetrators much freer of guilt. Hope, however, not all of my senior colleagues are like that. I want to believe in that, at least. Don't worry, trainee teacher with a beautiful body and soul. I would rip out the teacher's spines who drove my secret friend to depression and use them as a clothesline. But before that. I know you're spying on me, my dark and demented senior. Would you talk to your junior if I put Moral's ass on the line? There was no answer. Was ass not enough? Did his consultation fee also include her breasts? Fatigue, enough. Chapter, 316. Twenty-first round, fair negotiation. My demented senior appeared. The last time we met, we ended up completely destroying his house, making me think we'd never contact each other again. Senior, though you seem displeased, you like me, don't you? Irritation, I admire your imagination. I can't believe you can still dare say sewing like that after you ripped out my once beloved wife's vertebrae without anesthesia. He really seemed to like me. Seriousness, why did you call me? I advise you to stop doing stupid things like this hostage game. While I was conquering planets, I had many marriages of convenience. You are greatly mistaken if you think that I, the ruler of an entire galaxy, am still attached to a woman from my past. I didn't expect that from him, considering I realized that he lost his feelings of affection after he found the brooch he gave me in the garbage can. Correct me if I'm wrong, but watching you procrastinate and threaten me made me think you still haven't gotten over the past completely. Calmness, get to the point already. I advise you to be careful with your words, however. After all, I can easily take over Earth, your homeland, if I so wished. Ha! Huh. Stop lying through your teeth, my resentful senior. You haven't conquered Earth only because you can't. If the first hero, an ultimate living weapon, leaves his capital planet, neighboring powers would react to it. I was no ordinary fantasy hero that lacked attention. And my wife was a graduate from an elite university, where Master Malin was from. I am also his first wife. Ho ho. As she said. I didn't see the connection between her being my first wife and the knowledge she possessed. Regardless, I still received superficial information about the situation in the universe from her. Therefore, I couldn't be deceived. Calm, I'm not lying. I haven't forgotten that Soja, who always declared that she would live alone, married you, which means that her knowledge and SS naturally passed on to you. But it does seem to me that you can't go beyond the solar system, while my army and children can. If even the smallest part of my troops located on the edge of the galaxy moves towards Earth, then they'll easily hey. Why are you laughing? What's so funny? I just find your honesty hilarious. He kept hinting that I shouldn't touch teacher morals. I hadn't even gotten to my point yet, but he had already jumped to conclusions and began to intimidate me with his exaggerated abilities. He said that his wife was only one of the many women from the past, but the reality was far from that. Adolescence only came once in a lifetime, after all. Even if they could experience it again, it wouldn't be as huge of an impact anymore. One could never go back to their horny days when just looking at a woman's thighs would turn them on. On the one hand, this meant that they had matured, but on the other hand, they were no longer so innocent. Confusion, interesting speculation. I experienced all this myself. I had times when I couldn't take my eyes off of Lenovo's thighs, who was always pretending to be cute. This had remained a trauma and a dark spot in my biography. That's why I remembered the name Lenovo even 200 years later. And what about my senior? Surrender, Bianca Lanyaburk. She was a very proud princess and was married off to me after I persuaded their family's godfather, Elfheim, to share my influence and wealth with their family. Now, I will never again go so far as to share my wealth and influence for one girl. As you said, it was only possible because I was young. Even if we rank my wives now, Bianca will still be among the top ten. 
She is special to me. Thank you for your honesty, which isn't inherent to the owner of the Max Class Harem. At that moment, the first spirit hit me in the head. What is the pathetic fugitive hero saying, drug hero? He admitted that he still loves teacher morals. I don't believe that. He immediately starts screaming about love whenever he sees a beautiful female and catches a whiff of her pheromones. I will not deny his love for her, but the problem is he loves all females in his life just the same. Chances are high that you're right. I know. Tremor, since a long time ago, that spirit has been saying things that break my heart. Fugitive hero. I indeed ran away, unable to bear the wives who bothered me, but all this is in the distant past. How long will she keep calling me that? Even if you get rid of your personal file full of shameful stories, your past will never disappear, fugitive senior. Warning, don't call me that. I don't expect you to call me by my name, so call me the Dark Elder or Resentful Senior as you did before. It depends on how you behave, Fugitive Senior. Anyway, enough about the past. Let's get right down to business, shall we? Laughter, what do you mean business? You're trapped in this dimension. Is there even anything you can do in your current position? If the fantasy institution goes to Molensoft, then you will forever live as auxiliary teaching material. And trust me, the Melanians will take it seriously, unlike Parmiel, that incompetent first angel. It seemed that rumors had already spread to the outside world that the largest investor, Molensoft, was going to take over the fantasy institution. I didn't even know anything until trainee teacher told me. But now, I was certain. Fugitive Senior knew more about the universe than I did. You can just ignore the fugitive hero, cowardly hubby. The system contains all the information related to the school. Well, sure, but we don't even know the identity of the person who recently entered this place. That's true. Therefore, we needed his help. If he didn't know anything, we could just pretend this conversation didn't happen in the first place. Concord, the woman who recently invaded the fantasy dimension is a mercenary. S. Kidnappings, robberies, theft, debt collection, terrorist acts, and more. She might be a lifesaver for some, but for me, a galaxy ruler, she is just a saboteur that needs to be destroyed. There are many such terrorists in the universe. Oh. Did he just tell me everything? Shrug, this is trivial information. The crucial part about this is that you don't often see such capable mercenaries, which means she has a rich past. Perhaps just as much as mine. You're great, fugitive senior. But that girl didn't look particularly capable. Her stingray seemed much more powerful, considering it managed to dodge all my attacks. Say X. And it had a very unusual cry. Explanation, you're used to acting alone, so you probably don't understand this, but companions and weapons are also included in calculating one's combat power. Now that you have almost the same power as I do, however, mercenaries naturally can no longer serve as our opponents. Stop. Wait, fugitive senior. I kicked his ass, but he still had the audacity to say that. I know how you feel, and I know you want to protect your pride, but there's a huge difference between our combat power, just like Mullen and Mullen. Irritation, have you already forgotten what I told you? I can't leave the planet because it might provoke neighboring states. Even if I just concentrate my power and fire beams from my galaxy to another, it will cause international discontent. Wow. That was such a cool power. Could he really bombard another galaxy that was many light years away from his? A bullet traveling at the speed of light would take a hundred years to do this, so I couldn't even imagine it was possible. But if one added fantasy elements into the mix, then it would become an entirely different matter. An attack that defied all the laws of physics, like my divine power, which compressed space itself. Warning, since you understand how powerful I am now, don't you dare touch Bianca's chest and buttocks. While you took off her clothes and tied her with a ribbon, you touched her with your right hand for three. Six seconds and your left hand for four. Two seconds. Not to mention you touched her vertebrae for one thirteen. Five seconds, which even I, her husband, haven't done yet. You memorized what happened down to the smallest details, fugitive senior. 
I once again felt respect for him. If you remember the incident with the snow woman, cowardly hubby, the fugitive hero is very attached to his women. I didn't think his affection would last this long, though. This is amazing. He was such a sentimental person. Sigh, after I became the ruler of an entire galaxy, you are the second after Boris to speak back to me. Oh. Boris is the real name of my son, whom you had and turned into an android. Boris. I knew this name. The memory of that junior of mine was incredible. Up front, you keep wasting my time with your useless chatter, so he'll open the negotiations first. Hand over all my women hiding in the institution to me, and he'll help you with Molensoft. Oh. Not a bad offer. With his help, who had influence beyond this dimension, would be able to put up a resistance worthy of Molensoft. Bugs, teachers, invading aliens. Even without those, the inspectorate would still find faults in the littlest things, but unnecessary problems would only lower my chances of success. There was only one way left. I needed to borrow external power. Conclusion, it seems we've reached an accord. Including Bianca, there are nine of them across fantasy. If my dead wives souls were still in the fantasy system, there would have been more of them. But let's stop at nine for now. Nine. So many. I wasn't even sure if they were here, but I still had to track them down within a year and take care of their vertebrae. Suggestion, every time you catch each of them as you did with Bianca, I will increase my support. But if even just one of them dies, then this temporary union will be terminated. As befitted the ruler of the galaxy, he knew how to negotiate. But, unfortunately, his junior, a married man, didn't have enough free time to look for other people's wives. So I presented a suggestion. Find them yourself. If he didn't, their vertebrae would be mine. Fugitive Senior, who had been obsessed with seizing Earth for a long time now, quickly accepted my offer. And not just because of his ex-wife's vertebrae. I, the max-class righteous hero, didn't make pitiful threats like third-rate villains. I could do much better than that. The first hero claims that he escaped because of your greed and fastidiousness, teacher morals. That's not true. But he has solid evidence to back his claim. Why did you throw away the brooch that your husband gave you? Why are you asking me that? Because you will need to give a speech to the people of fantasy to prove your innocence. A speech? Exactly, but you have to calm down. You're not even in front of your runaway husband and his lawyer yet, but you're already nervous. What do you think will happen to you once you are, teacher morals? Do you think if you cry for believability, no one will notice your manipulative lies? Shock, even demon Lord Pedinar wasn't as vicious as you. You were born human, so how can you be so cruel? This is all a misunderstanding, fugitive senior. The inhabitants of fantasy simply had to know the truth. Hence, the righteous hero would bring that information to them. I didn't see any problems with that. Fury, just you wait. He'll send an army there soon. Then you'd better hurry. She won't last long. The sense of justice sealed in my right hand ceaselessly urged me to reveal the truth to the public. Hurry. Anxiety, don't. You're an actual demon. May forgiveness descend upon the stupid hero who turned his back on justice. Malin. Chapter, 317. Side Story War Hero. It had been two years since I, an ordinary high school student from Earth, was abducted into the world of fantasy. And during that time, I had countless moments that were so painful they made me want to die. I could fall down the cliff, have my flesh torn off, and have my bones broken, and I would still quickly recover. K.H. This throbbing pain sucks. But that didn't mean it didn't hurt. Although the acute perception S removed the feeling of pain when it reached A rank, it was usually inactive. One shouldn't lie to their bodies, after all. If sewing hurt, it would send a warning signal that there was a problem in that area. Hence, if one were to unknowingly suffer from a broken leg because they couldn't feel pain, the damage would begin to swell and fester, eventually reaching a point where they would no longer be able to walk. That was why I tried to tolerate pain whenever possible. Does it still hurt, brother? 
brother? Call me Kong Han Su. But your name is difficult to pronounce. We spent the night together anyway, so we shouldn't have to worry about such formalities, said Emily, the girl next to me in bed, with a shy smile. A blanket covered her body, which I admired all night. She would seem like the embodiment of fantasies for an earthling, but her beauty was just average in this world. If she was born on earth, she could have easily fooled rich men, arranging a comfortable life for herself. Anyway. It's morning already, Emily. Go home, or your parents will be worried. ITLL be problematic if they go to the city guards. I'm very grateful to you for what happened yesterday. I ended up there by chance as I came to collect rare herbs. You shouldn't thank me. So come back home soon. Otherwise, my companions. Knock knock. Someone knocked on the door. I hid Emily's head under the covers. I'm sleeping. So don't. Bam. As soon as the bedroom door's lock was destroyed and it swung wide open, I jumped to the side and grabbed the sword that I always kept near me, preparing to pounce on the intruder. However, as soon as I saw the intruder's face, I immediately stopped and loosened my grip. What's the matter, hero? It's still early in the day, but you already want to challenge me? I wouldn't have pulled my sword if you hadn't kicked the door and invaded my room. I was walking along the corridor of this hotel and heard a woman's voice in here. That doesn't explain why you broke in. Humph. I was worried you were being attacked by a beautiful assassin who entered through the window, so I hurried to help you, hero. You should be grateful. You better think about how you'd compensate the innkeeper for the lock you broke. I have no money, Alex complained, not showing even a single drop of guilt for what he had done. I replied as I got dressed. Because of you and Aqua, we keep having to pay for property damages, just like when you got into a brawl with a bunch of mercenaries. That's why we sleep in shabby and dangerous hotels outside the city walls like this. That was the mercenaries' fault. They didn't have a penny in their pockets, and someone had to pay for the damages. Well, we paid. So it shouldn't be a problem, right? That's exactly the problem that I want to draw your attention to. Be careful not to waste our finances. It's okay. We just have to work again. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. Alex was unarmed, and I had a sword in my hand. From the first days, when I was an ordinary high school student, and until last year, I was absolutely helpless and afraid of Alex, but not now. If I wanted, I could get rid of him. I almost overtook him by actively using the hero's 5x experience multiplier perk. But he was my companion. Unless I intended to fight demon Lord Pedinar alone, I had to be with him for the rest of the adventure, whether I liked it or not. Hence, I had to be patient. Well meet later on the first floor and think about how to make money then. I was lost in thought once more. Was it okay for a hero to be more worried about expenses than a sudden invasion by the demon lord? Duke Curiel's estate, northern continent. The city walls were extremely high and heavily guarded, making it difficult to get inside when the gates were closed. Which was why the townspeople had to return home by sunset before they got shut out. If they were late, there would be no other choice but to stay in a hotel outside the city walls, as we did. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you as well, Emily. There aren't many opportunities that help me increase the pacification's S level. Ooh. I don't want to leave yet. Hurry up and get going. Now that the gates of the city were open, she could finally return home. Home. I also had no time to play the fool. I needed to work hard to get home. I was sure my parents were worried. No, maybe they had decided that I had already died since two years had already passed since I went missing. Sir Hero. Sir Hero. Stop yelling. It's because you didn't answer. Archaeologist Lenovo. She guided the hero on his adventures. She easily noticed traps in dungeons, which would have been useful if she didn't rush to step on them as well. What's the matter? I know a way to make money and recruit a companion. Good. Ill listen and decide. Kaisa Curiel, the only daughter of Duke Curiel, is looking for a partner. 
she announced that she would marry the man who can defeat her in a sword fight. Sounds like that rich lady knows a thing or two about swords. That's still a ridiculous notion, though. What if a bandit leader overpowers her? Will she still marry him? She's the strongest swordsman on the northern continent, earning her the title, Sword Princess. My smile immediately disappeared from my face. The strongest in the northern continent. That woman apparently had no desire to get married. I could already guess what Lenovo would offer me. Sir Hero. You must get your hands on the Holy Sword. And if I don't want to. Once you find the Holy Sword, you can challenge the Sword Princess. Without it, you have no chance. I looked at Alex, Aqua, and Saint Isse standing behind Lenovo. What do you think? The hero is still too weak. Lenovo is right. The Holy Sword is very important. They seem to agree with Lenovo's suggestion. We were already on the northern continent anyway, so it was logical. Nevertheless. I will challenge the Sword Princess. Yes. Sir Hero. Lenovo knows where the Holy Sword is sealed. We should get it now since it's the only way you'll be able to defeat the Sword Princess. No. I will challenge her now. It's too reckless to challenge her without the Holy Sword. Lenovo, if I can't defeat her without the Holy Sword, they'll just have to give up this idea altogether. Give up on the Sword Princess. Yes. The Holy Sword was a legendary weapon created to fight Demon Lord Pedinar. I hadn't yet seen the woman called the Sword Princess, but I could already guarantee the husband she was looking for shouldn't rely on a weapon strength but his own SS. Ha! So be it. The hero is such a fool. This is blasphemy. Putting women above the Holy Sword. Alex, Aqua, and Saintus A didn't like my decision, but they didn't mind it. Was it because they respected me? If it had been me a year ago, I might have thought so, but not anymore. They enjoyed participating or watching fights like this much more than exploring dungeons and hunting monsters. Then it settled. Lenovo assures you, Sir Hero, you will regret this decision. I won't regret it. I don't want to win by relying on the strength of my weapon. We headed to the heart of Duke Curiel's estate after Alex compensated the innkeeper. I didn't have enough money, so today, I left without breakfast. I thought I could fight Countess Kaisa Curiel, known as the Sword Princess, right away, but things turned out to be a little more complicated. There was only one bride-to-be and hundreds of potential grooms. She simply wouldn't have time to fight every challenger, so a qualifying tournament was held where the suitors competed for the right to challenge her. To join the tournament, one had to pass a basic test. I don't like you. Count Lolikin, the old knight in charge of testing my SS, said. What exactly do you dislike? Everything. Even your face. It seemed he hated men who coveted his mistress. But I will still share information. If you are confident in your victory, you can place a bet. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. I remembered Lenovo bragging about having found a way to make money. Apparently, she was talking about this. But I didn't even have money right now. If you lack funds, go to the pawn shop next to the arena. You can leave your valuables on bail there and receive a certain amount with interest in exchange. If you win, you'll come out rich. I see. Thanks. You must have the courage to put everything you have on the line if you want to win the young, powerful, and beautiful Lattice Heart. Ha ha ha. I passed the test and left Count Lolikin, who gave me ill natured advice. Passing the arena, I saw a girl I knew. She noticed me too. Brother. Emily. Yes. I'm very glad to see you again. The tournament is coming up soon, so I came to see the list of participants. I see. Cling. In her hands was a sack tightly packed with coins. From the sound it was making alone, I deduced they were made of pure gold. I'm also here to gamble. No way all of that. Yes. This is pocket money that I have been diligently saving up for a month now. Is that so? The girl's monthly allowance was equal to the hero's annual living wage, but I decided not to mention that. Are you also participating? Wow. 
Be sure to win. It'll be cheering for you. Thanks. At least someone supported me. For the sake of her pocket money, I decided to do my best. As they said, be careful with people close to you. When I lived on earth, I didn't know what that meant, but now I thought I did. I usually didn't swear, but this time I couldn't help it. Why would people who covered my back in battle wish for my defeat? But that was exactly what happened. They put a laxative in my food. I had already entered the arena by the time I realized it. Behold! The beloved daughter of Duke Curiel, the northern continent's epitome of beauty, the warrior who single-handedly slew 954 ogres, the Order of the Black Rose's head, one of the three strongest knights of the northern continent. Guardian of the eastern part of the northern continents, commander of the eastern legion, deputy commander of the northern legion, guardian of Curiel estate, master of Ire the magic sword, the ice troll slayer, the thorny black rose. Countess Kaisa Curiel. Whoa. Yes. Ah. Woo. The strongest swordsman of the northern continent appeared on the battlefield. Premium equipment, excellent condition, high performance. To top it all off, outstanding beauty. And her opponent. Greet the man who wants to win the heart of Countess Kaisa Curiel. Kong Han Su, a swordsman from the Central Continent. They constantly booed the participants prior to our battle, but now they seem to be amazed to see me. I guessed my tense face reminded them of some kind of villain. The audience grew quieter and quieter. However, thanks to Rumor B, I distinctly heard the whisper of a girl praying for me. Brother. Hold on. It was Emily, the girl who put all her pocket money on me. According to rumors, my victory was estimated to be 1 in 200. It didn't matter if I won or lost this fight. She would profit. I stood in front of the sword princess, having already won the tournament. I watched your battles around halfway through the tournament, honored swordsman. That wasn't good. I didn't know anything about her fighting style, but she already knew about mine. It shouldn't work that way. Before I seriously fought her, I needed to get as much information as I could. I first had to determine what she knew about me. What do you think of me? At first, I thought you were a pretentious man, but I was wrong. Your barbaric face, deep bottomless gaze, rough bulging muscles, and insane fighting spirit were really beautiful. Thanks for the compliment. I gritted my teeth as I suffered from such humiliation. Sword Princess. As the most powerful swordsman on the northern continent, she excelled even in psychological warfare. I asked her about my fighting style, and she talked about how outrageous I looked. What do you think of me, dear swordsman? I couldn't get the information I needed, and she was already trying to get sewing out of me again. Hmm. If so. I would reciprocate her and give the wrong answer. You are like a dazzling double moon in the night sky, impossible for my hand to grab. A perfect combination of strength and beauty. That is what you are. Ah. Did my provocation work? The sword princess face turned red. Perhaps from anger, considering confusion appeared in her stats. She didn't know that I was a hero that could view someone else's stats. Are you ready, Kaisa Curiel? Oh. Yes. Ready. W.L., not in that sense, but. Fshuck. 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 While she was still under the effects of confusion, I pounced and rained down a bombardment of attacks on her. Lenovo, are you watching? Even your laxative can't stop me. Ha. That was how my complicated and difficult relationship with the Sword Princess began. Chapter, 318. 21st Round Recruiting Freshman. Note, an attempt to transport a large amount of living matter to your coordinates is being made, Demon Lord Kong Han Su. If you agree, I will send you the spatial transportation magic circle form it requires. Please be advised that the magic circle you'll be sending can only transport people from the sender's dimension to the recipients. It cannot be used the other way around. Thank you for trampling on my stupid expectations in advance, goddess of fantasy. The system, which had been silent for a long time, reported abnormalities. 
fugitive senior who spied on me through his position as an honorary teacher did send an army. I thought it would take him several days to gather his troops, but he exceeded my expectations. That aside. What's wrong with you? Soja hadn't taken her eyes off my beautiful face for quite a while now. We need to be prepared for invasions of extraterrestrial forces in the future, cowardly husband. How do you suggest we do that? First, let me ask you a question. How long do you think ITLL take you to destroy the planet of fantasy? Hmm about 10 seconds. Although if I wielded the full power of the demon lord or if the planet had a spine, it would take less than zero. One seconds. Then, to stop invaders as powerful as you, our planetary defense forces must be readied and deployed within 10 seconds after we caught wind of their presence in our borders. No, we need to act even faster. ITLL be quite disappointing if our countermeasures against them blow up along with the entire planet immediately after we finish our preparation for warfare. Sure. I didn't know if it was even possible to physically defend the planet from such an attack. Even if our army was prepared for it, could they actually do anything to stop it in 10 seconds? Just briefing them of the enemy would last more than 10 seconds. In other words, it wouldn't make sense. It's necessary to protect our people. Well it's useless against the might of a cosmic deity like my father. However, if the enemy specializes in individual combat power like you, such an army won't be as worthless. They'd be able to buy us time. They'd just be swept away. I did understand what she meant, though. One of the many asteroids flying through space once fell on Earth, causing the dinosaur's extinction. To God, it was probably like watching popcorn. But this is all theoretical. In reality, ITLL most likely take 30 seconds to deploy a planetary defense force. Doing that in 10 seconds is only possible during promotional training to calm the planet's inhabitants. 30 seconds is already extremely fast. When my companions in the first round heard the news about a large army of monsters wreaking havoc in cities and villages. It still took them much longer than 30 seconds to recover from their hangovers. That's not even on a planetary scale. What we'll be experiencing is on a completely different level of threat. The fugitive hero has great military organization training. His troops took only 25. Four seconds to fully prepare for deployment. Phew. Every time Soja waved her wand, magical patterns appeared on the ground. Spatial Transportation Magic Circle However, its size was much larger than the Magic Circle Lenovo created to abduct civilians and turn them into heroes. How can you make one without a catalyst? Oh. Have you forgotten? Your first wife is the god creator of fantasy. Pop. 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 The highest quality materials required to activate the Magic Circle appeared in powder form. For Soja, the maker of this world, collecting rare materials wasn't difficult at all. She just made what she needed appear from thin air. Is there anything you can't create? Souls, Soja answered without hesitation. VZHCHCH. The magic circle, imbued with the pulverized catalyst, was soon activated. Fugitive Senior's army will be arriving any time now. I was a little worried. Keep in mind that the fugitive hero is a king. Even if you only rule a part of a continent, you'll already be considered an emperor here. However, the politics and hierarchy of the universe are far different. You must rule three or four galaxies to become emperor out there. And then what am I? Although not intentionally, I inherited the family business from my father-in-law and became a demon lord. However, I didn't lord over any planet, much less a solar system, and even lesser, a galaxy. Should I introduce myself to them as an ordinary demon? The spatial transportation magic circle Soja drew shone, releasing pure white light, and 200 dummies soon appeared on top of it. Among them were humans and androids that we saw on Earth. To be honest, I was expecting sewing more majestic. Leading them was a female commander. Race, Red Dragonian Overlord. Level, 1. Job, Lord of Flames Fire Immortality. SS, Interpretation A. Status, Interest. She didn't originate here in fantasy, 
so she received the stats of a rookie hero. However, even by instincts alone, I could tell she wasn't weak. Her neck, waist, forearms, and thighs showed soft human-like skin, but everything else was covered in sturdy red scales that served as her armor. She also had intimidating claws at the tips of her fingers. Her wings were folded behind her, and her tail was wrapped around her waists, however, making her appear less intimidating. She was the first one to open the conversation. You'll skip the official presentation since you won't understand it even if I explain it to you. All you need to know is that I am General Chromatigus, the commander for this operation. I normally don't participate in trivial missions like finding eight of the 586 queens, but when I heard my dear Boris is here, I volunteered anyway. That being said, I look forward to your cooperation. Dear Boris. Did she mean the same old Prince Boris I knew? He's handsome since he resembles his majesty, but what I like about him is how he persistently resists the will of the powerful. Is that so? I completely disagreed with her description, but I didn't dispute her unique taste. We will discuss this later. His majesty desires to ensure the exchange of captives first. Every time you bring us one of the individuals we're looking for, we'll provide you with material support. I have no need for it. My cowardly wife could create anything. Except for troops, I didn't need anything. The fantasy institution is currently suffering from a shortage of new students. If this problem isn't resolved, the school will be forced to close without prior inspections. Soja knew more about fantasy's situation, but new students are indeed only coming from Earth at the moment. However, based on the results of my Molenphone powered observation on my home planet's situation, Reports of young people's disappearance had become practically non-existent, most likely because the faculty had already kidnapped the last of its social outcasts. In other words, the admission of new students had been halted. Granted, hundreds of people who had reached the minimum required age for admission are registered each year, but that wasn't enough, given the size of this school. What do you think? On behalf of His Majesty, we are ready to supply you with students, the human resources that you lack so much, from our homeland. Fugitive Senior is pretty cunning. I thought I, the Max Class Righteous Hero, was one-sidedly taking advantage of his generosity, but he thought this through just as much. Graduates returned home. Increasing the number of new students right now would be ideal, but they'd become part of his army once they had graduated. On the surface, it would appear as if he was supporting me, but in reality, I would be the one helping him. I didn't like it. Not really. Things will be different if we don't let them graduate. Well, aren't you a genius? Hee <laughs> hee. I am the first wife of the Max Class Demon Lord. For me, this is nothing. I turn to the female commander. Hey, Red. You are exactly as I was told. However, I cannot allow you to call me that. Ha. <laughs> It's easier to remember. I was stronger, so she couldn't resist me. We could fight about it, but we were allies moving towards the same goal right now, which I was glad about. Husband, I think you like this woman, said Soja, flaming with jealousy and clutching my hand. I stroked my wife's back. First, dragons are gender neutral. Second, even if I do, I'd only be interested in her as a combatant. If her strength were reflected in her stats, I'm certain it would be impressive. Impressive? Don't worry. She's still weaker than you, my first wife. Yes. I'm first. Soja's jealousy disappeared like snow under the scorching sun of summer. The time had come to get down to business. I summoned my senior's ex-wife, whom he still couldn't forget to this day. Pop. She was packaged in a way that prevented her from moving. I accept this offer, Red. I will report to His Majesty that both parties have agreed to the deal. Teacher Morals, who noticed how the situation was developing, began to lament again. They say that if you forgive the enemy, then you will become friends. Kong Han Su, proud student of our school, I know you don't like me, but don't go to such extremes. If you do this, you will turn the entire faculty against you. Everything will be fine. I would deal with all the teachers hiding here in fantasy right now while looking for the director and interfering with my plans. 
Professor Morals was just the beginning. How are you going to get her out of here? We have a OD. The android behind her came forward. Unlike the other soldiers, it was completely unarmed. Its stats awakened my curiosity. Race, ancient android. Job, hero experience 200%. SS, max. Status, socket, submission. It had a max rank black box that allowed the user to save SS and a double experience perk. I realized immediately what they were trying to do. You're going to turn her into experience points. Oh no. That's her. The android hero grabbed Teach Moral's neck with both hands. Her distorted face begged for mercy, but she soon disappeared from this world. Level, 999. Job, Queen Favor Captivity. SS, Max, Assassination E, Composure F. Status, Socket, Submission. Only about 1% of a monster's total experience would normally be absorbed, with the rest being scattered into nature. However, like my past self, the android absorbed all the experience completely with the help of its black box and its profession. They had extracted the soul of teacher morals. She could later be removed and transferred to a vessel similar to a human body to revive her. Theoretically speaking. Take the queen's body too. As you command. The soldiers took care of teacher morals level zero body as ordered. Shook. VZHCH. The soldiers plugged a vacuum cleaner like machine in her ass to get rid of her excess fluids. That would prevent decomposition. It wasn't much different from morgues. I shouldn't feel sorry to see her in such a state, but for some reason, I am. The list of planets from which you can kidnap new students has been updated, cowardly hubby. Ha! Fugitive Senior kept his promise. I hope this sacrifice wasn't in vain. Finally, Teacher Morals gave me one last lesson. If one were to forgive their enemy, they would become friends. She was right. When I forgave Professor Morals, I became close to the fugitive elder. Farewell, senior, don't worry and leave all the work to the younger ones. Oh. Right. Starting today, we are appointing trainee teacher as the new teacher of ethics and morality. Embarrassment. I didn't say goodbye with such selfish motives. It's okay, trainee teacher. There are still many goodbyes ahead. Chapter, 319. 21st Round Mathematics Art. To track down the queen's hiding somewhere on this planet, we need their belongings. His majesty left his home empty-handed, so we need to find all these things I heard are called chaos artifacts here. Ah. Those. There was a moment when I had the bright idea of collecting chaos artifacts to move between dimensions. However, after Fugitive Senior abducted me due to the brave power they contained, the chaos artifacts were deemed dangerous, causing me to abandon my plan. But I knew a way to find them. Pop! A beautiful married elf jumped out of my shadow. Shadow A. She diligently searched for those items as well to meet her pathetic husband, the Elf King, so she knew a lot about them. Sure. I didn't waste time. But I didn't think they would be used that way. Good. Tell me where they are. I'll do the rest myself. Hmm. Yourself? Yes. I really regretted entrusting a task to my companions back in my first round. They not only didn't solve the problems but, on the contrary, made the situation worse. There was only one creature I could rely on. Malin. The great creature swayed as it peered out of my wife's breasts. Take good care of Master Malin, Soja. This task was important enough to be prioritized. If I were to ask Master Malin for it, all my problems would instantly be solved, but that would be blasphemous. Lowly beings like me should never dare request God to do our bidding. Hey, husband. As your first wife, I try to think positively, but Malin still isn't the only one you can rely on. I have entrusted you with the most important task. And that already means a lot. Means a lot oh. How you love to complicate things. Okay. Hit the road, hubby. Leave everything else to your first wife. Malin. Even though she was cowardly, 
I could trust her with him. I looked back at Shadow A. So, where are they? There's five in the northern continent, seven in the central, five in the south, four in the east, five in the west, two in the Sea of Death, and three in my desert refuge on the southern continent. If you add the artifacts that I couldn't track or are damaged, there will be even more of them. Oh, that's a bit too much. Not counting teacher morals, there were eight teachers that Fugitive Senior wanted to get his hands on. However, the number of chaos artifacts reported by Shadow A far exceeded that number. Shadow A provided an explanation. Many were ed by the demon lord's attack. His wives that survived became teachers, and the rest reincarnated somewhere in the world of fantasy, forgetting everything about them and taking on an entirely different look. You mean that among these artifacts, there are also those that belong to wives who didn't become teachers? Shadow A began detailing where those objects were. It wasn't difficult to remember, but there were many of them. It would probably take me several days to find them. But that wasn't all. With the help of the chaos artifacts, I'd need to track down the teachers. This task would take even longer. Did Red realize that too? Because while listening to Shadow as explanations, she intervened. We will act separately, hero. Do what you want. If you succeed in capturing another queen, bring her here. Then my people will take care of her as before. Okay. Phew. Red, spreading her wings, soared into the sky. Vampires, demons, and angels, who had wings and flight-related SS, followed her. Here it was, the globalization of the universe. Even without the stupid teaching of good and evil, which was done at the fantasy institution, society was doing great. Race, gender, appearance, nationality. Only savages would fight each other because they were different. Elves, gnomes, humans, and androids who remained on the ground started setting up a temporary camp. Phew. Opening my wings of the righteous hero, I flew south. Why did you start at the south, drug hero? That's what the universe told me to do. The president of the universe would always try to get me out of trouble and direct me on the right path. Narrowing the space from time to time, I quickly crossed the central continent and arrived at the southern continent. The reason why I decided to start from the farthest continent was simple. Drug hero. Sewing is burning there. I see it. Shadow as hideout was in an oasis of the once desolate southern continent. However, after transitioning to the fifth curriculum, green forests, meadows, and civilizations appeared here instead of deserts. Because of that, I no longer knew the exact location of her shelter. However, clouds of grey smoke rising high into the sky pointed itself out to me. Surprise, what's going on there? Nothing important, trainee teacher. That was evidence that Fugitive Senior wasn't the only one spying on me. The teachers eavesdropped on the conversation between Red and me, allowing them to react in advance. This was the result. Shadow as hideout, which contained three chaos artifacts, was attacked. Even without visual confirmation, I could smell them. It's their stench. The insidious faculty member's foul smell. The sense of justice that had remained dormant in my right hand awakened once more. From the moment I discovered them, the battle was already over. The difference in our strength was so great that it would have been a shame to call it a fight. I flicked my finger lightly. Darkness. At the same moment, dark matter made my vicinity tremble. Ka. Ph. A man and a woman, presumably teachers, screamed as they fell to the ground. Looking up, their eyes widened when they saw my righteous smile. I decided to skip the greeting. Fshuck. 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 I fired spikes from my wings of the righteous hero and ripped open the belly of the male teacher on the right. His innards immediately fell out. Th this is. Art teacher. The woman teacher on the left screamed in tears. I see, then this man currently admiring his insides is an art teacher. And what did the woman specialize in? Hi. My greeting was a little late, but I also showered her with spikes. Bam. 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 However, 
she swung her thin-bladed silver rapier and deflected all of them. She wasn't fast enough for me to catch up with her, but she showed exceptional efficiency with minimal movement. I didn't really care, though. As soon as I snapped my finger again, dark matter shook the space. No matter how agile and fast she was, she couldn't handle an attack over such a large area. But she struck the rapier blade in her hand with her fingertips, causing a strange vibration. BZZ. It neutralized the spatial distortion of my dark matter, which came as a surprise to me. I am a teacher of mathematics. I can calculate all phenomena in nature using numbers, and I am also the creator of the magic points that measure combat power. Student Kang Han Su, I have calculated that the probability of you being defeated is 67. 4%. Really now? Math teacher, what are the chances of you escaping successfully from me? Well she couldn't answer. Underneath her glasses, I saw how her pupils trembled like the surface of a lake during a typhoon. Do you need a calculator? No. No. Sewing's so wrong here. Your combat power is too much of an anomaly. The demon lord's essence is divided between dimensions, so your strength shouldn't be that high. No, more than that, why is its value continuing to grow endlessly? SKR. Her glasses that measured my combat power cracked, causing her to scream. How ridiculous. She stopped my dark matter but hurt herself by calculating the odds. So, what's the probability? K.H. We must wait. My calculations aren't over yet. I cannot work with an infinite number. Clap. The math teacher sat down on the ashes of the ruins, muttering sewing to herself. Hey, this is no time to rest. This must be some form of devilry. Math teacher. It looks like the math problems first introduced in Curriculum 5 are too hard. They'll help you solve this one with an easy-to-understand mathematical formula. First, multiply your fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae, round off the value, and calculate the differential. What? You'll get it. What huh? The math teacher screamed desperately as she tried to stand with both hands on the ground. Blood-filled tears flowed from her eyes, blinded by shards of glass. She seemed to have solved the problem correctly. It's not that difficult, but it can be a little painful. Ugh. Even a simple addition or subtraction involving one's vertebrae is painful, after all. You're crazy. You're. I righteously punished her for being unable to adjust to the standards of the new curriculum and for her jealousy of an intelligent student. I threw her into the demon vault. Based on the memories extracted from the chaos artifacts, that lover of accurate calculations was also one of fugitive seniors' ex-wives. Was it luck? I love you, President of the Universe. I was told to move further south. Oh. Before that. P please help me. Student Kong Han Su. I followed her simply because math teacher asked me to go with her. As the very person who teaches the importance of beauty to the heroes, I don't tolerate violence. Crunch. I struck my wings of the righteous hero between the noisy art teacher's sixth and seventh cervical vertebrae. So silly. If only he kept his mouth shut, I would have beautifully taken care of his lumbar spine. Teaching the importance of beauty. Many locals were ignored or attacked by the heroes simply because they were ugly. Teachers like him would only create more arrogant heroes that would sell their souls for a beautiful pelvis. Question, Cadet Kong Han Su, if this is wrong, what kind of beauty should we strive for in the future? Good question, beautiful trainee teacher. Morality and ethics were well suited to her, who immediately pinpointed the core and essence of each matter, but I thought she could also take the math teacher's place. Recognition, unfortunately, I am weak in math. So what kind of beauty should we pursue? Inner beauty. Concern, I hope she didn't die because of your crazy math formula, junior. Ha. <laughs> Don't worry, fugitive senior. I was weak in statistics but confident in my calculations. I hadn't done any calculations in the past 200 years, though, so I might have messed sewing up. Overall, it should be fine. Fear, hey. Let's go further south. 
I was looking forward to what academic subjects were lying in wait for me, the Max Class Righteous Hero. Chapter, 320 Since Ice King Sleaze created a huge air conditioner on the southern continent during the fourth curriculum, its lands dried up, turning it into an endless desert. In the fifth curriculum, however, Sleaze had lost his refuge, causing the southern continent's weather to change so much it became a habitable place for elves once more. Humans and giants also lived here with them. There are a lot of giants here, drug hero. Yeah. They seem to have taken over the entire southern continent. The giants were this land's true rulers. They owned 80% of it, including the small desert in the center. The remaining 20% belonged to humans and elves. And it wasn't about conquest by war. This was because they removed the mountain ranges here to begin their reclamation process. The project began about 2000 years ago and continued to this day. The use of the giant's excrement as cement played a big role in it since many canals and buildings were erected using that construction material. I was the one who taught them that. Well go there. I was heading in the direction indicated by the president of the universe. I missed a few chaos artifact locations that Shadow A spoke about, but I wasn't particularly worried about it since a teacher was nearby. In the end, I would still find them all anyway. What I should focus on is getting my priorities straight. Wasn't that the right way to do business? I worked by the sweat of my brow to get a batch of new students from Fugitive Senior as soon as possible. Suyin, am feeling malicious intent from you. It's all about mood, Senior. If anything, you'd better watch how Red is doing on her side of things. She's more worthy of your doubt than I am, considering I'm doing really great here. Happiness, she won't have a problem either. She's so strong that even I can hardly control her. She volunteered to join us because she thinks Boris is cute. He started being rebellious at a young age. Eventually, he quarreled with me and fled, causing his death. That's why she's perfect for this mission. Shell two birds with one stone. So Fugitive Senior had his own set of family problems. My son and I had some disagreements, but we generally had a friendly relationship. I did great disciplining him, after all. Have you seen Horace? Since his spine resembled mine, he was popular with women, and he also had the qualities to become a true righteous hero. Confusion, those are all delusions. Since I was almost at my destination, I pretended I didn't hear Fugitive Senior, whose pride was even more fragile than that of my jealous wife. Everything looks so grandiose here. Everything about the capital of the Empire of Giants, which occupied 80% of the southern continent, was huge. From normal-sized beings' point of view, all these institutions and dwellings designed by and for giants seemed like mountains. At the very center of it was a structure that rivaled Snow Mountain M in height, a SKYSCR built in the shape of a pyramid. Bang! Bang! Even though giants were moving along its floors, it showed no hints of collapse. Their race's natural weight made it difficult to build buildings more than two stories high, but the one at the center, as if mocking logic itself, didn't even appear to have a dent. Could those wings be? Oh! My god! The man of legends is back! Oh! Prophet! The giants, whose eyes resembled huge telescope lenses, began to cause a commotion the moment they saw me in the sky. My popularity hadn't subsided here even after 2000 years. Most humans had already forgotten me, but these colossal creatures were different. Race, Giant. Level, 596. Job, Fisherman Fishing Endurance. SS, Fishing A, Hunting B, Construction B, Swimming C, Eternal Youth C. Status, Surprise, Confusion, Delight. Humans and giants should be equally strong, but giants had significantly higher levels since they hunted high-level sea monsters. Of course, they suffered casualties during their hunts, but those who survived became some of the most powerful creatures on land. Then what about the giant king? I can't see him. Giant King Phoenix, who absorbed Phoenix, the first elf, and gained immortality, continued to grow forever. Purely theoretically, someday, he might become larger than this planet itself. I wondered what became of him, considering he continued to grow for two thousand years. 
I couldn't find him, though. Was it even possible to hide such a huge body? Strange. Are you sure he's not dead yet, drug hero? Yes. We didn't meet in person, but to ensure the fifth curriculum would keep running smoothly, I sent a formal request for cooperation to the giant empire. And on behalf of Phoenix, a positive response came. We had now gone back a year before those events happened, so he was definitely alive. But if so, where was he? Unwanted guests had even invaded his home. Invaders. Invaders huh? Defend the palace. The enemy is too strong. Stop them. Quickly. Since their imperial palace was made of durable materials capable of withstanding their race's weight, it remained unshaken even during such a commotion. But they couldn't stop the intruders even though the ones defending it were real warriors, not fishermen. Race, tall giant. Level, 999. Job, warrior war physical strength. SS, super strength Z, size Z, two-handed sword mastery max, fortitude max, enemy detection SS. Status, steadfast, wounded, bleeding. They had the advantage in numbers, but they were still losing. That was how strong their opponents were. If they didn't restrain themselves to avoid destroying the building, the entire giant race would have already been destroyed along with the palace. Because. Race, ancient human. Job, teacher teaching SS. SS, physical strength ZZ, five senses ZZ, endurance ZZ, vitality ZZ, male strength ZZ. Status, caution, protection. The opponent's SS were top-notch. Most of the faculty members had teacher as their profession, making it impossible to determine the subject he taught through his stats alone. But judging by his SS, I wondered if it would be okay to assume that he was physical education teacher. The beefy man cleared the way, followed by a slender woman with huge, frightened, deer-like eyes. I took a look at her as well. Level, 784. SS, Cooking G, Laundry ZZ, Cleaning Z, Child Care Z, Order Z. Status, Anxiety. Her cooking S that reached the realm of gods was impressive, but it was useless in combat. Did she teach the heroes to cook? The woman didn't look like she needed to be feared. I continued to watch them. Hmm. The giant king doesn't seem to have any intentions of showing up. If I followed this corridor, I could get into the treasury of the giant empire. There had to be a chaos artifact there. It didn't need it now, though. My target was the teachers who came for it. It was just a tool, a means to an end, anyway. I decided to start with the teacher who cooked well. Darkness. A spatial hole appeared under her feet like a shadow. If she fell into it, she'd find herself in the demon vault. Be careful. What? A. A. Uh, home economics teacher. Tisk. The man was busy fighting the giant warriors but still managed to grab the woman's hand, who almost fell into the hole, and lift her up. My surprise attack failed. He had absurd reaction speed. Clicking my tongue, I quickly approached them, compressing the space between us. I had to deal with him while he was still distracted by the female. However. Oh. What? He managed to react to my movement, which was tantamount to teleportation. My wings and his fist collided. Student Kong Han Su. Not a student, but a hero. You mean the demon lord. That's my second profession, yes. Fshuk. 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 Since he had to fight and protect the female simultaneously, my spikes covered wings easily wounded his body. To my surprise, no matter how much my attacks tried to tear through his skin, all they did was leave him with scratches. I could put more force into my blows, but then the whole palace would cease to exist. The ceiling is falling. Oh no. Everything's falling apart. Retreat. Retreat. Due to the shock waves generated by our collision, part of the Imperial Palace had already been destroyed. It's not good this way. Soja could restore everything later, but it was still undesirable to fight here. I decided to stop for a while and step back. 
the teacher decided not to close the distance between us, too. Instead, he held his ground and waited. What do you teach? I asked while we were both free. Biology. Biology. And that woman, if I heard correctly, is teaching home economics. Biology and home economics. What a strange combination. Your boat is also strange. The wounds he sustained from my wings of the righteous hero quickly healed. I have mastered biology. Hence, my body is constantly evolving. My leukocytes have neutralized your anti-clotting poison by developing immunity against them. Ah. I met a like-minded person. Student Kong Han Su, you deserve credit for being able to get stronger without relying on SS. I even want to tell other students who rely only on SS and the Holy Sword about you. Oh. Thank you for the compliment. But no matter how excellent a student you are, I cannot forgive you for rebelling against your teachers. You're also too arrogant despite your modest results, and you've begun to oppress the weak. Modest results? Exactly. Your meager knowledge was only enough to make small changes in your body. I shall show you that there is another heaven above the heavens. You have a way with words. He probably could handle other subjects with his fluent communication s. Don't even think about trying to assault home economics teacher. Follow me to the roof, where we can fight in full force. If you're confident in your abilities, that is. You seriously speak well. It was such a childish provocation, but I decided to play along. Meager knowledge. How could he speak like that about Master Malin's teachings? One word from Master Malin, and he would be finished. I accepted his challenge. Follow me, student Kong Han Su. The way you talk makes me think you were quite the bully during your high school years, biology teacher. Yes, I used to get into a lot of fights. I see. And he dared say I oppressed the weak. We stood opposite each other on the roof of the Imperial Palace. This roof would be fine even if an asteroid were to fall on it, so I thought our battle wouldn't be able to do anything to it. It'll show you why I teach biology. You talk too much. Ha! With his legs spread wide and knees slightly bent, biology teacher screamed with all his might, and changes immediately began to occur in his body. His green hair turned white and shot up like thorns. Infuriating. The sneaky teacher knew all about every guy's dream. I didn't wait for him to finish his transformation, though. I grabbed his white dyed hair with both hands and launched my knee against his jaw with all my might. You're too late. That's one quick transformation. In the cartoons I watched as a child, assuming that form took about 20 minutes. Biology teacher spat out blood after his jaw got hit by my knee. You're deeply mistaken if you think you learned sewing useful from that ordinary slime. He's no ordinary slime. You should learn from me, the greatest teacher of biology, instead of an ordinary slime. He caught my wrist with his left hand, and with his right, he swung at me, targeting my face. With my wrist bound, it became difficult to avoid it. But I wasn't planning on dodging anyway. Before the teacher's fist came close to my face, I headbutt him, causing our foreheads to collide. K.H. Trying to recover from the blow, he stepped back. With my hand now freed, I immediately tried to finish him off with a second blow, but he recovered and dodged in the blink of an eye. Clutching his forehead, he shouted, This can't be. Your skull is stronger than mine. Impossible. Who do you think you are? What a stupid question. My neck became a little numb due to the impact of our collision, so I slightly stretched my sixth and seventh cervical vertebrae with my left hand. This is the power of Master Malin's teachings. Malin Revelation, Chapter 1, Verse 3 With their eyes, they looked, but blindly so. With their ears, they listened, but deftly so.